Welcome to the LCO show match delivered by Menulog. I am your host Kitty and we are about to play the match of the century. Join in with two very handsome individuals on my left side, Maximize and Skinny. How are you guys enjoying DreamHack so far? Mate, I'm an absolute blast. It's, uh, I mean, how cool is it being back in a stadium with crowd, with uh, everybody cheering along? I mean, my voice was absolutely roasted by the end of Friday, but we've recovered. We've got Maximize here to carry me yep. uh, in more ways than one, mate. You're so handsome. Thanks, bro. Very well oh, rested wow. for today. Excited, pumped, pumped to get the teams on stage. Very pumped. We do have a grand final shortly after this show match, but I do believe this show match will be an all random, all mid, aka ARAM, on this rift. So what do you guys actually think is going to happen in terms of champions? What champions are broken in your opinion, Skimmy? Because uh, play For me, always Akshan. Yeah, I absolutely love ARAM. Uh, if I ever see anybody use Exhaust or Cleanse, I will be uh, very angry, very angry. Might just actually leave this couch, go straight on stage and have a quick word with them on, uh, on performance. But um, Snowballs only, you've got to be a Giga Chad, you've got to live by the law. And um, yeah, Akshan, for me, you all going crazy, you get a free revive and happy days. I do know that Skimmy has quite the title in ARAM. Untouchable, Untouchable. am I right? So that's how much of a pro he is. That's when you have zero deaths in ARAM and you can only die to turrets, I believe, being executed. So that's it. That's how Skimmy gets his legitimate. Well, on the thing. way to ARAM God. It's going to take a long, long time to get there, but then I can officially peak. We will get ARAM. I can retire from ARAM. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Maximize? What do you like playing on uh, the ARAM map? You know, love a bit of Pike. We we're talking about that before, but. Yeah. The amount of pentacles I've had on ARAM with that champ is just next to nothing. So oh, yeah, I've got too many to count for a too second, many to they might fire out. Yeah. Other than the two handsome individuals next to me, we do have a lot of handsome and beautiful individuals behind us for this match. Xerox, take it away. Yes, thank you very much, Kitty. Uh, we have a lot of talent coming through very shortly. It's been a fantastic weekend here at DreamHack Melbourne. Of course, Friday we had some amazing games here for the LCO Split 2 playoffs, but a match that is surely going to be even more groundbreaking is this show match between Team AU and Team NA. So look, let's not uh, waste any more time leading from the front. Can you please put your hands together for Midbeast and Team AU? Some familiar faces, some star-studded players. Team AU looking, of course, to lead from the front, to bring it home in the motherland. But they do have an opponent, and uh, well, an opponent from quite some distance away. Please, everyone, put your hands together for Ovalie and Team NA. Well, someone's feeling quite confident here. Very early on, early days. Maybe we can get some fighting words here. Mid-Beast, Ovalie, please come have a chat before we get into the Howling Abyss. I must say, firstly, straight away, Team NA. Does the NA stand for no Americans? Listen, I was told that I got Kiwis on my team. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I think it stands for Victors. Victors, a lot of fighting words, Midbeast, but surely you're just going to be fighting in game. She's got a lot of talk, man, but we're going to play it well. We got the home ground advantage. We're going to pop off. He's going to pop off? Yeah, what? no, I'm going to take this for a second. After this game today, Steve is going to regret signing you, okay? He's going to end your contract with TL, sign me up for another couple more music videos, and I'm going to make you watch Raz twerk naked again. What? What? Where's the mic drop from that one? Raz naked. What? Raz who? Raz naked. I missed it. Oh, no, 
He, he, this is like his desktop uh, screensaver, the wallpaper, it's his oh. ringtone. He's got Raz twerking on his phone 24-7. Fighting words, fighting words. Well, how about they fight it out in the Howling Abyss. Everyone, please, again, put your hands together. Team and AU and Team NA. And for us, back over to Kitty on the couch. Some fighting words coming out of Ovali. You know, Midby is getting absolutely wrecked, in my opinion, with a Raz twerking naked, apparently. So... You know, Raz twerking. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> what are my am thoughts? I, yeah. Am I meant to analyze this? I'm not really sure. Yeah, well, the blur was phenomenal there, Kitty. I didn't actually, uh, you know, the PG-15, so the audience was quite happy with that one, but the content kingdom was there. It was a bit of a draft kingdom in actually that uh, interview. I think a uh, huge, huge credit, obviously. Came oh, in yeah. prepared. Absolutely. I, I really enjoyed the diss that Xenox actually threw out, which is NA stands for no Americans, which mm. is kind of true because Ovali is the only American while we have four Kiwis. So which one's the better team, Australians or Kiwis? <sighs> is it even a conversation at this point? <laughs> is it even a conversation? Look, Max, too shy to even talk about it. He knows that New Zealand... We we're on point. It's a big flight, three hours. Kitty, you know what it's like to fly over New Zealand now? Uh, three hours. Huge jet lag, very tired, not going to face them. What about they, you, Max? They don't even care about the jet lag, apparently. Nah. But come on, we've got, we got one American, we've got five Australians, we've got some absolute units there on the stage. I mean, Mid-Beast and Dragku particularly. Um, you can't beat Australia in Australia, mate, so sorry. Uh, look at the rugby, mate. <clears throat> and talking about units, we have some absolute units in the Twitch chat, so please remember to put in your Twitch points in the Dare fan vote to see who will be winning tonight's show match. So... What are you guys' predictions? Well, I think we've we've made it pretty clear. I think, Kitty, we're a bit, bit biased. I guess it's up to you as a deciding factor who's going to split voter. Who's okay. going to take it? Look, I saw some jacked people on Team AU. It's probably going to be no, no, no. But Kitty, did you not see what Emil did walking out with the meow meow here and the meow meow there? I mean, he's what do you have he's on your fully shirt representing. There, Skimmy? He's fully representing the uwu lifestyle, man. I mean, that's. You're cute, you're kawaii, you're getting it done. So surely it's a Yumi Presti attack angle and uh, Emelg's gonna bring it home for the boys. And talking about Yumi, I do know that Remember the Beat actually has a big fan base where he wants to play that Yumi. So what are your thoughts on Yumi with attack speed runes and just lethal tempo? It's the best way to go. It's the only way to go. <laughs> if you get it in ARAM, I mean, that's how you have to play it. You can't just play it normally. I just play it normally, indeed. And, you know, looking at the roster, who do you think is going to be the shine out star for both rosters? Because we have a lot of ex pros, we have a lot of high elo people. What do you think? I'm looking at Danny Decoy. Uh, he's going to be coming into this one, right? Obviously, Penton up on stage, uh, was part of that uh, inaugural LCO Championship roster. Had a bit of a time uh, abroad over in Brazil, came back home, going to showcase what he can do. And uh, maybe this is his like scouting grounds moment, right? Look how good I am in ARAM. Look at the mechanics, the moves. I'm not washed up just yet. Sign me up for 2023. Absolutely. And Ovali's a bit of an X Factor, right? I mean, everyone else here, we know what they play. We don't really know what Ovali plays over in NA solo queue, in NA ARAM. So anything could come out there, um, which I'm excited to see. A bit of a mystery, I see, but my eyes are actually set on Toppy. He is a fan Toppy. favorite. Toppy! Toppy! Any Toppy! We, have, we need to have the Toppy copy passer going up in Twitch chat. We do. It is iconic to the LCO, but we also have the handsome fellow mid beast in mid lane. You know, the beast of mid lane, quite ironic with his name, but what do you guys think of who's going to be? Yeah? It's an ARAM, right? It's an ARAM, yeah. All random or mid, and there's mid beast. <gasps> Put two and two together. He's cracked the case. Yep. Maximize, no wonder he is a professional player. Done. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no more discussion. <laughs> he just hit it with the heart. Timmy, you play a lot of ARAM. Yes. What would you actually recommend in terms of summoner spells? Because there is a lot of variety in terms of that. Only flash, only uh, snowball. Anything yep. else and uh, you're cringe. You're very, very, very cringe. No when, ghosts? When, like, how many times have we been in the game and we see three exhausts and we're just spam pinging? We're in all chat saying, what's happened? Like, do you need a hug? Are you okay? What's going yeah. wrong? I need a hug. We can hug after this. We, sure. we can definitely hug after right this. Now. Also, I saw that Amelg actually had a really cute uwu mask on his face. Didn't he do those little tattoos on his face last night at DreamHack as well? Yep, yep. We saw the evidence, right? You signed his forehead as well. Yeah. I signed his forehead right? with a smiley face, and hopefully he will be smiling throughout this entire game because this will be a very spicy match. Well, talking about Violet, he is making his return from the LCO and... You know, he has been playing a lot of Silas and mid lane. So, what are your thoughts on this? 
Well, it's not to do with Silas, but I tell you what, I have played a, a couple of ARAMs uh, with the man, the machine himself, in Violet. He actually played Zeri once. I think he was trying to actually farm up some LP in an ARAM game, <laughs> forgetting it's not ranked. So As uh, he got a pentakill on the Zeri, and I thought, mate, why don't you do that in your LCO game? So, um, Ooh. yeah. You know, we haven't actually gotten a pentakill in 2021, 2022, actually. We're still waiting. Too. Yeah, it's quite, maybe we'll get it for the Grand Max Finals. Max would have done it, mate. I'm telling you, I you would've. subbed him in top lane. Bring up the karma. Coach Surly <laughs> says, lock that one in, Chief, mate. Even Your Lee utility. Sin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you beat me in that 1v1 before, hey? I did, yeah. We don't want to talk about it. Oh. And, you know, I've been playing a lot of Aram's myself. And would you actually say that enchanters are broken in Aram? Being maximized, what are your thoughts yes, on this? Because yes, you're yeah, nodding yeah. your head here. If you get Seraphine, if you get Sonar, if you get any like healing champion, I swear the game just unplayable for the other team. Like I I've never won a game versus Seraphine in ARAM in my life. How about you just never won a game in your life? Yeah. We've that, never played a game together. So that's true. That's, that's the thing that's hurt me the most. What's that's the, what's that's the cut me deep. Win rate looking like at the moment? Well, we don't want to talk about my <laughs> win rate with Biopanther and Rusty. Uh, I think it's like 2 and 13. Oh. Uh, but you know, it's the friendship that we have, right? Exactly. The, the long distance calls down to 4 a.m. saying you cannot end on a loss. It's an unwritten rule, but it's one that we have to abide by. Absolutely. You know, something that I, every time I play ARAM, you get those re rolls happening, and sometimes you just get 5 AP or 5 AD, and it's impossible to play. So, what happens if one of them gets. How RNG'd? They'll just blame it on draft. Blame yeah. on draft? Isn't that what you always do, right? Like, it's not to do with the mechanics, it's not to do with the nerves, it's not to do with anything. Maybe even the, like, hecklers in the crowd. It's always to do with the draft. You have to blame it on that. That's we every LCO some review fans ever. fans up in there. We have we some do. cosplayers. Hello, my fellow cosplayers. I love you all. But talking about these two teams, you know, we do have Decoy and I believe it's Why Not mm -hmm. and the Match Fix couple. Couple? They, they could be a couple. I mean, who or knows? So we to say NA. they're so just making a podcast do you on think the stage. The Kiwis are a bit more aggressive in terms of their play style. Of course, we're a small country. We have to punch up. You know, uh, anytime I go overseas, people think I'm Australian. I have to correct them. I have to show them the passport. A bit of a flex, and uh, suddenly they realise, oh, okay, they're, they're that part, that state of Australia, that very confused. And we do have, you know, some of those champions. They all spike at level six. I believe once upon a time. I actually played with a Malphi, and the enemy team had Silas. Mm -hmm. It is a bit of a yikes. Yeah, it's grim. So how do you actually outplay that now that you've been counter matched up in an ARAM game? You just, I mean, that you just gotta sit in the bush, never let him steal your ult. Um, but yeah, I guess today, because we're not having rerolls, are we? It's just... I think it's locked in and that's done. Yeah. So yeah, you really can just be draft gaps, absolutely. And um, here we go. Here well, there we, we go. go. We are heading what into we draft. We have the Nunu. Velcos and it's gone. Oh, and it's gone. I it's saw gone. triple 80 carries for Team NA. Yeah, there were heaps. <laughs> so, uh, well, I guess we're just farming. Yes, farming well, simulator. the game is about to begin with Team AU locking okay. in the Nunu Velcos Malphite Chief. Oh, you did get the Malphite. And on Team NA, we have Syndra, Ezreal, Caitlyn, Lucian, and Nautilus. So, who's going to win tonight? I mean, fairly balanced comps, actually. I don't think either one is, is too broken. You know, you have the Nautilus, which is like an insane ARAM champion in terms of being able to find those hooks and get those kills. On the other side, though, you've got Malphite, you've got Orn, making all these AD carries lives in absolute hell as soon as they hit that level six. Skimmy, what do you think? The big thing for me is that you've actually got a handful of individuals on their main champions, right? Violet playing Jinx has played a lot of those uh, Absolutely. across this entire split. Toppy, he's a top lane. He's got Orn. Happy days for him. And Melga, support player once upon a time. He's repping the legacy jersey. Uh, so Nautilus will be his bread and butter. One of the most sweaty champions you can afford to play in an ARAM game for sure. It seems like that Remember the Beat did not get that Yumi in this ARAM game. So can we please get an F in the chat for Twitch? And you know, Ovly on this Syndra, she is the only AP mage for Team NA. Is this yep. going to be a problem when we are versing the Orn and Malphite? Well, I guess it's all... All comes down to how well she does on the Syndra, how confident she is. Because yeah. I mean, solo AP Syndra can definitely dish out a lot of damage. A lot of these champions on the team AU will be itemizing towards armor. So if she can get get rolling, she can definitely take over the game. I also noticed that Team Australia actually has a lot of um, melee champions compared yeah. to Team NA. So is this going to be Team Australia is going to play for the late game, those wombo combos with the Malphite and Nunu and Orn, and then we have the ADCs on the other side just trying to get that gap closer Oh, for sure. You'd have to expect away. it to be that way, right? You mean, if the, if the passive play comes out from the melee champions, you say, well, this is another L for Australia to take. Um, <laughs> so I'd love to see the Kiwi boys just get it done, you know, farm up a storm, get the first item online as quickly as possible, show them how it's done, and... Um, yeah, make life hell. I'm going to be keeping a big check as to where those flashes are. Who can dodge as many of those mouthful outs as possible? 
I believe Flash is actually on a shorter cooldown for Aaron. Yep. Is that correct? How how much shorter is it? Do you oh, know? I forget the numbers. It's a certain percentage. It's 180, right? Yeah, it's definitely a lot shorter. <laughs> Ovli, I see you, queen. <laughs> What's up? What is up, my queen? I think she's just realized she's the solo AP for it. <laughs> she has to pop off. I think she's noticed that some... She's going to shit on Team AU Ooh, is what's wow. going to happen, Ooh. guys. I'm trying to do a bit of is lip it? reading here. <laughs> I think it says, I love NZ. It's close to NA. <laughs> I'll wave to you. See you, AU. Hey, okay, oh, well, hey. nice lip yeah. getting in there. And we do have Amel doing a little sneaky dab on the very side, so. Is he repping the Team Liquid he jersey is. now? He, he is. is. He's copying mid base to a T. It's rent free. I think they're going for a Paper Scissors Rock here. On Paper Scissors Rock? Well, we'll never know who won. Ah, uh, yep. It's a one-man cam. Could not follow that. All right, Skimmy, okay. give us a play-by-play. -play. Yeah, so we're going to get the hands out here. Nice and moisturized. We're looking to <laughs> really showcase what they can do. Rock, paper, scissors. Here we go. Oh, actually, a bit of a seesaw effect here. Double rock. Getting solid. Is that a best Hopefully of three? I, th I think that's a Team AU dub. Rock, It's looking like it, isn't it? Scissors. Team NA has lost the rock, paper, scissors. Is it doomed? I think it may be. The it's a sense of things to come. suffering over up in Team NA, and we do Definitely have the best start. a lobby issue currently, so we are trying to, you know, what did you actually think of the two comps? Because we saw that Jinx. Jinx is absolutely insane paired with an Orn for late game, so how is Team NA going to win this? Are they going to win in the mid game? I mean, I find it would be absolutely hilarious if, like, uh, Violet was sweating out of his mind, saying, all right, let's just cruise on through. Toppy, mate, give me those ornaments. Yeah, 12 oh, CS per minute. <laughs> like, let me get those stats up. I'm trying to sweat. I'm, I'm trying to get the best possible position for next year on, on the LCO. He's going to realize there's no Raptor camp and no Wolf camps to take. What, and he, what and he's more can I take? freaking out. Spam pinging on the map, stop last hitting, <laughs> playing like I'm Nasus, but I'm actually Jinx. I think I took a look at Team Australia. They actually have a very legitimate comp. They have the Orn top lane, Nunu jungle, I believe it was maybe Malphite. We can put Malphite in mid lane, yeah. going full AP on Remember the Beat, and then we have the Jinx Velkoz bot lane combo. Yep. Meanwhile, on Team Keely, aka Team NA, actually, they have three ADCs, so they're all very resource-heavy champions that really need that three-item spike. So how is this going to work out for them? It's going to be civil warfare, isn't it? It's going to be who's the most giga chat on the stage to say that CS belongs to me. Yep. Ultimately, uh, we've got a few AD carry mains, we've got some mid lane mains, we've got a jungle main, right? So who really wants to be the gremlin that gets vengeance for all those summoner rift action? And Jinx, I mean, coming in as the solo AD carry for Team AU, is it? Um, Definitely one of those champions where if you get going and you are able to pick up like one kill at the start of a fight, you can just literally For sure. get a pentakill. And we've seen Violet do that on the rift. I've loaded into oh, the Howling Abyss. Gimme, take us away. Fantastic, we're into the action. Uh, let's just do a quick stock check of some of these summoners. Our mid beast Disco Nunu, we love that, yeah, don't we? Good. Big fan of that one. I'm gonna peer around to the side. No exhausts. And uh, that's about it. So okay, I can I can lean back into my chair now. And Skimmy, are we gonna flame the no guardians item from Violet there? Yep. Guardian item is supposed to be the, the most river. broken item. The in Guardian the Iron Fart is so gold efficient. Insanely broken. Alright, so we do have some poking going Ooh, on. Big stun by Ovali, actually. So the problem with Team NA right now is that they only oh, have Ovali. one front line. <laughs> Not a good start for our resident uh, analyst slash host. Oh, oh, max range in the hook. It is a glacial augment, so Mel you know, will be a, a fair bit squishy. Here comes the, the massive Unibol? snowball. Oh, Midbeast in trouble. Midbeast is dead. Mel's jumped in. He's alive. Oh, there's oh. first blood. It's why not they get set. Team New Zealand on the board. Make it NA, because that's where they're going after this performance. Ovali now on the score sheet. And, and Mel doesn't miss. He's getting these hooks. They're so low. Why oh. not on another? Oh, Give me you all right. Oh, TB. So close. 0-3 currently towards Team NA. They just grabbed up three kills in the early game. I believe it all started with Midbeast rolling that ball down mid lane. 3 no, this is a premonition for the grand final. Uh -huh. uh, we oh, do have Midbeast go. going up again. Hooks on, there's the stun. Oh, big knockout by Toppy actually. Trump is just out of range. I tell you what though, Velkos breaks my mind. It just brings me back to like year 11, year 12 Oh, math. trigonometry. All the angles, can you connect the dots? Horrific. Yeah. Remember the beat has literally a sliver here. Not gonna contribute too much. 
Amelk's been on point with oh, these moves. Again. They tried to buffer it, it just wasn't to be the case. That's another kill. Oh, Omni Violet. now, with two Violet. kills. Violet running forward, he's bad enough, he's running away. Oh, he's been sniped away, decoy. Yeah. They he's didn't in. protect the president. Violet's dead. Shout out, actually, decoy's been called LCO legend. He is. What a he name. is an LCO legend. After what he did what at name. MSI, he deserves that. Absolutely. Deserves that title. Mid beast once again. Oh! Oh. Why not Zen? He's smurfing. Double kill for the uh, the Lucian. How good's an army though? Bring the Lucian is army. currently four and one. We have Why Not carrying the team of NA currently. Look at the dev fan vote. Seventy oh, percent towards Team AU and only thirty percent towards Team NA. Is that fan vote not just this couch? One Kiwi, two Australians. Huh? We've been outnumbered. Outnumbered, but you're about to outskill Team AU. Absolutely. Don't say that yet, Kitty. Absolutely, Kitty. Oh my oh, god, it's big. Huge. Big laser beam. It's the Death Star. With the carry dying down first. Huge knock up so coming out of Nunu. Here we go. Pull the forward squad. Oh, oh no, Oh, it's so clean. That hunk of a man, oh. Toppy, is an esports athlete. <laughs> There's the ace. Yeah. That's the ace at 3 minutes and 50 seconds. What a chaotic game coming out of this show match. It's a 5-minute tower. Match. This is a broken. challenge. I love this challenge. Tower goes down. Trish oh, does not? barely anything. Finds at least one. It answers your question though, Kitty Right? What are the melee champions going to do? They're just so much in their face. So much CC. Here comes a Melg. He's a one-man show, isn't he? Oh, he's dancing on them. <laughs> <laughs> really cheeky stuff there, Melg. I'm sure Ovali will be very happy with your performance after this dub. But we do have the Kraken Slayer coming out of Jinx straight away, while mm -hmm. the enemy team actually hasn't completed a single Mythic just quite yet. Yeah, a bit of a delay because I think a few of them went for that Guardian's Horn, right? So uh, they want a bit of sustainability in the long term. Now, nah, Violet wants to go right now with that Kraken Slayer. Those snowballs are going to be so, so annoying. What are your thoughts on actually this cleanse in Ghost Nunu? Because I'm kind of looking at Team NA and they barely have any CC for this cleanse. Maybe he was hoping one of his teammates would dodge the lobby so he didn't have to play. Yeah. And then he, he didn't realize they were on stage. Yeah. That's probably my, my thinking. That's a good call. I'm yeah. looking at the minimap and there are 10,000 missing pings coming out of Team AU. Who do you think is actually making those pings? My goodness. I'm curious to see who's the shot caller on any of these teams. Who do you think has the loudest voice? Do you, do you reckon Why not? I mean, Why not's a bit of a chatterbox, He's pretty he? loud, yeah. He'd be in there. In the looks of it, Ovali was getting very vocal before the game. Yeah. Looks on though. A lot of early aggression, right? Two turrets potentially falling down in the first five minutes. Do certainly love to see that one. That's the best thing about this map. It's five and a half minutes and, and all this has already happened. 21 kills. Absolutely. Mid oh, beast. The CC overlapping again. It's just a little bit too much to contend with. The heal pack goes down, but it's just not enough. Two members dead. Violet once again is getting excited in more ways than one. He's running so, so fast. He's found another shutdown oh. too. These 80 carries are getting shredded like paper. Can't do anything. Just not enough damage to burst through Toby to burst through Remember the Beat. Shock the last the last man standing. <laughs> no chance. Takes him down. Toppy's gonna die to tower. Ah, uh, it's a good snowball tag. I love that from ML. Teleport's just a fraction closer. Ghost being burned. We're on. Why not once more? He shuts down the moves from the Jinx. Dashes out of the Whoa. moves from that Velkos as well. There's the culling. And Drag who just wiggles away. Too easy. Very, very slippery coming out of Draco. And we do have my favorite emote coming out of Draco as well, which is the Yumi with the little sweat drop coming down, because that's exactly what happens for my solo queue teammates when yep. you lose yep. the kill. That's half of ARAM is emote spamming to mentally tilt your opponents. I won a 1v1 yesterday actually in the booth. I was just doing the Nasus dance on repeat. Yeah. Spamming E is AP Nasus. If they're mentally Shout broken. <laughs> I see you right there in the crowd, brother. <laughs> Toppy going in for a three man knock up. But he dies. Oh no. Remember the beat not able to follow up with the oh, damage. Violet. Where's Amel going? He's trying to hook his way home. The uh -oh. Oh. Denied. We were invested there for a second, weren't we? Yeah, Far we out. were. It's bang on even, mid beast.
Leading line right now, looking to try and corral the units. Back to another health pack. Not much sustain to talk about right now. A little bit of life still, obviously, from that uh, Guardian Sworn, but you need to trade. You need to force oh, the hot the depth charge. Knock them up. He's not going to rinse off that of mid beast. He jumps in. Is he going to go in with the glacial storm? It's just not enough. And Milk has his eyes set on the prize, immediately altered Violet after getting in range for that. Absolutely has his eyes on the money. I mean, this win, uh, I mean, this performance right now from Emel feels personal. It feels like, Carbon, I miss you. I want you back in my life. Yeah, why aren't I playing the LCA? Can Toppy 1v4 this? Will he survive the tower, oh! guys? He jukes. He's taken one. He's dashed away. He's dropped vision. Can oh he find a second? God. Oh, Toppy! Toppy the machine! Toppy may just be the greatest top laner. And Probably that is why he has so man. many fans. That's Kimmy. why he has that so many fans. They're here in the crowd it. as well. Far out. We do have team captain NA, I believe, flaming the rest of the team for not being able to kill the hunk of a man named Toppy. Horn is just a Who can deal with him, Kitty? Honestly. Honestly. The snipe? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, he's got a lot of gold. RTB's gone as well. Oh, he committed, but the team backed away. Doesn't matter in the end, though. Violet's going to get excited one more time. Mid Beast uh, on his P plates has crashed the cart. Oh. Especially Violet's missing playing with Eldoric right now. I bet he is. He wants that pop off support play, doesn't he? We actually have a Mel going for the locket item on Nautilus, so he's not actually as tanky as we would have liked being the solo frontline of Team NA, but he provides that AoE shield for the rest of the team, just in case Midbeast gets that five-man ultimate following up with the mouth idol. Is that your favorite support item? That isn't my favorite support Shrelias? item. Shrelias? It's Shrelias, because yeah. I feel like that item, the 100, 1,000 and 100 component is too expensive. Are we doing the prices is. right? Yeah. Get the can we, can we guess how much <laughs> their builds are right now? All right, do the do the Jinx build. Oh, that, that's easy. Oh, really? No, I don't know how much It's 80k. 80k is the only <laughs> answer. I don't even need to look. But oh, if I we go again, now, though. We have two people on one HP. I believe Jinx picks up a kill, picks up a double. He's running, isn't he? He's keen to go for it. Everyone is Everyone's there. so low. low. Oh, Snowball's on. Will Toppy take it? He stepped on a trap. Oh, he's flashed away. Oh, here comes a... Oh, can he snipe out? Shock a flash oh, afterwards. He's going to get him. Toppy. He doesn't have a team, but he's got a performance, making, mate. He doesn't need a team. He is a team all by himself. He is. Look at the CC. Decoy. Decoy. Oh, oh he just gets the trade kill. Tommy is still alive somehow. These clutch moments, Team Australia just pulling away. Toppy actually has seven kills on the Orn, the second most kills in this game on Team AU. Maybe he's the second carry. He's looking like it right now. I mean, he's a smart man, right? Frozen Heart first item rush up against so much attack damage. What is that? He carries aren't loving life right now. Snowball just oh, misses, no, dashes Obli. in, doesn't get a knockup. Obli's gone. No summoner, no flash away. Hook, well, maybe Hook. We didn't see that one, mate. We actually have Midbeast opting in for the Everfrost on this Nuno, so he's just basically a CC bot. Yep, certainly is. Dancing up the street right now. Keeping Team NA humble. He's charging. Here we go. Mobility would have been burned. The Caitlyn traps make it so annoying, though. For sure. I mean, all three AD carries have mobility, right? Yeah. So you can try and bait that one out nice and early. Good luck landing anything. Now, this is a, a real Summoner's Rift game. We'd be saying, I'm sure Rusty would be saying, yeah, two free items, that's what we're looking for. It's Lord <laughs> Dominic's regards come out, you know. Bit of armor penetration. Item spikes coming, yeah, coming through. Yeah, shred down these tanks. Make it easy for you. I think we're going to get a proper 5v5, you know. Everyone is alive. Yeah. Ultimates, I can't see on the left, but on the right, they're looking, they're looking good for Team NA. I feel like if Tim Team NA wants to engage, it has to be all eyes on Amel because he has that glacial and that hook to be able to get to the back line of Team AU. However, they're too tanky. Yeah. Snowball's such a good uh, summoner choice as well, by the way, because I mean, you can juke out certain spells, right? I've had like a, a Carthus Requiem come down, and as long as like the Perfect Snowball's long enough, you just juke it out completely. No damage connects. You go with like a Tarak engage, for example, right? It's, it's awesome. We do have Violet actually sitting on 68 CS. Here oh. comes the Ornhorn. Big knockup. 
Multiple members knocked up, actually. Laser goes out again. RTB, Draku rather untouched. In jumps, why not? He's flashed across. It's personal. He gets oh, a health pack. Oh, Violet lives. Violet's the king. That was actually really unlucky coming out of why not? Because he flashed in for that kill. However, Violet just got that health pack at the oh. very end. He's chasing. He's chasing. <laughs> Boom. And he gets it. That's good synergy from them two. Captain to captain. You know, unbelievable. Australia just getting it done right now. Two items starting to come on free. I am hoping and coping <laughs> that NA might find some way back into this one. Oh, low health bars. But Kitty, you love Jinx, uh, Chompers, don't you? What? I heckin' what? love Jinx what? from... What? <laughs> uh, now I'm joking because Jinx is just such a good champion when you are playing these ARM games because once you get that execution on the tower, you just get that speed and then you just yeah. kill everyone. Especially when you do have this many front lines, you sure. just keep going forward. However, looking at Team NA, they do have oh. that LDR oh. coming out. That was a little bit dirty. Come on again. Team NA Frost. Knock them up, take them back, send them home. Say how are ya? Oh, there we go. I think that just might be item death. Yeah. We've died too many times. It's got to happen at some stage, right? Ulting for the wave. I believe that Team NA wants an inhibitor coming out of this fight. Now that they've got an ace. Respawns are so quick, though, you know? You're not ever going to look at a situation where it's like 50 seconds. And Melk might try to die to turret hit, deny himself. I think, like, the tag lasts at least, like, 20 seconds in ARAM. It's huge, but he does manage to get it off. We're on. Why not? Permanently aggressive into Violet. Oh, no. <laughs> He's blinked into it, mate. Yeah. Violet lives on one once again. My man doesn't die. I'm looking at the CS count. Violet's currently on 90 CS in a 40 minute Howling Abyss. Game. Not his best work. Not his nah, best it's not work. his best work. Hey, you you have highlighted, some, right? You have some rough words with the team. After <laughs> There's this one. no jungle camps, mate. He's doing. Dead man's plate actually for mid beast. Look at him. Oh, boy. oh my god, Ovali. That was personal. That was an that, attack. That was definitely yeah. There was some meaning behind that one. <laughs> Justice for the interview before. Hey, <laughs> as Toppy, he look at the damage he's taking. Zero. Uh, immune. Immune. Oh, that's all it takes. Not, True shot barrage is nice. Maybe this is the way that Team NA can come back into this one. Why not Logan? He's still gonna dash on in though. Find himself another. Remove Dragu from the equation. They're finding it. They're not letting this base get broken into. PGG up against Chiefs. There you go. We need to call out Team AE right now. That's exactly it. We need to call out Team Australia. They haven't fed the Poros. They have four cookies compared to Team NA. That's disgraceful. Disappointing. That is disgraceful. the soul, doesn't it? They really want to kill Toppy. Burning the heal for that as well. He's got the moves like Jagger. Hard to touch. Ultimately, Mel goes in and realizes that's not who I'm after anymore. Mid-Beast coming in with the snowball. mid -beast. Oh, good hook. Three-man knock-up. Still knocks them up there, doesn't it? Oh, good Violet snowball. What a snowball. He's excited. Let me find any more, though. Violet is topped up and healthy. Oh, that's He's got damage. three items. Good block the by double Mel. Flash. Oh, no. RTB's RTB. in. He's running away. Where is he going? RTB wants to backdoor. What's happening? Where is he going? RTB's lost. Oh! <laughs> uh, it's not going to matter in the end. <laughs> no way, decoy. Come on, Danny. Oh, legend. Get it done, mate. Oh, it's too much. Mid be straight Whoa. into the fountain. <laughs> I wasn't joking when I said that AU was made of hunks of men. Oh, men. Sorry, they so have too many tanky champions on this roster. Look, good play good, isn't it? You know, that's why skin diff can certainly be a, uh, a big factor. Respawns out. I mean, why not just oh. evaporate it? Didn't get a chance to play, did he? Okay, Ovali. We're back. We currently have Violet sitting on 17 kills compared to the Ezreal decoy on 15. Quite a close one, actually. What would you be playing if you were in this one? Sorry? What would you be playing if you were in this one here, mate? Oh, hopefully not that Velcro's there. <laughs> um, 
You can hear the chat going off as well from the spectate thing, so you you can tell they're going back and forth. Absolutely. Chat. I'm just waiting for that one like Moscow Five moment. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Back in the day, right when everybody's hiding in the bush, they go for the face check. Mid beast just evaporates them, right? Yeah. Five man panzer kill. This Jinx is quite untouchable now with four items coming in and the ornament coming out from Toppy. Mid Beast? Well, what was that? Bit of a DUI there. D. <laughs> Very me. Where can we get any uh, kitty play by play? We're in a bit of a stalemate at the moment. The minion yeah, wave is on. coming in with Surely. the Kaelin Trap set up. We have the Velkos poke coming out. But Jinx, the Lucian ult comes with the calling and clears the wave. But nothing is happening. And Melg is waiting for the moment. This feels like a, a game five situation where it's like elders just spawn and both teams just posturing. No one wants to actually be the first one to like make a mistake. That's the funny thing for me, right? Because it's a show match and you know that like, well, yeah. there's not really much at oh, stake. But there's out. definitely go, egos. Kitty, go Kitty. They want to win. Go Kitty. Jinx gets up the first kill with Orn actually missing ultimate. Velpos presses ultimate and actually gets one kill. Oh. Nuni flashes and gets two people. Jinx, Jinx to the Jinx violet. popping off with a double That's the oh. and a triple. Is go he gonna get the quadra? He flashes forward, but there are too many health packs. Oh, just at a range Jinx of that is zap. able to reach LC oh, the he's on. He goes oh. in. Quadra kill. Could be an unofficial penta, penta kill. Unofficial, unofficial. Unofficial penta, penta kill. kill. Round of applause. Round of applause, well everyone, Violet. for Violet. We didn't get one in the regular season. We didn't get one in playoffs so far. I'm telling you, oh, man, I play now. these ARMs of Violet. He just gets pentas. Forget scrims. Yeah. Just I believe he's the day. last bastion of hope for Team NA here. Oh, no. And just as I say that, taken down. Mel coming in hot with the snowball, getting the ultimate, and we've switched <laughs> to mid -beast. So I do not know what's happening in the enemy base, but Caitlyn has died. A Melg versus the world. It wasn't to be the case, and as he would say, hi, I'm a Melg. A Melg. And they're just farming them one by one. Elsie, a legend. Decoy. Oh, he's duked them out. Oh, well, skill shots are going left, right, and center. Not connecting. No one wants to be the one to end. There oh. we have it. Well, congratulations. Martha, flash order. There we Australia. Go. Team AU. They're a little bit too good. To Team Australia for taking the win up against Team NA. Draco going in for a close hug with the boys. Bit of celebration going on. A well-fought game. That'd feel good. A well-fought game with a well-thought of roster coming in. All of these handsome fellows coming up on stage after a very successful win. So, Team Captain Midbeast. Be a long time for a few of these players, right? Get to play on a stage. Nerves distance oh. be a factor. Just not shaking hands. Oh. It's in. Oh, there we go. Commits, commits. In the end. We have all the players giving some nice and firm handshakes after a very tough match. What is Midbeast doing? Mid Checking oh. out the score? That is not his PC. Quick stat check. Does a Melg deserve to play for Team Liquid? <laughs> Whose PC is that? That is... Was that Shock? Was Shock in the middle? It I want to say he was. Been. He's in Shock though, oh. you know? They Congratulations lost. to Team AU for proving that Australia is the better team compared to NA, Absolutely. I have to admit, yep, you've beaten us on home ground soil. As I said before, uh, three hours of jet lag, mate, it is unbearable. This way you really just dissociate is. and it's say... It's too much. It's t Decoy knows, mate, it's just too much. Oh my god, I'm such a big fan, Toppy! Bye, everyone. Amelg not happy. Amelg is spewing. S slammed the jersey down. <laughs> Amelg is spewing. I believe we do have some player interviews being prepped in the back, but what did you guys think of that game? It was really tight for like a lot of it, yeah. right? It, especially in kill scores, always 41 to 41 or something really intense. And then we just had a couple good fights there from Team AU to bring it home. I think the engage at the end of the day for uh, AU was just a little bit too much. I mean, Toppy for me, MVP. Oh, for sure. Toppy did it all. Yep. The dare MVP, no, my he's, he's got his first win of the split. 
Ooh, oh, he Lissimi. did. He got his first he win. He got his he first He's a win king. of the split indeed. And let's take a replay of what just happened. So we actually have this level four fight where it turned out really bad for Team AU from the very start. However, with them picking up those CS and they are able to get the three item spike, Violet was just unstoppable. And like Skimmy was saying, right, it's that level six power spike with all these huge ultimates coming out from RTB, from Toppy. Um, just made it really hard for those AD carries to play. And then as we get later in the game, I mean, there's just too much tankiness, too much armor. Uh, no one on the side of Team NA actually able to do any meaningful damage. I actually really respect Why Not for going in on that Lucian. He was able to get so many clutch uh, kills on yeah. Violet as well, knowing who the main carry was on Team AU. However, you know, it just wasn't enough because they were just too, too tanky, Skimmy. If that was your Nami in the game, though, different story. Let's With be honest. my Nami? You're saying that Melg isn't a good enough support nah, nah, on nah, that nah, Nautilus? Nah, 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 nah. I've seen your Nami. Second to none, mate. You could be an honorary Kiwi. No, 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 no. You can't say that, King, when you're the best Nami in OC. <laughs> We've already seen those bubbles on the Howling I've seen. This. Remember that game we played where I was the Nami and you were the Callista? And it was just nail diff. It was, it was just nail too diff. hard. But something else that was diff was Toppy diff in this game because this, this right one here, Kitty. Unreal. was absolutely insane with Malphite, RTB coming in with a triple kill for <laughs> zero. It's just too much. Obli getting absolutely This was nice owned. though. Yeah, oh, really no. good synergy. Good synergy from a yeah. couple boys that never played together before. <laughs> Like an angry substitute teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Is this just Ovly dying oh on repeat montage? Now, I feel guys? like she got Come singled on, out. I feel like Team A, you made an effort to make oh. Ovly. RTB actually got some really insane Malphite ults yeah. on this game because he was building full AP, having the Shadow Flame and Ludens coming out, dealing tons of damage on that Malphite. I would have been upset if he actually built tank Malphite. I'd say, Come on, RTB, mate. Yeah, what have you, you have to go. Right Come here. on, mate. I Every just love time. that player cam as well. Like everyone is just focused on their screen and Ovli is just screaming, <laughs> not even looking at her PC. Yeah. Maybe Xenox was right because he said that NA stood for no Americans and the only American on Team NA couldn't stand up. I think, um, I think to quote what you said, Kitty, NA more like never advance and uh, we haven't advanced Ooh. here today. We have not advanced, but someone that has advanced and I, I believe we have the interviews in the background with Xenox. So take it away, Xenox. Yes, we've got our interviewees, of course, our captains from the show match. Midbeast, congratulations on the win. A bit of a hard-fought one for an ARAM. It's a little bit sweaty, I'm not going to lie. The Disco Nunu, we got the dub. I have a lot of practice with that, so we ran it down mid. We got the win. Uh, now, obviously, you had some fighting words, obviously, to begin with, but all the fighting was done in-game. Uh, what, what, what happened? All I gotta say is that it felt like a 1v9 there, okay? Not only did he get Malphite and Orin and Violet on Jinx, but I had a Melg on my team. That's like the the heaviest anchor, the heaviest weight to carry. And plus, he was on uh, freaking Nautilus, okay? Didn't block a single thing for our squad. Didn't block anything for me. Uh. I guess those New Zealanders are not getting imported to NA then. Uh, Mid Beast, obviously, you, uh, must be excited to just get the win, especially considering Ovli here is just throwing a bit of a temper tantrum. Classic NA, just complaining about every little thing. Um, had to get the revenge, you know, NA, they steal all our best players. Probably not going to be importing any of that team, but maybe Violet will be heading across next year, who knows? So, I don't know, a little bit of revenge. We got the win. Super happy with it. Lovely. Anything you want to say? All I can say is that I feel bad that I just perpetuated NA's international performance. Don't worry, NA usually does that themselves anyway, of course. Everyone, thank you so much for watching the show match. Well, I think what everyone's here to see is the grand final, right? We're going to have a very short break, but of course, once we do come back, the grand final will be underway here for Championship Sunday. Oh. He shoots, he's taken one, he's dashed away, he's dropped vision. Can he oh find a second? Oh, oh. Toppy! Toppy the machine! Toppy made He's missing ultimate, Velpox presses ultimate and actually gets one kill. Oh. Moody flashes and gets two people. Jinx, Jinx to Violet! popping off with a double. That's pretty strange. Hey, look, menu pop. Rock, paper, scissors, here we go. Oh, actually, a bit of a seesaw effect here. Double rock, getting solid. Oh, lost! I, th I think that's a Team AU dub. Rock, it's looking like it, isn't it? Scissors. Team NA has lost the rock paper scissors.
check in to Melbourne so you can check out all the action after DreamHack ends. Experience Melbourne's laneways, dining, coffee, arts and culture while you're here. There's something to suit every mood and budget. Head to visitmelbourne.com to discover more. We all love a dare fix here in the studio, but when it comes to those tough moments in life, a dare won't fix it. But thankfully, a conversation could. Dare Ice Coffee is continuing their partnership with the harm prevention charity, Are You OK? this year to help us identify the signs that someone in our life may be struggling. Maybe they've had a really good game, but they just aren't celebrating. Maybe their team is up, but they are feeling down. Or perhaps they're just not themselves. If you see these signs, no matter how subtle, stop and ask, are you okay? Your conversation could change a life. For more info on how to identify these signs and start a conversation, visit areyouok.org.au. You know what? I'm going to spend some time to sit down with a couple of my own mates and have a chat. But remember, a dare won't fix it. A conversation could. Ask, are you okay?
the team to beat their team to watch all split long 21 flawless games back to back they are record setters when you're on stage everyone's focus is just like it's up a notch pretty much when we play good when we play together we look like a real good team now i've seen like what, what we're okay full of and how well we play on stage. It's land as a whole, it's just like a, a whole new ball game. I think the biggest reason why we lost plan one was my mistake, to be honest. And this time, I'm not making mistake, we're going to walls. Spikes the Baron for a little bit of life, but it's not enough. Tapuna and Aladora seeming to be the focus right now. Chiefs are split apart. Tapuna's going to take out one. The rocket doesn't connect. He leaps. You can't beat Tally. You cannot beat Topoon. Raze is unleashed at the moment. Hellfar is Tally. Oh! All right, Ultra Shock Blades. The Chiefs go. They're in. Tally wants it. Misses the charm. Deficit. And it's a three man Paul Bryce into the shove again. Cataclysm lights out. GG right there. I think we all believe that what we're doing is, is like right. We're just going to have a lot of confidence. Foreman looking to try and take down those key targets. It's a one for one trade so far. Uh, it's just going to be a double kill here found by Predator. He's looking to try and make it a triple kill. He wants them all. He's still alive. I'm just really, really stoked to play in front of a crowd again. Like, I want to hear like the, the energy of the stadium. Prince comes out, Tully's there to try and back him up right now. He saw some the Puma, he can't do it all on his own, but Raze is completely crazy. untouched at this very moment as he just jumps in and evaporates the dreams of order. Last split, we stumbled at the finish line. We've put in like everything we possibly can to make sure that never happens again. I don't know, it feels like, to me, it's been a long time coming. Look at Taboon! Flashing across and just locking down all four members. That should be the opening that they do. Everyone has wanted this grand final and we're getting it. This is the most deserving finals that we'll have. Last time that these two teams faced each other in that five game epic that we had in split one. I'm just praying we get that again. So into the back, getting knifed upon by a key carry, but the Akali goes to the mountain laser. The X goes up, there's the double kill. No, He's the double as kill. Well. Like losing doesn't get any easier for me. I just want to like win as much as possible. I think it'll feel like amazing to like finally win in front of the crowd. Jumps in and steals the Elder Rusty. Chiefs are just from a different part. My big question is what it's going to be like for them to play on a stage in what has been such a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to is the LCL. Race? Actually, it's a base uh, race. Yeah. They're marching, oh they're flashing, they're, they're going to go to this one. I don't believe this. I do not believe this. Before. Only aim for perfection. Ain't no half stepping. I'm going to take you back. Just evaporated. Good old rocking them all in place, linking up with Kyosei. That's an ace. Sun is shining here upon us at DreamHack Melbourne for the LCU Split 2 playoffs. It's Championship Sunday. Pentanet taking on the Chiefs, the undefeated Chiefs as well at that. This is, of course, what they're going to be playing for, this fabulous trophy. $15,000 and a spot 
to represent this region at Worlds. So much on the line, so much at stake, so much pride as well. The Chiefs, of course, failing in split one. They will not want to fail again in split two. It's as simple as that. They are undefeated. They are the favorites, but that doesn't make them the champions just yet. Pentanet, of course, will take them on and give them everything that they've got. For now, though, of course, so much to go through. And of course, Ovali on the, on the wonderful couch, I was almost going to say desk, is going to take you through it. Thank you so much, buddy. We've got a couch and we've kind of got a desk coffee table situation going on here because of course it's time for the grand finals and we are in the arena. It's packed. We've got the crowd around us and the players getting ready to show their stuff. I'm Ovli and right next to me, I've got our first analyst on the couch, Amel. Hi, buddy, you look snazzy. Amel. Oh, I forgot he's gonna keep doing this all weekend yeah, long. Yeah, he does that. Of course, but then, Maximize, I know last time I described you as tall, smart, and handsome, but you seem to beat it even now with like this setup and chain. I felt out of place without having glasses on the desk, so I feel like it just adds to my uh, professionalism and character. <laughs> what? I'm the odd one out now. I don't have glasses on. You don't? Do you have contacts in? I do have contacts in. I'll be looking at you guys. So then, Kitty, basically what you've just done is you've taken another three steps ahead of us in terms of the fashion game. But I'm glad that everyone dressed super nice and snazzy for grand finals because everyone's trying to impress here today, especially our two teams. But that being said, there are two more very important people that we need to meet and introduce. And that is, of course, our casters. We've got Rusty and Skimmy standing by. Gentlemen, you two are looking good. Too. So we try. We do try. Uh, ultimately, I feel like we all got the same memo. We're blue. You feel powerful. Maybe it's a bit of a premonition that we're Chiefs Spice. I don't know. I don't know, but what you do you reckon? wait and see predictions for that one, mate. Oh, I'm praying surely. for five games either way, and I'm just Absolutely. hoping that the throats hold up because it is going to be a big day if we it's go It's feeling weak already, and I know, I feel like if it does go to a game five, I'm going to be walking out of here limping. No voice, <laughs> nothing. So That's what it takes. Yeah. Hopefully the, uh, the season, the year as a whole goes out with a bang. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, I want you to save your voice, rest up, because I think all of us have our fingers crossed for a five-game banger yep. series. So, I mean, honestly, just after the show match that me and Amelg were just in, I think my throat is also kind of going just from yelling at him yeah. because his Nautilus was absolutely awful. He was so angry at me, man. I know. Just Let's cry it out, buddy. This. Cry it out. But listen, even though the show match was a treat for the winning team of uh, Mid Beast and everything, us. all the audience members are actually in for a treat and a special prize as well. Because if you are all watching on watch.lolesports.com right now, we've got drops going on for that ever coveted LCO Split 2 2022 Summoner Icon. Remember, if you're currently watching on Twitch, YouTube, or something else, you need to be watching on watch.lolesports.com in order to secure that drop. Do any of you guys have a Summoner Icon drop right now for the oh, LCO? I want it. Let me get it. Do you, all right, well, no, you're casting right now, or you're kind of anal analyzing right now, so. I'll leave, I just, I just want my icons. For the, just for the e for the icon? Cool, you man. know what it is, it is kind of worth, it is. it is pretty worth. But let's go ahead and take a look at our playoff bracket right now, just to see how far all of these teams have come since the beginning. Look at that round one game. So many teams being knocked out. Goodbye, Kanga, Dire Wolves, uh, order as well. And right now we could see for the grand finals, Chiefs taking on Penta GG. This is going to be an amazing uh, match that a lot of people are excited for. And of course, because it is at DreamHack Melbourne in front of a live crowd, live audience yet again. Kitty, people are getting pumped. People are getting pumped. Only two teams left for the LCO grand final split two. And we've actually had PGG drop from the upper bracket to the lower bracket and they've made their way through to the grand finals, which I personally believe that this lower bracket has some kind of buff. Yeah, it's deja vu from split one, right? We've had a team get knocked down into that lower bracket, make a run, and their opponent is eventually the Chiefs, right? So it's a bit of a storyline there coming in again. Could it be a repeat of split two where we see the Chiefs fall or will they be able to finally get their spot at an international tournament? Yeah, it does feel like order made the miracle run and PGG, you know, it's a chance to do it. It's a chance to take down the Chiefs once and for all. Definitely, but I mean, there is one thing that we do have to kind of talk about before we start hyping up today's match. And that is, of course, our farewell to order. They put up a great fight, but just unfortunately, weren't able to cut it. Yeah, um, I actually brought in my order jersey um, today. That's, that's real, I promise. And I'm not gonna need this one anymore, so. I haven't tried this much. Come throw. on, toss it. Oh, toss be careful it. now, be careful. Sorry, that was a bad throw. 
It was a good throw. Amel got all the way up to the second row, and now a Ooh. lucky audience member is going home with the one and only Amelg Order swag shirt. I love that. That's a keeper. You can take that home and frame it. But now, as we do say our final farewell for this split playoffs, at least for Order, uh, you know, they did put up a pretty good fight, Kitty. They did put up a really good fight, but unfortunately, they did go out with a 0-3 up against PGG. And even up against the Chiefs, they, are, they were on a six-game losing streak. However, I think it's because with the expectation from winning the split earlier in the year, they were, kind of, they were kind of struggling for split two, and they have so much expectation where it's really limited them in terms of this playoffs. Now, Max, I want to ask you, since you know you're a part of the squad, yep. I know you're close with all the team members and everything. How did the team take the loss? Look, as competitors, I think they were all very devastated. Um, you know, you never, you never like to lose, especially when, you know, I feel like they were really confident in themselves to get to the grand final and to try to have a repeat of Split 2. But at the end of the day, it is all really about how you show up for that series. Um, and PGG just proving too good on the day. Um, you know, a lot of predictions favoring order there, but at the end of the day, yeah, they just they didn't show up that what they would have liked on the Saturday, on the Friday. Um, but hopefully they'll be back next year. Yeah, I mean these players have all been through a lot, and obviously no one wants to get 3-0'd live. Um, but regardless, like they're all really talented players. Like I'm obviously a big fan, and I'm really excited to see where they end up in 2023. Yeah, each of these players, I know that they can probably find themselves a slot on a squad, really just continue to show what they are made of. Because again, even though their playoff run is over now. I think all of the players still had a fantastic performance. A performance almost as fantastic as the jackets that you have on right now because we've got the menu log swaggy jackets on, which can only mean one thing. And that's for everyone who is currently hungry at home. You now have the opportunity to win a $30 voucher from our friends over at Menu Log. All you have to do is type in Menu Pog in the chat right now. And I'm pretty sure that somewhere in the audience, People are going to be getting some vouchers from oh Menu God. Log Man as well. Look at him go. Oh, who gets a voucher? You get a voucher. Who you else can, gets a voucher? You think he's giving you autograph? Get a voucher. You, I want an autograph from him. Autograph from Menu Log yeah. Man? He can deliver to me any day. <laughs> man, I wish, what, what would the dream delivery be for you from Menu Log? That man right there. Just him? I'll take him. He doesn't have to carry any food your way? Yeah. Just carry himself. <laughs> I love Let that. Let him go. Kitty, what about you? Dream delivery on this stage right now. If Menu Log Man could just pull out a meal, a snack, and anything, what would you want? Dream delivery from Menu Log Man would be pride to OCE. I want <gasps> OCE to succeed in international events and finally grab their unrecognized win. That's that was beautiful. That's a beautiful and OC noble will not be order. silenced. <laughs> That's a noble order. I was just going to say boba. <laughs> I'm a little thirsty up here. I don't know about you, but Max, what about you? I was going to go the same line as Kitty and say best of five. Um, I really want this to go to five games. I really want there to be that, that fifth game where literally everything is down to the quintessential actions that happen. Um, yeah, that would, that would be my dream delivery. Man, I guess I'm just the only hungry one on the couch for food compared to actual matches. But for everyone who shares their same hunger and thirst, we actually have Xenox on the stage right now with the players. Well, hopefully shortly with the players, of course. I'm not going to lie, after those uh, menu log segments, always quite a little bit hungry. But uh, what I'm hungry for, of course, is the grand final itself. And we cannot have that without the players. So please, everyone, put your hands together for the undefeated Chiefs. Well, I couldn't quite get the job done in Split 1, but Redemption could be on the cards here in Split 2. That is the aim of the game for the Chiefs. But for their opponents, it's all about running that gauntlet. It started on Friday with a victory against Order. A resounding victory at that 3 nothing. Basically, the challenges to the Chiefs. Everyone, please, it's Pentanet.
Well, like any good Australian crowd, we love an underdog, and that is what Pentanet is going to represent today. Can they play spoil to the Chiefs? Can they etch their names once again on that trophy? Or for the first time, can the Chiefs do it themselves? So now, though, we go back to Ovalley on the couch. Nothing but excited smiles and happy faces as we saw the teams walk out. I really liked seeing Rogue start to pump up the crowd since especially the crowd was loving them on Friday's game. They was. Everyone in the crowd is shout if you're a PGG fan. PGG! PGG fan, but what about the Chiefs? Ooh, that's hard to tell. Lots. Pretty even. That pretty is, even. yeah, pretty even. Lots of love for both squads right now. And I do want to go ahead and take a look head to head video that we have of both of our competing teams. The Chiefs are so unbeatable. They're just an absolute titan that you're trying to take down. The best that we've seen from Pentanet may not even be enough. Everyone has known for a really long time on this team that we're a lot better than what we've ever shown. Everyone knows we're the best team in the league by a mile, not, not by a little bit. After our failing in split one, we didn't want anything short of a perfect run. And like we've already done 99% of that. We just have that last 1% to do. This is like absolutely our redemption arc. I'm gonna make sure like everything goes well. Try hard and we're gonna have goals. Well, I couldn't imagine losing and then working off stage. Very determined to win the series. There will be a bot dive every single game at some point before the four or five minute mark. Nobody roams better than Aladoric does. He's always one step ahead of the play. For me, it is a support difference. Uh, you look at Jungle, these two Korean Titans, they're just phenomenal, right? I mean, you look at Arthur, coming to split term, I mean, he's my MVP of the year. But Belkan will not back down from the challenge. Deep down, I'm pretty sure the Chiefs watched our water series and said, oh shit. All right, there's no way that they watched that series and said, oh, it's going to be a clean 3-0, we're going to have the perfect season. They know a fight is coming. To winter, we've been dancing every scream. I hope we can make last dance and go in the finals. Top lane's going to choke, 100%. ADC will probably choke again, because that's like his thing now, I think. He just chokes finals, that's what he's known for. If we come in and we, we don't have any problems like adjusting on stage, we will like just 3 them. If anyone takes the Chiefs down, it's going to be us. What an intense video that was. And you see them on your screen right now. The Chiefs, Tapoon, Arthur, Tally, Rays, and Aladoric. You can call them the Chiefs, but I think PG are going to be calling them the Raid Boss because absolutely undefeated, even into playoffs, this is the squad that they're going to have to face. Absolutely Titans, especially in that top lane. I'm looking specifically at Tapoon because he is absolutely a fridge when it comes to these stage games. No one has ever beaten him in a 1v1 circumstance. Maybe one or two times, but that's I'm sure it's just limit testing in terms of these competitive matches. But Chiefs coming onto this stage up against a live audience, it's definitely going to be a treat for them and they're going to do very well. And it's such a well-rounded roster. I mean, you look at all those five players and there's not one that you can point out and say, okay, this is a weakness we can exploit. And I think that's such a big reason behind why they have found such success and gone undefeated, right? Is because that on stage and in these high pressure games, they can all deliver, they can all know their role and they're just really hard to crack. Yeah, they're just stacked with experience, right? All these players have pretty much been overseas at some point. Um, all of them have played international tournaments except for Arthur, but he's played in the LCK. He's played with Chovy. We'll, we'll give him a pass. And yeah, I mean, 21-0 regular split, 24-0 after their playoffs game, and looking to make it 27-0. Absolutely. And uh, it absolutely also ignites that little bit of fire underneath them as well, just having that mess up 
in the last split. So what kind of happened there and do you think that they've evolved from that? So like we said, and Maximize has mentioned this as well, it's that lower bracket final buff where you have nothing to lose because Chiefs, I believe they also had a 17 game win streak up until that grand final. However, they dropped their first game up against Order just because of that high pressure situation where you are able to make mistakes. And today, no difference. They're up against PGG and they're able to make the same mistakes. However, like Tapoon said, they are not making a single mistake and they're going to international stage. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at their opponents right now. Of course, that is the Pentanet GG roster. You saw them earlier this week. You're going to see them again. Winter, Balkan, Yuri, Praydeath, and of course, Rogue. This is the squad that has everything to win and potentially also everything to lose. Yeah, and I think the name, the word that I associate with this squad is variance, right? And volatility. When they are playing at their best, like we saw yesterday, they can 3-0 order like it's nothing, right? And I really hope that the PGG that shows up today is that PGG. Because like Rogue said, they know that they can be the best team in the league. They all feel that and they can do it. Looking at some of these plays and the performances that they've had, they just need to show up today. Yeah, and it's such a good matchup, right? Because Chiefs, they're known as like that team that plays very standard and sort of stable and they're very good at that right but pgg they just go all out they're crazy they like to just jump in and you know get stuff done and it's just a matter of whether or not they can really rock the boat and get chiefs off their game i guess the best way that i would describe pg in their current state is that their early skir skirmishes will either bloom or they will boom <laughs> I love that. And we also saw the fact that they're ready to adapt to anything that the draft throws at them, especially from that series against Order, really figuring out some of their counter picks and showing just how well they can quickly adjust. But I actually ran into uh, Praydeath and Rogue outside yesterday, I think during media day. They lost their badges. They got locked out of the venue. They <laughs> needed some help getting back in. But something that they had said as I was speaking with them is that they said, listen, we still have a few surprises Ooh. up our sleeves. A couple more tricks that they have that they didn't even have to bring out against Order. So I'm very interested and curious to see what they've got in store for us today. And it sounds like we actually have an interview with the player. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Winter, you've just come back from a 3-0 series up against Order, and I believe it was a 3-1 series up against Kanga. So how are you feeling, mate? Well. Last, last week we 3 0 Kanga, we PGG smashed them really hard. And this, week, this time we 3 0 order, so it feels really good. You were doing the shot calling, you were also translating because you just, you're everywhere. So, what was the experience like for you? Well, honestly, in my third process, I just wanted to win really hard. And I just tried everything I can do possible to win the game. Like, even if we like, get a one more like CS, I just keep shouting at my teammates, like, really good, really good guys keep going on. If they make one mistake, then I just cheer them up. Like, they won't make mistake again. Mm. Like that. Well, talking about the next team, which is Chiefs, where you guys will be going against them, what is going through your mind that you can potentially go to Worlds for 2022? Mm, hopefully, we can 3 with them, just like last week and this week. And But this time, they have the best player in the world, Tali. So I'm a little bit worried that Yuri might get gapped really hard. But... Are you worried about Yuri? Yeah, because Tali is the best player in the world. I didn't know Tali was the best player in the world, so, you know, I'm sure the best player is actually sitting right next to me. I'm sure he's just very humble. But uh, best of luck in your match up against the Chiefs, and hopefully we get to see you once again and represent us at Worlds. Yeah, thank you. Tali, the best player in the world. What were you thinking when he said that to you? Tali, the best player? I'm not quite sure. Chiefs, the best team? I'm pretty sure on that one, mate. Absolutely, and I, I enjoyed hearing him say, you know, really giving respect to the opposing squad, but still also saying, like, we're hoping for that 3-0. And I don't want anyone to spoil predictions just yet, but in order to get there, what are they going to have to do? Honestly, yeah, just like what I said earlier, right? Rock the boat, because they showed in their order series that they know their strengths, right? They've figured out their identity, and they really just need to play to that and stick to that. Even if they drop a couple games in this series, like, just focus on what you can do, and yeah, Bob's your dad's brother. Current head-to-head -head record for the Chiefs in PGG, 3-0, and oh, of course, for this split. This is the last time that they met each other, and again, already, we're looking at the highlights, and look at that lead. This is the perfect meta for Tally, in my opinion. You know, the mage is in that mid lane. He just gets to flourish with the team, and he duos up with Arthur, making that map impact around the game, and I believe that every single time, they've gotten raised ahead of the enemy ADC, and it's just something so classic of Chiefs, where it's brought them to this stage. Mm -hmm. 
both top lanes, definitely uh, top laners, I should say, a force to be reckoned with. But also the bot lane. We heard Rogue say that there's definitely going to be some action going down in the bot lane early, Max. Yeah, I mean, calling a bot dive every single game for four, four or five minutes against possibly the best bot lane we've seen in O's for a while is a pretty bold statement. And I think it just goes back to their whole aggressive nature, right? Chippy's talked about it, yes, I mean, two days ago in their series against Order, they're going to come out swinging game one, they're going to draft an aggressive comp, they're going to play aggressive, and you know, Amel, you mentioned it, that can be a way to take the Chiefs off their steady footing and shake up the game. Yeah, for sure. It's just like, I, I think especially draft will be really important because, yeah, they, especially like with the Chiefs, right, they've shown that they're very flexible in what they can play, like all their, champ all their players just have like huge shambles, and PGG, like so far, they've kind of shown that their one thing is just drafting easy engage, right, and I'm not sure if Chiefs will actually be able to deal with that. I think the other interesting thing that we saw from the last series was that PGG has no issues with playing on the red side at all. Red side, all three games, and that was their 3-0, when we see a lot of teams just traditionally choosing blue sides. So do you think that's an advantage for them coming into the series? It was definitely an advantage because we did have that interview with Xenox on Friday night where Predith actually said that they haven't showed a lot of their picks, especially for blue side, because they were never drafted blue side. And I'm looking at my notes, Silas, Seri, Orn were banned all three games in that 3-0 to zero series. So we don't know what it's going to be like for PG, and it's going to definitely be a shock for Chiefs. Yeah, and it's interesting, right? Because it's funny that Predator says that when they've showed like 11 games worth of data, whereas Chiefs, they've only had their 3-0 against order. They haven't really shown that much either. And it seems like PG have really turned around what they're looking for in the draft. Um, and I'm just not really sure what Chiefs I can be ready for. And being comfortable on red side is really huge when you look at a series like this. If we are assuming blue to be the default pick for most of these teams, if you want to win as PGG being the lower seed, you have to take a game on red side, right? They've shown that they can do that. They've shown they can come out with some creative picks like the Skana, like the Jace. So they're in their comfort zone and they're ready to play on red side. Talked about the sides. Let's talk about the junglers right now because Kitty, these are two forces to be reckoned with. They are two forces to be reckoned with. The two Korean Titans up in this best of five series, you know, Falcon versus Arthur. In my opinion, Arthur is a very, very stable jungler compared to his split one performance. He's really elevated himself since this second half of the year. However, Falcon, he has been forcing Rift Herald game after game after game and putting that Rift Herald for bot lane, which is Praetith, and getting him ahead. And in a lot of these instances, he is blind picking that Draven, especially up against that order series. So I've noticed something as well. Both junglers really enjoy getting that Rift Herald, putting it bot lane, and then helping out the top lane. So they're always going to be focusing on bot dives. So all I'm hearing is that we need to keep our eyes on Shelly because there are going to be some crazy skirmishes, fights, potentially a lot of prior around there as well as bot lane coming into this series, which personally I'm pretty excited for. Yeah, I mean, similar game plans means that they're going to be clashing a lot, right? They're going to be skirmishing, they're going to be fighting, and that just makes for, you know, a good League of Legends match. Absolutely, and as we take a look, Balkan also had quite a few amazing plays yesterday, or excuse me, the day before, when we also saw a lot of skirmishes around the Dragon, around the Baron. Um, but either way, I know that we are going to be in for a treat as we see all of the fans continuing to load into the stadium. Everyone's getting super excited. I know we have the players who are lining up. Uh, we had Menu Logman come in here and throw Love around him. some vouchers. I'm super excited. And I do believe that coming up, we are going to have an interview on the stage right now and actually right this second with Chiefs coach and Xenox. Yeah, so I'm here with Babib, obviously, the Chiefs coach, and uh, it's been a comfortable regular season and somewhat comfortable playoffs as well. 24 and 0. Uh, now looking to, I guess, make it 27 and 0. You did get to sit back on course on Friday and watch PTG versus Auto. What did you take away from that? Um, to me and our team personally, we kind of expected PTG to win. Um, we didn't expect 3 0, but I think during the entire split, we just thought PG were like the better team, so it was kind of expected to me, at least. Now, something that was a little bit unexpected, going all the way back to split one playoffs, you had a very, very good regular season then, and, and, and somewhat good playoff until it came to grand final time. What were some of the learnings, takeaways from that particular series that maybe you can apply here today? Um, it was more so just lead up towards like playoffs. We made a lot of adaptions, um, just to do with our scheduling and literally just adaptions we just learned, improved, and that's pretty much it. Obviously, there is that pressure being an undefeated team coming in and taking on PGG, who's already done a bit of running that gauntlet, uh, a bit of a challenger, if you will, an underdog. Do you feel that pressure? Do you thrive on it? 
Um, I don't think we feel any pressure, and I just think, to be honest, as a player, this is like the best experience you can have, so I just appreciate everyone for coming out and supporting. Well, Chiefs is one of the more popular orgs in Australia. Anything you want to say to any of the Chiefs fans in the audience? Thanks for supporting, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for supporting. Well, thank you all, of course, for supporting the Chiefs. Uh, Babbitt, thank you so much for having for that chat, and uh, best of luck. Maybe you can have the Chiefs logo on that trophy when it's all said and done. Back to you, Ovali. Thank you so much. A man, a few words, but still much, much confidence as we heard there saying that they've learned to adapt over the course of the split as well as improved but something interesting there keeping the confidence in keeping this undefeated uh, record alive throughout the playoffs hoping for that 3-0 that's so much pressure weighing on each player's shoulder something that i'm thinking of right now is what if chiefs do drop their first game in this best of five series do they send it and then they just start going psycho mode with those drafts and playing a lot more aggressive or do they start having morale issues. That's the biggest problem for them. Max, do you think that a little bit of tilt would happen? I, I don't know what would happen. I mean, we haven't seen it for so long, right? And I guess it is one of those things they've lost in scrims, but have they ever actually lost on stage and particularly in front of an audience, right? We talked about how much momentum PGG had from the crowd yesterday when everyone was you know, chanting for them and, and hoping to get them across the line. So I think it definitely would be a, a shock to Chiefs to drop a game. I think it could definitely go both ways. I mean, I remember back when Cloud9 was on their winning streak over at the LCS, I think it was actually Blabber who said as soon as they lost their game and broke the 18 and 0 possibility, it was, oh, it's a sigh of relief. Yeah. We don't have to focus on keeping the record so high. But of course, there always is that possibility of, oh no, we messed up the record. Is it all downhill from here? Yeah, and I think especially, right, the, like the Chiefs as an organization haven't won a split since 2016. Um, they always seem to fall just short in playoffs, and ultimately, they did the last foot as well against Order. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be rough if they start dropping games for sure. Absolutely. And also in front of a crowd, you have to imagine that because it's been a few years since we've seen a live audience, players are probably a little bit fidgety. They're going to hear the rumbles and the roaring of the crowd. When I was up there for the show match, I was hearing it, and I'm going, wait a second, is this what it's actually like playing in front of people? So, you know, wrestling the nerves just a little bit, but I'm sure that there's still excitement abound. Kitty, I know that you've spoken with a lot of the players. Happy nerves? Nervous nerves? What's the vibe? In previous Chiefs interviews, I actually believe three of them said that they thrive off the audience energy and they love hearing the audience cheer for them. But last, uh, well, not last night exactly, but Friday night, PG's fans were going crazy in the crowd. They were absolutely shouting and look at them, oh my <laughs> goodness, you know? So really this crowd energy can be extremely good for the team and I feel like this is gonna be a banger of a series. Well, I think we have a banger interview coming up right next with Xenox on the stage because he's standing by with PGG coach Chippies. Yes, I'm here with Chippies, of course. It feels like almost fan favorites, if you will, uh, especially off the back of that Friday result against Order. Uh, that did mean, of course, yesterday you were kind of just hanging around. What's the team mindset coming into today? And sort of what did you get up to yesterday? I'd say our match on Friday really showed us who the real stage team is here. So we're feeling really good being back. Now, obviously, Chiefs, they're undefeated for a reason. Tough team. I think 3-0 and against you guys this split so far. Uh, what's it going to take? Where are you going to find the success needed to be the champions today? Yeah, there's no doubt Chiefs are a really good team. Going 24-0 and is pretty crazy. However, they haven't lost the whole split, so all it takes is one game and they'll crumble. Oh, fighting words. Once that streak maybe comes to an end, they might just fall. Uh, and I guess that probably leads into my next question, which was you had some fighting words, some choice words for order. Anything for the Chiefs? Uh, nah, these guys are a bit different. I think they're all pretty experienced on stage, so they should play a bit better. However, we're coming for you, boys. Oh, that's what we like to hear. Now, obviously, you've got a lot of PGG fans in the crowd. What does that mean for you guys and your team to just maybe give you that, that little extra home field advantage? Yeah, look, when we play at home, we're pretty crap, but with all the boys and girls watching us here, we can't lose. They certainly can't. Everyone, please, one last applause for Chippies, for Pentanet. Uh, best of luck in the grand final. Obviously, the Chiefs are going to be a very, very difficult team to beat, but I'm sure you guys will give it your absolute best. Pentanet, Chippies, thank you very much. That means we're not too far away. Ovali, back to you.
That confidence and interview from Chippies from the previous series is what turned me into a PGG fan during their previous game. And hearing him again say, you know what, we're, we're probably not going to come out as strong and as heavy handed with the trash talk like we were against Order since this is a much difficult or much stronger team for us to face here. So I appreciate that respect. Is this pretty normal from Chippies? This is not normal from Chibis, but you know, up against a 24 and 0 team where it's never been done before in the LCO slash OPL, you have to show that respect. Yeah, you absolutely have to. And he said it himself, they're different, right? They're not like any other team. 24 and 0 isn't something you take lightly. But I still love that he is confident at the end of the day and he's still, you know, drawing on the fans' energy to push his team through. Yeah, it's good. Like, they're just not worried, worried at all, right? They're right at home on stage. I showed this on Friday and they're going to show it again today. Absolutely. Well, we could go ahead. Oh, we see the team taking the huddle right there. That's what I like to see. Crowd applauding the huddle as we see our players start to put on their headsets. And what we can actually take a look at right now is the side selection as the Chiefs are going to be selecting. Blue side, it looks like. Not really a surprise there, but again, kind of in the comfort zone for PGG, who, you know, played all three games of their last series on red side and won again. Yeah, it's just like, you can't not pick blue side. And I think especially because PGG and this order, uh, series against order, sorry, um, PGG only showed the red side, right? So you already have an advantage right off the bat. Absolutely. Well, I think, feel like some people could have predicted the blue side pick, but one thing that people may or may not be able to predict is the winner for not only the series, but also this first game, in which they now have the opportunity to in the DARE fan vote. So for everyone who is currently watching at home, go ahead and use your channel points and Twitch to select and vote for who you think is going to take this first game. Will it be PGG? Or will it be the Chiefs? I think Chiefs pulled ahead with that one. You, you feel like the Chiefs were yeah. ahead for that one? Well, hurry up and pull out your phone and put your channel points in. <laughs> Get in on the DARE fan vote. But listen, that's the uh, fans and the audience members' predictions. I want to go ahead and see the predictions of my fellow castmates right now as we pull them up on the screen to reveal who's voted for who. And oh, would you look at that! 3-0 for Xenox, 3-0 for Max, and Amelg with a 3-2. We got to talk about this. Look, I I was an Order fan, and PGG absolutely destroyed them. So if PGG don't win this one, it's like I was supporting the wrong team all along. So it's just like <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm all learning on this one. Then where is your faith bid, Max? You want to talk about your 3-0 prediction? I just think Chiefs are too good. I genuinely think that, you know, PGG, they are really aggressive, but Chiefs have shown time and time again that they are the best team at just stopping all that aggression. They make the game really stable and they're just going to be too good. I went with the 3-1 prediction because, you know, it sounds like the Chiefs are indeed that team. Uh, but, you know, I like to see the spicy drop of at least one game break that win streak. But let's go ahead and take a look. I think we have the predictions of our other casters as well as Kitty. And oh my goodness, 3-2, 3-1, 3-1, and a 3-0 for Mac. Strong predictions, but again, Amel, you are currently the only one who is predicting PGG. And you know what? I like that prediction. Yeah, I mean, I, I, thought, like that prediction. I thought Skimmy would be with me, but it turns out he's just a bit of a, a, bit of a traitor. He's avoiding eye contact with me right now. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, oh he's standing up now. <laughs> oh, okay. He's staring you straight in the eyes. But I mean, I feel like even though most of us have predicted uh, the Chiefs, there is still that spark that's alive for PGG, and I do appreciate it. I mean, technically, PG is still on a six-game winning streak, so I went with 3-1 in my prediction because I'm just so scared of Chiefs dropping that one stage game. And overall, Chiefs is probably going to take it away, but with that one loss. Yeah, I kind of want to change my prediction to a 3-2 for the Chiefs now because what I want to see is the spicy... Uh, I, I want to see the Chiefs take a loss. And then I want to see if they are able to quickly turn around from that, or are they tilting, or you know what happens? Is there you know the the surprise pause and everyone's just holding on to their seats and wondering, oh gosh, what's going to happen next? And all the fans are freaking out. I would like to see that. The you question well. is now is that it, do you want Chiefs to have a perfect split where it's never been done before, yep. or do you want Chiefs to fail their perfect split and lose against PGG? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're going three two Chiefs, you might as well just. Swap to the PGG side. There's still time. And actually, There's plenty of space. 
plenty of space, plenty of time to continue to flip flop. And it sounds like we actually have a player interview standing by with Ki Kitty. I believe it was Kitty. Hey guys, Kitty here, joined by uh, mid laner for the Chiefs. Tally, of course, I've got my head down if you're wondering why I don't look as much like a normal kitty. Uh, of course, just ready to get into this series. I want to ask you, it's been three years since we've had a, a live event, since you've been on the stage, and I saw you in the audience yesterday. Yeah. What was that like? It was definitely an experience, because like, you, you, there's so much energy all the time, and I was just actually surprised. There was like one guy sitting behind me, who was just like spraying like, PGG, over and over, and I was just like, like, wow, like, we actually have fans, like, that's kind of cool. And you did get to see Penson at 3-0 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, with that in mind, there was a lot of loud Kiwis in the audience. You think <laughs> that was something that, that plays in your mind? You know they're going to be there, they're going to be loud on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Because I actually felt like the crowd was extremely PGG biased, so I want to know like what it's like when we're playing. Would you say it's a goal to perhaps make it more of a library if they're all PGG oh, fans? like absolutely. I want to know your impression of what you saw of Pentanet in that lower bracket final. I was kind of annoyed watching that series because it, it felt like both teams weren't really, it wasn't like a good league that was happening. It was just lots of mistakes from each other's, like each team was just punishing. I didn't really feel like anyone was doing any specific like, I'm going to push mid and go top and get this turret and then get this objective. It was just like, oh, he's a player. I'm going to kill him. You know, it was like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. So I think that like, if we play against that kind of thing on Sunday, I think it will just be like such a free time for us. And do you think this will be a 3-0 perfect run the entire way to get Chiefs to Worlds in we, the finals? We want to go to Worlds with like that 27-0 just so other regions look at us and think like, holy <laughs> like, how do they do that? Yeah. Like, that's unheard of. I look forward to seeing that. Thank you so much for your time and best of luck in the series. Thank you. Wanting to go to Worlds with a 27-0 and zero record. I think we just heard from the best player in the world yeah. right there, right, Kitty? Although I would say that you looked a little different in that interview. Best player in the world with the best hair in the world, <laughs> going in with the blonde hair for tonight's finals. However, he did mention that we did have PG playing off orders mistake on that Friday night, where if we change it to Chiefs, they barely make any mistake. And if they do, they recover from it very, very well. So I'm just thinking what type of angle can PGG really skim through in there to get this win up against Chiefs? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's can Chiefs stonewall PGG's aggression? Because we know PGG are gonna come out. We saw it in game one versus auto, right? Multiple engage tools, lots of CC, make it as easy as possible to start fights and to cl clean them up. So if Chiefs are able to actually, you know, press pause on that, slow down the game, it's just going to be an absolute slaughter from them. But PGG, they've really got to look to push through, get stuff rolling early, and make things happen. Yeah, the thing is about League is that it's often like a snowball of mistakes that actually leads to you losing a game. And I think Chiefs are really good at stopping that snowball early, right? Just, you know, one random death doesn't mean much in isolation, as long as you can stem the bleeding. And PGG just looking to open that wound, I guess. Let me pose this question really fast then. Has there, well, clearly there hasn't been a situation where they, uh, you know, lost a lead and then lost the game, but do you think that there's a world where PGG pulls a big enough lead to a point where Chiefs can't come back from it in this series? Because they're not used to playing from behind. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely think there is a, is a world where that can happen. I mean, we saw a couple of close games in the regular season, although they didn't lose. There certainly were times where, you know, the game was going against them and they just managed to find that one lucky pick. So it's really about PGG getting far enough ahead and then making sure they're not making a key mistakes. Because Chiefs have shown time and time again, they will punish those. All right, well, then it all comes down to this. The game is about to start. So in order to take us into the action, we're going to toss it on over to Rusty and Skimmy. Thank you very much to our wonderful analyst couch as we do, in fact, kick off what has been a phenomenal year, three months in the making to make it here back to a land final for years at the same time as well. This might be the magical number for a potential for Rio too. But there could be a lot of stories as well for both of these teams. Pensanet have, of course, won the LCO before. The Chiefs yep. haven't had a title since 2016 particularly Rays as well. And every single time the Chiefs have made a final from 2016 until now, they have lost. And the stage has been set in split number one where Order took them down 3-2, and it could potentially happen here again today. But this feels like a different breed of the Chiefs. This is a type of Chiefs that is legitimately unstoppable. Unstoppable, and the stats have uh, most certainly reflected that the records have been up there uh, some of the highest in the entire world, right? Quickest games, most dominant performance, gold leads by 15. I mean, you just rattled them all off. We even had a look at them uh, going in into their matchup uh, to make it here today, right? As well, a perfect 3-0 stomp for them uh, across the board. All the dragons, all the heralds, all the turrets. I mean, you're always looking for a weakness to try and play devil's advocate and say, mm -hmm. well, how can Pentanet beat them? And it's always hard to find an answer. 
Yeah, I mean, I think all of us, even with predictions, were huffing a bit of hopium, trying to give an extra map over to, to Pensioner, just based off the way that the split went, right? But yep. if we if we look at just the playoffs in a vacuum, then it's very easy to say that that was a dangerous Pensionet.gg that can actually take those maps, actually take those wins. For me, it does come down a lot towards the bottom lane specifically. Mm -hmm. I think that's the place we have to have most of our eyes set on, particularly on red side, because Praetor has shown the recipes, right, with the Draven, with the Aphilios on that red side. And he was a nightmare to deal with on Friday. He certainly was. Uh, he certainly came into this playoffs uh, hot and ready to go and showcasing that uh, a few quiet performances during the regular season doesn't really reflect what it means to be on a stage when the crowd was so excited to see them perform uh, a hot performance as a whole. And I mean, you really look at the, the difference leading into this one, right? Only three games played by the Chiefs. They've had a lot of time to sit back, reflect over their preparation, mm -hmm. discuss and divide and to see, you know, have we really got the right measure as to what our opponents can do? Because they've played 11 games. I think they know very well what Pentanet's going to do, right? We know that they're an aggressive team. We know they're going to dive bot lane. If you heard that interview just before as well, somewhere between four and five minutes, there's going to be a dive bottom lane. Sure. That's what Rogue has said. And I mean, he'd be lying if that didn't happen in the regular season every week anyway. So we all yeah. know what's coming. The question is how Chiefs deal with that because they have always just won the 2v2. They've always just been able to body it out. Yeah. I think the biggest difference though is that Order weren't playing the wave. They were just playing the enemy champions where I think that both Chiefs and Pentanet are significantly better at playing the wave and the champions. And so to actually dive that bottom lane like Rogue's predicted mm -hmm. is easier said than done. And the bot lane, as we've seen countless times, obviously very akin to playing literally any champion that is uh, necessary of them. I think both Rays as well as Predator have showcased on many times. We actually like playing early game aggression. We want those champions mm -hmm. uh, that'll give us, you know, that one, that two item spike so we can look to go straight towards Heralds, fight for Drakes, give us those easy and early win conditions to guarantee success. And I mean, I guess we're always going to look back at that last uh, split final. The, the fact it went to five games, multiple 40 minute bangers that just had it all, all the tension. Base defenses that are surviving by a hair. Base thread. races, backdoor I mean, attempts. Surely, surely that's what we're going to get here today as well. I mean, we can only hope if we get Fingers a best crossed. of five that good, but that doesn't matter right now, Skimmy. We're in champion select. Game number one, ready to go. It's time. It's what you've all been waiting for. It's the reason you're here for Sunday, Championship Sunday. The brand new LCO trophy up there on the stage, all for you to see. And the question becomes, what do we look to ban away? And I'm okay. not surprised whatsoever by Penta. This is a tried and true strategy by them. Once upon a time, they banned away six champions from Rays. Yeah, they just said, cop that Rays. We're going to get rid of three of his ADCs. The question remains where they will go for their first two picks. We have seen the Aphelios, but this time around, they're going to opt into the Sivir. This is a champion that is obviously very powerful but doesn't always have the best laning phase, can be handled. However, a lot of those champions that get through the lane fine have been banned away. So where do the Chiefs choose to go is what we are yet to see. Is it some kind of misfortune team fighting champion from Rays, or does he go back to the Jinx or a Philios type of comp with a Lulu? That's a good question. I do wonder if they feel threatened that they need to lock that one in early just to match that the Civic and seal the rest of their champions. When that has been denied, he has gone to the Kaiser as another option, right? Another champion that we don't see too much of these days, but regardless, they're gonna go for the Ari. Another comfort champ there for Tally. Tide is his most played this entire summer split. Four games so far. So there are a whole host of different builds. You can go for that one yep. unsealed spell, but perhaps like Electrocute, maybe you go for the Everfrost, more, maybe more damage. We saw Leandri Ooh. yesterday too. Okay, so we're gonna go straight for the Aatrox. Perhaps they're expecting that Sejuani to just have to be top lane. If you know Pentanet.gg, you know that they really want to go for that Renekton Nidalee type of tech, but this game around doesn't seem like we're going to be seeing that at all. It's been left up, Skimmy. Hasn't been locked in. And how rare is that to see that one left up? It got left up once. It went into Sejuani, and the Sejuani certainly made light work of it. Yone is going to come out. We've yet to see the true flex into the top lane with this champion. Always a possibility, though. We know that Winter is... Very akin to playing literally anything. Yeah, and Jungle Sejuani partners really nicely with Yone when it comes to ganks and skirmishes, right? Any melee champion works brilliantly with the Sejuani. Uh, they also know that they're into the Wukong, so perhaps they're able to choose that as a flex or just as a matchup. Going into our four or five bands here, the Swain that was hovered is going to be banned. Ari wants to have as safe a time as possible in the lane and more ADCs to be taken away. Raz isn't allowed to have fun. No. And I don't think we're at all surprised by this outcome, right? The fact that they want to make sure his <laughs> life is as difficult as possible. Savage. He has been in a situation before. Five removed. Ray's is the focus. He's the superstar. Here's the thing, right? Like, if they just lock in Jinx Lulu, I think they're still good. Because sure. then they have team fighting. They have scaling. Right now, they've got a lot of early game pick and aggression through their top side, right? And they need something bot lane 
that scales them into the rest of the game if it does go that late. You know your matchup of the Sivir. You don't know what the support will be. And Pentanet are notoriously capable of fifth picking that support champion. But this time around, it's the tried and true if you saw Friday's games. Amumu was so good for Rogue, it, it had to be banned. It did a lot of work, didn't it? Those first two games really on point, making sure that Praetor was allowed to play as aggressive as he did to become the MVP of that particular series. No surprises, it's denied. Aphelios, despite five removed, it is still there for the taking. You've certainly set the silver platter with engage, with poke, with potential for an Aphelios to take over this game. They're going to go with a Braum with it, so a lot more aggression in the lane. Can be incredibly passive if you want to, but I think the reason Braum is so good is Amumu has to go forwards and often goes Glacial Augment, so isn't going to be very tanky if the Bandage Toss connects, and then you get stunned, and then you are just dead, and that is a very viable way to get through laning phase, and skirmishes in the game is... Oh! There we go, Renekton is going to be seen, he's going to be locked in. A couple of... Uh, Booze, perhaps, for the Renekton in general in the audience. What's the first time we've seen them actually lock it in without the Nidley? Balkan's always gone for that one. That has guaranteed that we saw last time Winter a play. Didn't have the most fun. Had to relegate himself to a bit of more uh, supportive, a uh, facilitator version of the champion. But, I mean, it's to a T what Pentanet's been known for, right? Sheer aggression. We're dashing in with bandage tosses, with fate unsealed, with, you know, on the hunt, for instance, from a Sivir to get you in. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, as it stands, every single lane for PGG can be ganked. It is a very easy time to be Balkan on this Sejuani and look for gank options. Uh, I can assure you all that that will be a Renekton top lane. No one freak out with the trade yet to happen uh, as it gets confirmed now. Where I think the Chiefs, I would consider them more flexible in terms of how they want to play, right? The Ari can ult forwards, can ult backwards to safety. Ari, one of the hardest to kill champions. Braum very good at defending, uh, especially in that 2v2, stopping the Sivir boomerangs, for example. Well, those are your comps all locked on in. It's been a long time since we saw Yuri play the owner. He played it a whole host of uh, times back in split one, and not a single time here in split two. A massive champion pool. Very hard to take him out of the equation, but both comps confirmed. Both comps to a T, doing exactly what has made them so, so strong across all 21 games. I tell you what, Rusty, you look at this one, you really know that we're going to get some action. It's all going to be about who can get that first killer blow, who can look to try and snowball where those item advantages come from, and well, honestly, are we gonna just be level eight, watch the timer, Herald's on. I mean, absolutely, we're gonna have fights at Drake's, we're gonna have fights at Herald's. Both teams want to have a massive biff just with how their compositions are designed, but then the players want that anyway, and I'd have it no other way when it comes to game one of our final best of five, action everywhere. Well, let's do it, Drew Mac Melbourne. Let's load into the rift for the very final time for a best of five. It's a chance to really see what these teams are made of. The Chiefs, it's been such a long time since they've last been on this stage. For Pentanet, they are warmed up and ready to go. I cannot wait to see where the action comes from. Where does it start and where does it go? Oh, there's a pause. It wouldn't be Oceana without a pause. So remember to pay your taxes, Os. We have to get the pause out of the way. It's better that it's in game one, not in the middle of the game. Get the dollar jar out. There's another <laughs> dollar going in. Count the pauses. There's the bingo. Half of course, but we are still able to see, of course, all of the champions that have been locked in in a couple of very early level one moves. So let's set the, set the stage just a little bit more, one okay. more time for everybody as well. The Chiefs are looking for a perfect split. They are looking to go to Worlds without a single loss, but they haven't won a stage finals since 2016. They have not been able to find a win on stage. They were pushed to five games by order in split number one, and they did end up losing. And the question is, as we are back onto the rift, how do they start in game number one? Did they manage to keep their cool? Now all the pressure is on them. Now all the eyes are on them. And now Pensanet have momentum from Friday and a lot of fans in the arena behind them. And there will be a lot of belief from the side of the Pensanet players, right? The staff, the coach, the ability to say that we have that volatility. They have to respect what we can bring to the table. There's no denying that the Chiefs are still the heavy favorites in this one. Why wouldn't they be? But if Pentanet can find those moments they've done so successfully, all split long, those 50-50, flip that coin, and suddenly a little bit of magic may just happen on the rift. The big points in the game so far is that it was, first of all, seen that Arthur was doing the blue buff, went through with a bit of inspection, and just puts his face in the blue buff area, sees it, and it was a leash on the bottom side from Rogue and Praetith, which is a clear sign they're not looking to get that level two priority. Not looking to play too crazy for that one. Sivir also starts W now, and it's just a menace. Chips away at your health slowly but surely. Rogue is the one that has to be super careful. 
He doesn't want to die. Cannot bandage toss at the wrong time or he is done for. Certainly is. If you do jump on in, the Winter Spy is going to connect to you. It's the support version of that Sejuani, the passive underneath Predator right now. Take that up to four. And you're locked in place for a fair bit of time. Khan having a look in mid lane. He's going to go for it. Here he is. He's poking his head in for the meantime, activating the ability for Yuri to find stun success as well. But Tally can just roam all the way down bot side river. Not concerned. Good little charm. Interrupting that dash across. The damage still does connect. It's going to drag on back and still. Tally's the one on the worst end. Yeah, still a nice little trade there from Yuri. Wave pushing towards Tally's turret, however. So still relatively safe is the Ari. Teleport in hand as well and didn't even need to use a summoner spell. Bandage Toss connects. That was a Hail Mary. Threads the needle. Just going to stabilize this bot lane for the meantime. Juggle the health bars around and make sure that neither side gets too big for their boots. Arthur of here. Playing towards the bot side now, picks up that Scuttle Crab. Vulcan, meanwhile, going to use the Scry Absorb and reveal that the top half is completely barren at the moment, so he can do the same. For the first clear, however, both junglers have been able to track one another. They know exactly where they are or where they were going to be, so it is very hard to make those plays to get those ganks to be successful. So Ward comes in just after the Sweeper dissipates. Aladoric, Aladoric not going to be able to find that Ward. Means that they're a little bit more safe. However, Arthur can lane gank. Winter given a chance, having uh, crashed that wave in to make magic at the top side. Bot side, though, Guardian is going to be burnt. Arthur is waiting in the wings. No vision in these uh, bushes, so internet won't have an idea. He may just be able to sneak around the bottom of that Ooh, alpha. The There's the flash. He's missed the Winter's bite. The passive is there. We're on the damage. Oh, that's Prey of Dead. That is First Blood and that is Chiefs. Hot and ready on stage. And it is so easy for a Brawman and a Philios, especially with the purple weapons, to be able to find purchase on those kills very early and very successfully. Spell Shield not going to provide anything. No cleanse from Praetus. Is reliant on his Spell Shield and he gets punished big time in this game. It certainly does. You connect with that spell, you get a little bit of elf back, and it's just not enough in a situation where you are overwhelmed by pressure of three chief members. Textbook stuff from Arthur once again. He just knows right place, right time. It always pays off. Yeah, just has such great presence of mind and knows where he needs to be on the map. Also plays with Elidoric exceptionally in that respect. Predith, as he gets back towards his bot lane, will find that most of the minions are already dead. As Chiefs left that in a slow push for them. That's very satisfying to watch, isn't it? it certainly is. One of my favorite champions, Aphelios. Ooh. The art of juggling those weapons. As Pentanet will crash that wave, will have Vulcan here. So say, you know what? Five minutes on the dot. Let's go for first Drake. And Chiefs don't seem like they want to contest this one just too much. They're going to be a little bit late if they do go for it now. 2k health on it. Sweeper comes through, ward goes down, and they know that it's, there. it's oh. actually going to reset. I don't know if that's enough time for Arthur coming in. Bandage toss onto Raze. Raze in trouble. Raze is dead. Yuri's found it. Back towards the Drake we go. And that's a two for one special. Make it a three for one. Penton have got everything they wanted and more. They get the Drake. They get two kills into the carries as well of the Pentanet roster. And that Drake was never something that the Chiefs were going to be able to contest waiting for level six, but they have a crack. And we said expect aggression. I think the Chiefs presented that. Sometimes with the good, sometimes with the bad. A false sense of hope, though. You have to say the fact that the Drake resets, Arthur still coming on through, thinking maybe, just maybe, there's an angle on which we can contest this. Remember, Aladoric level three at the point of this engage, and it's actually just Rogue that finds the angle at the same time as Yuri connecting with the Q3 Tornado. Everybody on Pensnet is on the exact same page, and that page is go in, kill them. Do not even let them get close to the Drake. And that's what I love so much Ooh, about teleports. the org of Pensnet. There's just so much composition and confidence to back up every single Top maneuver. Just used his w. He's in a bit again. of trouble. Zapoon is in trouble. In jumps Balkan, the stun passive. It's looking to try and start up. One, two, three. There's the flash away. Has, Has to, to show flash. respect. Has to flash. Uses the ultimate as well. Rogue. Oh! That's the combo. Tally, spirit oh, him again. Oh! Ben the Amumu. Bandage toss one and number two. It's just too much. Rogue's just squeaky clean with this pick. It got banned on Friday. That's how good he is with this champion. Nimumu comes up clutch once again. Rogue gets unleashed on the map. 
Big wave to Crasher. He'll be here to protect this one, but what a fantastic start to this first game for Pentanet. Without a doubt, so many champions left up and available. The fact that Imumu goes on through and already a huge driving force putting them in the lead now. And quite honestly, this is a rare opportunity because we just do not really see Chiefs behind. I think if you look at the average stats across, what, 24 games, they're always up two to 3,000 by that 15 minute mark. So if Pentanet can keep their foot on the gas, we're in with a series. Yeah, Pentanet average being ahead at 15 minutes against almost every single team. Their league average is exceptional, but Chiefs is always the exception to the rule. And we also know that while Chiefs love to play aggressive, they love skirmishes, their composition will be very good at picks, right? With the Ari using the ult and the charms, with Wukong going in as well. But they don't have to rely on that just yet. They can still let the Aphelios scale. They can still look for team fights. But the question is, if this continues, so far so good as the gold is concerned, but Herald's going to be a sizable gold advantage. Certainly is. A lot of gold that they can net them with those current plates being achieved, as well as the local gold found upon acquisition. There it is. Pentanet just a little bit too clean in these early uh, stages. First Arthur. Drake, first Herald. Arthur are going to be spotted here by a control ward, so the chance to dive here is going to be spotted at the very least by Pentanet. They will choose to stay, not feeling too threatened. All summon is going to be there for the bottom lane. Chiefs having no flash on both of their members down here, so it is hard to execute. And they're just going to disengage. Second camp clears to be had as well here, Skimmy, so... Realistically, not going to be looking for anything just yet. Two minutes till a Drake, a lot of downtime to be had, a lot of farm to be made. You can see Yuri picking up these Assassin-style champions again. His Akali on Friday was exceptional, and his Yone definitely meets that bar. It's a standout performance to me. I'll always remember the game he played it in, uh, split one up against uh, Peace, I believe it was. The huge ult down bot side, trying to turn the game around on its head. Winter is stacking up the Conqueror right now, getting a little bit aggressive, but Tapoon's going to answer back in Final Chain. going to be dragged straight back into that one. Answering back with damage of his own. Equalizing the trade nicely. No one here to support the top laners, however, as all things should be. They will be stuck on an island. Just trying to farm it and hit each other for entertainment purposes. Nice, good charm again, but Yuri still managed to buffer the damage before he then jumps on back with the Elastico. Worth noting though, Rogue having found so much success with these assists, the stopwatch is already active and ready to go. Topoon topside, we're on. Dominus and the World Ender, both ultimates being used. And a straight disengage away. Yeah, Winter and no ability to chase from that point. The ultimate being used by Topoon, giving movement speed, gets himself out to safety. Both top laners having rushed their boots means they are lacking in the damage department anyway. They are just being much more survivable. Tally as well, you would have seen him use the Ignite in mid. That was the unsealed spellbook that he was just cycling through. Teleports back to mid anyway. As that teleport comes back up and available. Herald summon. Well, Tapoon has no summoners. He has no pressure. He's just bent that ultimate. So that's a 3v drive by. Summon the Herald. Instant gold injection goes towards Winthrop. A champion like Renekton needs that early source of strength. If they can get a kill, if they can get a gold lead, more and more of those 1v1s will be teased at. Nice little gold injection. However, if you consider how close it is to the Drake spawning, this gives time for the Chiefs to be able to establish a small amount, at least a small array of vision control. You're only going to be hyper aggressive in mid lane. You're in Tally constantly trading, but Arthur's here first. It's now Pentanet's turn to make a play. Both top laners are here, Skimmy. There is a real world where we've got a 5v5, and it starts off right now. It certainly does. We're on. That is the Glacial Prison locking in place Arthur, but that's just a clone. That's not who you're after. Instantly, Pentanet have to disengage away. Chiefs corral themselves through this river, straight on towards the Dragon. Vision in a three-point square. Pentanet no longer interested. They had the ability to walk in if they really wanted to, but they would have been face-checking a pretty high damage combo, and it's risky. You don't want to walk into a Wukong, and they were funneled into a choke point, so the Drake does go the way of the Chiefs. That equalizes objectives on these Drakes at one-to-one. -one. Yuri will sneak himself a turret plate, but consider that 11 minutes in, if even if you felt like Pensanet are outright in control of this game overall, it's only 400 gold. It is yeah. nothing between them. It really isn't. Falcon's ult isn't there for the moment, so hold your breath. Three members of Pensanet, though, certainly are. Pressure permitted by Winthrop, exacerbated by a summoning of the Herald, and just a a great awareness to rotate the map. Well, Chief should go for Drake. We go for first turret instead. Yeah, making sure it was a trade. Really nicely done by PGG. 
Bot lane, of course, staying isolated. Topoon was just staying top to soak up that experience. He knew there was no way that he was going to get to the structure. And Arthur actually does walk up to try and protect him once the turret drops, making sure that Pentanet don't do anything illegal. They don't go too far after the turret. But they had their eyes on the prize correctly. They're able to secure it as planned. Quick itemization check in as it's another charm combo. Yuri looking for damage. He's finding it ever so consistently as well. Yeah, he's straight up with his first Q, just crit tally. And he's not going for the Blade of the Rune King or that Sunfire build that we saw run rampant for so many weeks, right? Straight back to crit variation of a Yone. It's going to be squishy, but it's going to pack a big punch. Yeah, Shield Boat does help a little bit, of course, with, with what is being a very fragile champion. Uh, and very much is about those outplays when you go the full crit build. Chief's going to try and dissuade Rogue away from his control ward. Eyes go towards the Herald in one minute time. And it does feel like so far Yuri has had run of the mill in mid lane. And that has been a sizable difference between these teams. And how often have we said it across the entirety of the split, right? Always looking at Yuri. What can he do if everybody else has faltered and he's always risen to the plate? Only member in the game right now with that bounty. And it's had firm control of this mid lane. Big rotation bot side right now. Look at to try and catch up Raidif. Let's see if he's greedy to stay away for this next minion wave. Purple weapons, this can absolutely work. Alidoric flash Q to start it off. Gale falls in, Nesta grabs him a flash away on the hunt. Nesta stun, Nesta damage, Nesta kill. That's off for answering back. That's his second of the day. And now that Drake is looking a lot more attractive. Ghost still available for Praetor, unable to use it in that skirmish. Just gets immediately taken down. So much crowd control that they're able to share. Okan standing in the area. Playing with his food. Mashing the S key, oddly enough. Belkan seems to be a big fan of that new tech he's discovered. All the while, we've had Winter split pushing like an absolute demon, foregoing his own mythic item straight towards that Black Cleaver. Wants to empower the rest of his team. That's going to really help out the likes of Freda for Yuri. Harold started. Pentanet inside line to get here. Praetor's already rotating from base as he respawns. Chiefs, they'll get the red buff onto Arthur, so their chances of contesting this one are zero. They show no signs of coming here. Another free objective goes the way of Pentanet. Another opportunity to summon it. Another opportunity to break some structures and two outer turrets, or even the mid lane outer gone, is crucial for them to continue to find picks. Sejuani, so many more flank angles. Certainly can be the driving force to get the party started. That outer turret in the mid lane is uh, holding on by a hair's breath as it stands. Plates down now, past the 14 minute mark. But Chiefs, it's all about keeping eyes in the sky, keeping tabs as to where Pentanet are. Pentanet are going to take full force off that at one. No Gale Force for Raze would have to cleanse if Belkan found him. He's going to opt out of the, the risky way. He's going to take the safe path. Tally will trade turrets on the bottom side of the map, but that mid outer is still crucial and very easy to get when all you have to do is summon the Herald. Zero time spent there, other than to confirm that it charges. 45 seconds, Gimme. We've seen action at every single Drake, or at least the intent is there. Big level six ultimate composition from Pentanet as well. And Praetith, regardless of if he's behind, has a Kraken Slayer at this moment, and it coincides perfectly for a fight. Someone is up and available, but no flash available there for Praetor, however. Stop watching check now for Raze 2. Anticipating a major fight with a Drake apiece so far. Ocean Soul up for grabs a juicy target here in a game one of a best of five. Rogue hunting. Renekton top lane, so the ability to engage is still there. He'll be able to teleport in. Topoon disregards the fact that his teleport is up, wants to be here first and foremost. Wants to make sure that his team is an immediate threat. But they're apprehensive. They're prioritizing the mid lane outer turret. Winter is still split pushing topside. They have to answer back. He's got TP. In he comes now. He's putting great work topside. The fight Rogue. breaks out. Rogue jumps in with the bandage. So I was looking for the ult. Rogue. Flashes on in. Hits out free. Goes golden for the meantime. Drake's still oh. there. In they jump. Cyclone knocks them all up. There's the kill. Raze answers back. Still alive. Flashing away. Cleansing. Damaging. Doing what he can. Sally holding on for dear life. Double kill here for Raze. He's still alive, Rusty. He is just untouchable. Are we looking at a perfect ace? We are! Raze just goes crazy. Everybody on the Chiefs steps up to the plate massively. Oh no. Aladoric 
insult to injury. He will give a bit of charity over to Penson and says, you deserve this one, but the turret is still ours. 2k gold lead out of that one skirmish in the Chiefs. What a way to kick off the third Drake. And it's the Rogue engaged that starts off decently well. Flashes, finds three. And the Yone follow through was exceptional, but Raze, Gale Forces, look at all of the Chakrams around this Aphilios. This is the perfect time for him to be fighting. And Yuri unfortunately misses that tornado. And Raze is able to stand perfectly still and just melee range with the Chakrams and just annihilates them. And the biggest takeaway for me there, Rusty, is the fact that yes, he did have to burn double summoners. He still got the stopwatch. He is that confident in his ability to stand and deliver with the truck rooms as you highlight that no, I'm not in danger. Job's there to take. Perfect ace. I think it goes without saying that if you're going to look for those engages in future, you're looking for rays every single time. And the window is open, right? He has no, no summoner spells as you highlight. Arthur. Arthur getting himself. excited. Excited for good reason too, because Chiefs won the way. Pensnet putting so much priority towards split pushing. I feel like Winter has spent half this game absent minorly pushing. It's almost like a whole break of variation. Yeah, yet he has the black cleaver, so he's definitely not playing for the split push build by any means. Not a Blade of the Ruin King himself either. Uh, definitely feels like he wants more of the ability haste and team fighting ability, you know, armor shred for the rest of his squad. Get the Yone free hitting with those crits. Get Siva ricocheting as well, getting all of those bounces across. Be really nice when he gets involved in those team fights, but for the moment, he's going to continue to split push. He's going to be relentless and try and find avenues where Chiefs have to answer him. Suddenly an angle exists, right? They just pick at the wound. Right, man, your screen just before, and Yuri is incredibly strong now at this point. Second item complete with the Mortal Reminder. Heal Cut is there to utilize. Let's check in then with the total gold. As a result, Yuri is at the top of the table. Tapoon has dashed across the wall, dashing back across. World Ender starts to come into effect here. Has his World Ended? Has he delayed enough? Gortrika goes out. He's sustaining for the meantime. He's still alive! The Chiefs of Cavalry, they are here. They turn it around, PGG. You just did not have a chance, and Tapoon, untouchable. Yeah, you think you've caught Tapoon. He survives for so long. Gore Drinker, ultimate, all of the he healing. The Chiefs just come through. The Cavalry was, in fact, there. Reinforcements arrive. Look at the Chiefs right now. Eight seconds until the Baron spawns. And they've already pinged. I'm on my way. They've knocked on the front door of this one. Perfect timing. A pick with the jungler dead. Make it a 3v5. Make it a TP in to commit to this. Uh, Baron that is just dropping down ever so quickly. Rogue, he doesn't have flash, but he does have ult and ignite. Will they hold this in a 50-50 flip? Yuri, he's already used the slingshot. The infernal chains are burnt. They jump across the wall. Arthur secures the Baron. Now they want to disengage away. Pentanet's still not strong enough. Not enough numbers in the area. Chief's too clean with it. Yeah, no ability to get in, no ability to trade. Let's watch this skirmish that leads to the Baron one more time. Topoon just gets CC locked. They really do play the forefront of this skirmish perfectly, but Topoon able to hit the QE combo right, has the Gore Drinker, all of his abilities connect. And then Ray's comes through with the Infernum Cannon. Aladoric hits the ultimate as well on his Braum. And all of the Pentanet came tumbling down. And now it appears as if it's business as usual. Chiefs back in the driving seat. They were down a couple of thousand gold, a rare moment for them. But with that Baron buff online now, firmly in the driving seat, 5K to their name. Map control back in the driving seat for them to push and provide and give this gold lead something to talk about. Still for PGG, they've got the Siva, right? They've got the ability to farm really nicely. Yuri with the teleport on his Yone has got split push angles and they can team fight if they find the opportunity. But right now, that 4K gold deficit starts to grow. Chances in this game start to dwindle. Huge damage comes out from Topu and they're going. They are certainly going in with the Glacial Prison, locking a place Topu. Winter on the widest flank. Dominus charged up, he's got the Fury. Knock up two right now. They're gonna try and assassinate Ray. Ray is your target. He's burnt cleansed. He's still got stopwatch. Flash in check, doesn't need it. Goodbye, Winter. Turn it around. Moonlight Vigil, ready to rock and roll, Whoa. red and white, don't fight! Chief's too clean! Tally. Tally jumps in, he wants more, he goes gold, and I'm a statue, I come on out. And Yuri is just taunting, he knows he's dead! 
And now they're just unstoppable. And it may not be just Yuri, it's three members. This could be a Nexus as well. Rogue's here, Praedith is here, but they've got the Baron buff. The Civic can't clear everything for free. Aladoric stops it, they want the end. They certainly do want that end. Rogue's gonna go in for that last dance. One last chance to try and defend this base. It's just not gonna be enough. Five hungry Baron-inspired members are gonna push on through, but they're low. Okay. They are incredibly low. One Nexus turret is all they can get. Just a little bit too much damage left alive in Praedith. Just a little bit too little health remaining. Praedith not gonna be able to stop those bases. The Baron Empowerment makes sure that that is the case. We'll watch this skirmish one more time because my eyes go to Winter to see what he can do with Raze, but Red Weapon there, Locket used by Aladoric, not a lot of damage is gonna come through, and the reality is, now you're stuck. This Black Cleaver build is not meant to assassinate. You want your team to be connecting, and Tally goes insane here, flash forwards, gets that ult reset, make sure that he has the stopwatch, and Yuri, I mean, he accepts his fate, he holds the L. And the game presses on just that little bit longer. Denied that 22 minute soul crushing on stage defeat to kickstart that championship best of five. The Chiefs work their way towards another one of those Ocean Drakes, still tied up at two to two. This is not a game that's going to a soul point. Certainly doesn't feel that way, not with the way the Chiefs have played the last passage, 10 minute passage. Just further and further ahead, every single time. Pensanet, you should know that they go down swinging by now. And Yuri is trying his best to keep up with the pack, but it is a sea of blue in the total gold value. It is a sea of blue when it comes to item completions as well. Ray's one full item ahead of his counterpart in the Sivir. Really does feel to me as if it's a Yuri montage and a dream at this stage of the game. He is gonna have to play his absolute heart out here to try and find the angle to line up, to sync up, to find the moment to strike with the rest of his team to take down these individuals who are just so, so strong. Ray's has never used that stopwatch. That's an instant Guardian Angels now. Yuri Olds gets caught. Has been caught. There's the charm, there's the cyclone, there's the knockup. And it's just a little bit too easy right now. Systematic here from the Chiefs. Pentanet caught, lagging behind, waiting in mid. Telly does have one stack left of that ultimate. No Everfrost to be used, however, topping and a dash over the wall. They've asserted themselves in top lane. There is no shot. And you're going to be able to contest them. The sad B sums it up nicely. Really in shambles now is PGG. The Chiefs looking to stamp their authority, quell the momentum, and kick game one off with a bang. Well, here comes in the Super Minions. Wave number two, not too far away. We're on to that second Nexus turret. It is do or die right now. If you're a Pentanet fan, if you're a Pentanet player, in they jump. Kill target, they want raise. He's still alive. After's doing what he can, he's dominating. He's an absolute weapon in this game. Sapoon is just crashing and burning. They're on towards the Nexus, 25 minutes, and Chiefs take game number one. And you saw an almost perfect best of five from Pentanet on Friday. Shoes on the other foot to kick this series off. Massive performance from Raze and Aladoric in bot lane, but it's the fact that Arthur gets in for those ganks. It's the fact that when push comes to shove, even at a slight deficit, Chiefs know the fights that they can take, and they pick at the wound easily. And there is no team that can keep up with the Chiefs, except for the first couple of minutes that you saw from Pentanet, and we need to see that repeated through the rest of the game. I mean, they had an idea. They really had a game of attack, right? The fact that they wanted to be as aggressive as possible, target some of those lanes, allow Rogue to flourish as he's done countless times before, but that magic started to simmer down, started to be lost around the 15, 20 minute mark, and it's just business as usual, almost autopilot for a team that, yes, veterans in their own right, years of experience, multiple championship titles, a chance to obviously play overseas as well. They said, ah, you think you've got the crowd favorites? Watch this. Yeah, Chiefs proved that they're just a different caliber of team in game number one. And now it's Pentanet's turn to go back to the drawing board and say, well, what we tried didn't work, but yep. they also haven't played blue side yet. It's true. And this is their first chance to show all of the strategies that we have not seen. Want well, to see what our strategies look like, but for the meantime, it's back to our analyst couch for game number one. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, that was a 25-minute game one victory for the Chiefs, and I know that you know we have been building them up as the undefeated, the Titans. I didn't think it was going to go that fast for the first game in the final series. Welcome to experiencing a Chief game because this is exactly what we expect out of the boys. They failed the first three minutes with those dives. However, th that dragon fight at the pit where they were able to get five for zero trade, that was absolutely insane. And back to our points, they just recover from mistakes so easily and they just turn the game around. And PGG, to their credit, came out swinging, right? They had a yeah. really good showing in the early game, capitalizing on the mistakes from the Chiefs. But like we talked about in the pre-show, 
you make one mistake and it was that dragon fight and Chiefs just roll with it, right? I mean, Ray's playing that fight so well, everyone knowing their role. Aladoric getting executed at the end of it. But here we go again, being proactive off the, off the front of it. Aladoric missing the Q flash, but it doesn't matter. Praetis, I think, being a bit greedy with his flash. And this is the real play where Chiefs actually made a mistake. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those rare moments where Chiefs actually do have a gap in their defense, right? They usually find that they capitalize on it, they get that early lead. They'll can't, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reaction in the half. But yeah, I mean, Chiefs just just chilling. They're just stabilizing. They're able to recover really well and PGG not able to find anything. Especially in this dragon fight where we do have Raze with the white and red weapons, which I really want to, com like, uh, I guess kind of praise is that he has the most perfect weapon for these dragon fights where they are able to go, go five for zero trades and no one can actually touch this Aethelios with that Brom supporting him because there is a Yone in this game, there is a Renekton, no one can reach the ADC. Absolutely, and we heard even before we got into this game there was going to be a ton of attention around the bot lane and of course our prayers were answered. That's exactly what we got to see, but as we kind of got into this game, you were talking a little bit about the head-to-head -head junglers and we saw Arthur go 6-0 and 8 that game. Definitely a force to be reckoned with. Definitely a force to be reckoned with where we saw that early game coming out of, early gink coming out of Arthur on that Wukong which did put Aphelios ahead. However, like Max said, they did a tiny throw, however, they were able to salvage that mistake. And this is a characteristic that PG is known for. I just want to hone in on this fight specifically. Like, Winter finds such a good flank onto Raze, but ultimately, he's a Renekton, he's got Black Cleaver, and that's pretty much it. Like, he's not going to have enough damage to get through the Aphelios, get through the Braum. It's just like, you need something more than just that Renekton finding the Ankh. Yeah, that build was absolutely sinful. <laughs> I think there's a couple <laughs> things in terms of the dra draft and the itemization drawing board for PG to look back on. I think, you know, Chiefs did look a bit shaky at the start there, but once they really got their footing at the end there, it sort of felt like the Chiefs from regular split. And if it is, you know, my prediction could be coming to fruit. Absolutely, and look at the damage charts right there. As you said, Ray's just putting in so much work on that Aphelios, and you could just see the gold chart go, start to go, ah, 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 totally for the side of Chiefs. But guys, I do want to say, as this was just our first, oh my God, that's a 10K gold lead there as well. <laughs> I can do math, I know how numbers work. Uh, but let's talk about PGG a little bit in terms of what they had going well for them, especially at the beginning of the game. It did look like they were able to pull out just a little bit of a lead before the Chiefs, Chiefs were able to uh, you know, capitalize on some of their mistakes. But just having that lead, is that maybe the hope that we could see them continue to grow throughout this series to potentially take a game? Yeah, I mean, they did have those nice aggressive plays early, right? They were finding gaps in Chiefs' defense, but ultimately, like, Chiefs, it's hard to find those gaps in the first place. And PGG, you can tell they're getting like a little bit antsy, like with the opportunities that they're finding. And ultimately, they need to like stay focused and just take the good ones, leave the bad ones, and yeah, stay focused. In that dragon fight in particular, we did see Rogue actually getting a flash two man and Mumu ulti on the Chiefs team. However, we did have the rest of the team actually focusing on that dragon. And I believe it was Sergio Arnie that continued doing the dragon. So that's why, in my opinion, the, turn, uh, the fight turned out so bad for PGG. Yeah, it was very disjointed, I think. Absolutely. And as soon as you're not committing all five members with this composition, I mean, the Renekton in the back line, like we said, Black Cleaver, not going to do too much by himself, right? He needs that Sergio Arnie there. He needs that Yon as well to get in with him. And they just weren't able to find that consistent and access to Raze. Eldoric doing a really good job of killing that AD carry. And then Raze is just sitting there DPSing. He's got the guns and he's going to clear up the fight. Yeah, just like ever so slightly like out of sync with PGG, right? You need to all be exactly on the same page and just like, you know, they're within the same book for sure, but you got to find the right page and stick to it. They're going to have to find the right page. And luckily they have a little bit of time backstage right now to go ahead and hopefully reflect on the game and move on forward. But before we actually take a break, I'm going to take a stick of five gum. I found it. It was in one of my pockets uh, as we quickly go to a break because as we allow our players to rest up, I'm going to make sure that my breath is minty fresh. So we will see you all in just a bit for game two. Can I have one? No, you can't. It's fine. Checking in with the total gold. As a result, Yuri is at the top of the table. Tapuna is dashed across the wall, dashing back across. World Ender starts to come into effect here. Has this World Ended? Has he delayed enough? Gold Drinker goes out. He's sustaining for the meantime. He's still alive! The Chiefs of Cavalry, they are here. They turn it around, PGG. You just did not have a chance. Hey, look, menu bomb. <laughs> oh, Dracu. okay. Oh, bench your son. Yes. Yes. Is getting into action with those benches. Very nice. Check into Melbourne.
so you can check out all the action after DreamHack ends. Play on and explore Melbourne's vibrant art, theatre, sport and culinary experiences throughout the city and beyond. Head to visitmelbourne.com to discover more. Picking those ones up. There's no way. There's no way. No way There's, in this world. You don't even want to hype it up. It's impossible. Are you asking me if I'm just going to lose today for the rest of the season? No, of course, mate. We're still flying. We're still flying high. You know, we took like a little, little bit of a, a fumble. You know, I was a bit late coming out of the cocoon, but I think, uh, I think it's butterfly time now. And from what I remember, I believe butterflies have a lifespan of two weeks. So hopefully, we do <laughs> last more. Do you just keep ending the road? Very scary for dogs. Oh. Huh? We're trying to summon our interview. <laughs> thank you, thank you, there he is. Definitely more energetic when I'm reversing you for sure. Oh, that's great to hear and good to know that you're staying hydrated. Ah. Ah. I'm trying to get the high note. Appy, you get it, right? Yeah, I know, I, I know what you're doing. He's feeling so excited, he's gonna do up his tie. Tell you gonna flash across. Oh, oh did you get oh, he 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 a he he missed. He's missed the laser no. beam. <laughs> Hands off keyboard, afraid of winning the game. I think we just sit here and judge him. Tell he's taken out the screen. Ah, he's got it. Yeah, do it up. The fact the small part of the tie is longer though, so he's really messed it up. Oh. What's going on here? I'm trying to be Yumi, I think. Someone's a Woolworths bag. That's cool. I love this. Celebrations have changed. Group hug, one, two, three, the Chiefs. Who's down? Who's that? I know who that is, girl. Suman on top, baby. You were indeed on top of Suman. I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> I expect it to be, I'm, I might get pentacure today because... Oh, because why? Oh, Appa, no, we because need a reason. Why? No, please, Appa, no, please. Because why?
Welcome back to the LCO Grand Finals, delivered by Menulog, where we are only a few short minutes away from game two of the Chiefs taking on Pentanet GG. I'm Avli May on the couch, and I've got a Melg, Maximize, and of course, Kitty. And before we start talking about this first game that we saw, Kitty's mom is in the crowd, and a Melg has family and fans in the crowd as well, too, holding up fan signs and moms taking selfies. I love the LCO community uh, that I've just been introduced to. It seems like such a great crowd of everyone who showed up here today. Uh, but that being said, we do have to talk about the first game that happened. Uh, really one-sided for the Chiefs. It looked like PGG was able to pull it off a little bit at the beginning, and then just mistake after mistake that was capitalized on. Something signature of those PGG comps is that they're very unforgiving. Once you pull the trigger on that Amumu, once you flash in, you can't really bail out. Like the Renekton, being the only one on the back line, he can't really get any backup, and then he just dies. So making these mistakes is really being capitalized by Chiefs, where I feel like Chiefs' draw they were more dynamic and it had a other dimension to it where they had the peel and they had the engage as well. Yeah, I do want to talk about that draft and we'll be able to in just a second. But one pick that I also really enjoyed coming out from Yuri was that Yone. And I believe, Kitty, it was you who pointed out that this used to be a signature pick? Yes, yeah, so Yuri used to play in the Brazilian League and he was a renowned Yone player. However, in the current meta, Yone isn't very popular. But picking that for his first match up against the Chiefs is definitely like an ego check. You know, you want to be on your comfort champion, which we saw it work in the early game. However, it just didn't suit the overall team comp of PGG, which we have at the bottom here. And what I wanted to talk about quickly is the second round phase of bans. I mean, PGG opting to ban out five of Razor's champions. I think wow. the Xi ban makes sense. I think Kalissa is something that could be looked at. So something like the Braum is really, really annoying. 
for PG champions to deal with. I mean, it's just such a good champion at peeling these really short melee threats that wanting to get on top of this Aphelios. And I think that Renekton R5, I think the crowd sort of reacted to it as well. But in this composition, you're going to need something a bit more heavy hitting. If you are ping that Renekton, at least go Bork so you can try to do some damage. Yeah, ultimately, like, like the Yone by itself is not going to be able to have enough back backline access to be able to kill Raze on the Aphelios. And also, I think the Brawn pick from Chiefs really just helping solidify what they want to do, right? They just want to slow down that hard engage, have some PL, let Raze do his thing, 1v9, and win the game. So I'm curious to see how the draft evolves going into game two because PGG are the ones who are going to have side selection. And so far we have only seen them play on the red side here at DreamHack Melbourne. So I am curious to see what they have selected and it is blue side. So this is the first time that we're gonna see PGG take the blue side. And like uh, Rogue told me, they do have a couple more tricks up their sleeve. So what do you think we can expect from this second game draft? What can we expect? Well, we've seen Jarvan being first picked in a previous playoff series where it was actually flexed to support. I believe it was an order series, however, mm -hmm. but that's what the potential of having that first pick means. You can pick up an extremely OP ADC, such as the Zeri, if it's not banned. And you can also take away the Wukong in this instance. I think that's a really good point about AD carries. I mean, we've seen that. PGG are definitely indexing towards limiting that pool. And obviously on blue side, you do have the option to first pick whatever AD carries left open, be that Zeri, be that Sivir. I highly doubt we'll see Zeri go through. I'm pretty sure whoever's on red side just has to pay that tax and ban it. But certainly the potential to pick up a really strong AD carry and win that bot lane matchup on one. Yeah, I just wonder how different the draft is going to be, right? Because we haven't seen PGG's blue side for so long. And I really wouldn't be surprised if like, they pull out something completely different to what they've played so far. I really want to see a new bot lane pick yeah. come out from Praetith. I think that that would be really fun to see and entertaining. And again, is that one of the tricks that they have? Or is it maybe a pick somewhere else across the map? We don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see until we get into that game two. Now, before I throw it over to the casters, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity. I know we're only one game in. Any flip floppies? Any flip floppers on the predictions? Nope. Nope. It's going nope. your way. Really? It's no going from your you way. A Melg, none. Any, uh, any PGG fans in the crowd? That says it all, right? That says it all. There you go. Then you have your PGG faith as well as the fans. But something that we have are our two casters who are ready to take us into that second game. Now we certainly are of late. Uh, super excited to see how this series can transcend now because uh, from what we've really seen across this entire series, this entire split really, it's really been a case of uh, yeah, Pentanet go red side. It's been their preference. They like to try and almost land that sucker punch, that counter punch, mm -hmm. and sort of respond to what you're doing to find a better uh, answer, I guess. So what do they look like on blue side? It's been such a long time. Yeah, it's been a very long time. So that's the first point. I actually want to address what Ovali said as well. Will we see anything different in the bot lane? Sure. I think that is the place that we'll see the point of difference for Pentanet. My mm -hmm. eyes go to, first of all, if you think about the game one bans, getting rid of three ADC straight out of the gates, right? The Zeri, the Draven, and the Lucian. I suspect they'll ban the Draven and the Zeri perhaps, but I think they'll pick the Lucian. I actually think they might go the Lucian Nami composition so they can play dive heavy down to bottom lane. Would it be too amiss if we got a bit of Twitch as well? Obviously another champion that allowed that game five or that full best of five to go the distance. Uh, a pocket pick that came out surprised us all, but went the distance and allowed them to have so much success. And I think really bot lane is where we're channeling a lot of our energy. Praetif in hot form. Ray's obviously undeterred by the amount of presence and pressure put towards him in that game. Would you just like to see a little bit more simplicity from PGG this time around? I think simple is obviously good, but at the same time, I don't think that their composition was difficult, right? There was certainly some execution difficulties with Yone, but that's what that's what they play, right? These are champions that they're comfortable with. Renekton is a champion that Winter yep. plays actively. So I don't think like you can get much more simple other than going Malphite Oriana. And I don't think we're going to get a Malphite Oriana composition anytime soon. Not on blue side either. Uh, I, I think actually the other thing that I want to bring up as well is if you're worried that Petsnet are a little bit perhaps nervous or worried after that first game. I was walking back out to the stage and Rogue was next to me and they were arguing about if I was wearing the same suit on Friday as I was today. But they have zero care. They're, oh. they're not worried. They're in their lane. They're ready to go. They don't care. Well, I am. So there you go. So I guess Rogue's just got the wrong uh, caster on that occasion. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, though, not too far away from champs. Like to see how this game can look to try and pan on out in game number two. And if we really do have a series on our hand, because I tell you what, if these games are rapid fire like we saw in that one, 25 minutes, we could be in for a very quick night. Yeah, that game was interesting as well because it felt like a, a 20 solid minutes of gameplay. There were certainly some moments. The big Drake play is, uh, is the highlight that Pentanet sure. will have to look at, going for Topu, not being able to kill him. But how quickly that game went from being relatively even to just done shows you how good the Chiefs are and how you cannot even give them an inch in terms of priority or ability to play in this game. 
They just run away with it. Biggest thing so for me fast. has to be the fact that they went for that dive on Tapoon. 1v3, he survives. They went for the Baron right on spawn at 20 minutes. The milk. It was just a little bit too hard to try and control. Just a little bit too much to try and deal with. And I mean, situations like that, moments like that, that's what you thrive for. That's what you need. And that's that little bit of lady luck that can uh, really get you across the finishing line. I don't want to say it's do or die just yet, but this is a very important game for PGG. If they, do they don't want to give Chiefs a 2-0 lead by any means, that's a little bit too difficult to come back from. Yeah. You want to see a 1-1 one -one start to this series. You want to see Pentanet show something on blue side, show they have what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best, as the Chiefs haven't lost a single game yet this split. It has to, it has to happen today if you want to beat them at well, all. It has to. It has to happen three times. It really times. has to. I mean, I guess it depends which part of the narrative, the script that you're uh, a bigger fan of, right? Do you want to see that perfect 27-0 team go across the worlds and showcase, hey, take notice of what we can do, or do you want that full five-game banger that can really deliver from what has been everybody staying at home, watching online? We're in a studio, mate. We're in Margaret Court Arena. You want all the drama, you want all the tension, you want it to go to distance, you want these fans that are screaming for Pentanet to have it shown their hands. There's a lot of PGG fans as well, so no doubt they want to have that five-game series, or at least a four-game series, because they can still find the 3-1 comeback victory if everything goes their way from here. Mention the Lucian Nami as a yep. possibility. I think that's the key piece for me beyond just the jungle champions. Remember that Belkan in game number one played Sejuani? Yep. Uh, Belkan likes dealing damage, so it doesn't feel like prototypical him. He played more for the side laners, and then Yuri is really the one that I want to highlight. I feel like he was mechanically the most off. There was a really good laning phase from him. Yeah. When it came to team fights, he was kind of missing the mark, except for that one Drake play. But we are well in. Holy cow. Certainly into champ select. Here we go. And I think you are hot on the money there, Rusty. You said blue side. Would they just go for the Lucian army? Well, they certainly have. And I like this from the Aatrox this time from Winter because we know just how good Chiefs are at playing the Gnar. Would they ban it or would they say maybe a little bit of cheeky arcane comic gaming? I think they managed to pull the bands out of a hat. I don't know how I managed to predict the entire first part here of Betz there, but we got there. Are we going to be banned? Tally was very good with that last game. Silas and Akali already gone, specifically from Yuri because he is a monster on those champions. Tally now starting to ban a little bit of the shared champion pool though, so keep that in mind as currently the main point of difference is an Aatrox locked in compared to a Trundle. So top and junglers are the points that are mismatched, yet no bans going towards those lanes. None for the meantime, uh, but certainly want to make sure that things are as comfortable as possible. There's the Kennen ban, so really looking to try and force up the Nahi. Won't answer it though. He says, no, we will not entertain that. I'm going to go for that Camille. If that Renekton performance was anything to split push by, well, a Camille can do just that. I just become a little bit better, a little bit stronger, and spike a little bit faster. Ask you a question here. Do you reckon oh! Tally plays Galio Karthus? Actually going to get locked in here. Ezreal to follow. Oh my god. What on earth is happening? Pentanet said we're not waiting until we're down 2 0. We are blue sides, and this is what we is do. Is he playing Karthus jungle with an Ezreal it's mid? Lucian mid. It's Lucian, Lucian mid. mid. It has to be Lucian mid. This is one of Yuri's favorite champions. He doesn't know his matchup. You have to assume with the Camille locked in that it was going to be Galio. But that is an incredibly bold statement. Remember, if Karthus presses ult and then Galio does, he gives a magic shield to everybody that he lands around. This is a bold strategy from PGG. I like it. I like the fact that it's bold. But I'm struggling to piece together exactly how this composition wins and how it all works together. Lucian and Nami want to go forwards. Very close range. Aatrox can work with that, but Ezreal's more poke. Karthus can all in, but he has a bit of poke as well. It just feels to me, Rusty, like the final piece of the puzzle when Yuri made his uh, debut, when he made his introduction this year into Oceania, we thought, okay, what does this uh, individual possess? What is their style of gameplay? It was Assassins, it was aggressive, it was Yone's. Like we just saw in that game before, but Lucian's always been there. The meta hasn't really allowed him to play in a solo lane. It's been no, Lucian it's an Ezreal. time and time again. It is an Ezreal. Surely! I know Lucian makes some sense going mid, but when you have a Nami, you have to play Lucian. You have to play Lucian Nami together. But Ezreal Karthus is going to be the mid jungle duo. There's no way a Galio can kill an Ezreal, I'll say that much. It is a range versus a melee matchup, and what an exciting way to kick off this second game. He's absolutely done me there, hasn't he, Yuri? I thought it would have been that flip of the hammer at the very last moment. Ezreal in the mid lane! Oh my god! What a time to be alive here. We are really changing things up. And as you quite rightly mentioned, very hard for Tally to get on top of them. But I tell you what, once the team fights come around, a Galio-Camille combo, so hard to evade. There's just not much you can do about it.
Oh, without a doubt. Camille locks down one target. They are destined to die. It makes the Lucian army very difficult to navigate, right? Camille simply needs to press ult. Lucian, who is reliant on mobility, is stuck in an arena. So they can't actually kite to safety. Galio inevitably connects with the overlapping of those AoEs. Nautilus goes forwards. Trundle can be an aggressive champion with the rest of his composition. We're in the game and we're straight to a bit of a skirmish. Oh, hooks on, ignites there, Balkan. He's just dead. It's an easy first blood, pre first minute. Torn goes out as well on towards Yuri, and I mean, that is our first level one invade. Well, easy as you'd like, the Karthus goes down. We know the Karthus wants to die, but not this early, not for nothing gain. Yuri also, just quickly to note this, did use his potion, has gone for the first strike. I still think it'll be an ADC, Ezreal. Manamune, perhaps the item that is rushed. And they have an AP carry in the jungle, which is why there's no reason to, to think we're going to go crazy cheese with like an AP Ezreal. Another one of those situations though, where it's going to be a solo AP threat coming out of Balkan. We know that he can farm up the storm, that he is a carry. This is a return to his bread and butter. A champion that we do not really associate with him, but he's been one of many surprises this playoffs, hasn't he? Certainly has been. Tally starting with a W in mid lane from that level one skirmish. Goaded skin, by the way. Means that he's not going to have any lane pressure at all. Range versus melee and some now that you have to start that W. You can't even farm with Q. So far has been keeping up okay, but has lost a whole lot of HP as a result of it. So glad the Galio is back as well, because we've seen the Twisted Fate, we've seen the Rise. All we're missing now is that Cho'Gath mid. Yeah, then yeah. we're all the way back to Legacy 2020. That would be a roller coaster. if that one came back. Quick touch here with top lane as well. Camille, one of those champions that can actually be quite annoying to deal with. Started hookshot, obviously found its mark, kept Winterer at bay. And then once you have the W, once you have the sweep available, every single time the Aatrox goes for a last hit, you threaten it, and you out-sustain that single trade. It's where Aatrox goes for the multiple Qs that things can swing the other way. Also can cancel Camille hookshot. So there is avenues of attack there. Arthur, on the hunt. He's done this before. Balkan. Trundle, hello! There's the pillar, where are you going? Red buff, that's gonna switch aggro to you, Balkan. He's running, he's smiling, he's hoping, he's dreaming. It's just not enough. Arthur's gonna get the kill now. Can Yuri snipe it? He's flashed across. Where can Arthur go? He's been tagged up. Oh no, Yuri, that's a double buff. Where can you go? He's sidestepping, you have to deny. Arthur tries his best to stay alive, take no damage, but Yuri was always going to get that kill. It means the Ezreal gets double buffs. That means that Arthur's attempt to invade, while successful, at least comes at a cost. But this Carthus has been very much kept behind. Wants to full clear, wants to take those camps out. Arthur, he loves being aggressive on this trundle. He loves going for those kills. He's now two and one with a sheen. He's done that countless times. It's paid off so, so well. It's really put these junglers behind. They did it in their series up against Order and into a very heavy carry champion. Farm focus. Carthus is not had the best start. First strike, obviously there, level six. Requiem comes on down. A huge injection of gold can be found, but just got to get there. And the funny thing about Carthus, and a lot of Carthus compositions tend to have a utility side lane off. Uh, so something like perhaps you know the Ezra would be a Galio, as an example, or a Rise. And you want to hit a point in the game where the Carthus just starts taking all of the farm. He just becomes a vacuum, soaks it up, and becomes a real AP carry threat, not just jungle camps. This time around, it feels like Pentanet need to farm in every single lane and the jungle. So this is what I would call a very greedy composition from them. Where in contrast to that, we'll hit a point in the game where the Camille can split push for the Chiefs. And then you have a Galio that can sack some farm, Trundle that can be utility and sacrifice farm as well. And so Raze gets all of it. It's a good conversation because surely somebody has to suffer to try and make the rest of the team succeed. Are we just looking at a... And Ezreal with a two-item spike and saying that's enough for the meantime. Lucian needs to pop off, Balkan needs to pop off, Balkan's in trouble. Yuri has double buff. He's pushed up aggressively. The Raptor won't be smite stolen. But now can they fight their way out of the enemy lines? On towards Tally. Headbutts into a wall. What was that? He's copping Skittles, he's copping Poke, and the red buff, it's starting to hurt. And you can see how difficult his lane really can be to play out when melee and range champions combine Ezreal. So much long-range damage. Balkan said, I'm... Pretty much just sick of you invading me. I'm going to go to your jungle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this mid priority is a large factor for that. 
Mind you, Skimmy, one more level until that Galio gets there faster every single time. It certainly will be a game of chicken once level six is there. The battle between all the globals that this game has. The one-two punch that a Camille Galio can offer. And the fact that all these lanes can then start to be a little bit more aggressive, knowing that an ultimate from a calf is, is ready to rain from above. Rogue hovering. Aladoric moving as well. Making sure that Yuri is safe because the wave is in a very compromised position if Tally tried to hold that in a freeze. Aladoric spotted while Rogue stays out of vision. And he is going to stay here. He's protecting for the meantime. Aladoric and Arthur off the map. They're going to look to try and force a pincer maneuver here on towards Yuri. Rogue still here, still has full ideas as to where Aladoric is. The bubble's not going to connect. The pillar goes out. The flash. Oh, he's missed the hook. Aladoric's under the turret. Oh, he's still in trouble though. Yuri, is he still going to die? He is. Aladoric lives. Arthur in trouble. He is burning, but they just need some damage and Rogue cannot deliver it. And I'm sure Aladoric can put the glasses on and say all planned, but it certainly was not a fantastic dodge. Rogue finds himself raised, tally on the way. It's Jungle Aphilios. Oh, he's flushed the bubble. The taunt's going to miss, but Rogue's stuck between a rock and a hard place. There's one more bit of extra damage, and there's a Chakram to secure the deal. He'll use the movements to be very nicely done by Raze. That's both summoners gone from the Aphilios, however, and it means that Praedith can get aggressive, get level six, get on the prowl, use that culling. Lucian and Nami separate, and suddenly the Chiefs find their prey and it goes without saying, Arthur, three and one on his trundle, has the shutdown, proving exactly why him in particular, this is such a power pick for him. He's just so good. There's just no other way to really succeed it. Any jungler you give him, he finds a way to be a carry, to be a, a team player. Just a little bit of everything right now, but Balkan's not gonna give up without a fight. He is farming up an absolute treat, keeping up pace here with his laners. Tally has ult, has ignite. There is a world where you look for this. They're actually going to use their first smite on the blue buff, go straight towards the Drake. It seems like they're just going to concede happily. Again, no summoners there for the entire bot lane of the Chiefs. And just look how much deep vision was planted by Pentant to guarantee they could get that blue buff and then walk away, go for the Drake. Ooh. We're on. It's a top lane 1v1. Hex the Cold Maiden locks in place. Winter, there's the ignite because he doesn't have flash. And Winter holds onto his. Returning the flash is really nice. Tally's nearby. The combo did not happen. So strategically, a top was always going to win that 1v1 and he knows it, but didn't wait for his mid laner to move up. A rare sign of mistakes, perhaps, from the Chiefs. No loss to be seen from it. And that is the beauty of that decision. At the end of the day, they're still fine. Just amazing to think they could be even better. Oh! Stop the base. Oh. <laughs> he had the right inclination. Just a fraction too wide. You've seen this with Jinx as well as Ezreal, right? Using those ultimates just to be a nuisance. Especially when you've got the tier stacking in lane, you're going to be spamming those abilities as much as you possibly can. Rogue, such a fragile support right now. But Praetith is level six. And they find their moment to strike before Aladoric gets level oh. six to really hit them with the all in. He's tried to play that one beautifully with the minion dropping so the dredge line can come on out. This is all you can really ask for for the Chiefs bot lane, right? You stem the aggression of Lucian Nami. The Aphilios will start to pull ahead. Finger on the trigger here as well is Pentanet. If someone tries to go onto them, they were ready to react. He's going to soak up that experience, get active around the rift, but keep in mind that there is a Herald now up to be played for. Wave really good for Winterer if it's to push. Instead, he could get ganked and it's not as great. No ultimate for either of these bruises right now. Arthur here with the wraparound. He's got the subjugate. He's got the chilling smite. Winterer flashing straight over that pillar. He's in trouble. A flash to follow. Lethal Tempo is there. He's got the attacks, but he's got the range. He's got the damage. Chomp, chomp, dead. Arthur just piece by piece takes him out. Very nicely done from the Chiefs. They find the target that they're after. Belkan going to be on the opposite side of the map. Means that Rift Herald is not going to be contested and they will concede the life of their top laner for Nort. Nort being zero, not the champion this time. Yet to see an ultimate come out of this Scarfus. He has been farming up a tree. Big fight breaks out once again. Bubbles enough to try and survive. Tally comes on through. 
He is the Superman. Crushes. Rogue's chances of turning that one around. Well, Carl, we're going to cheeky slide on the Grob. The crowd enjoys that one. Top Wing going to take a couple of plates top, however. And once again, we find a skirmish where Praetith is not there with Rogue. The Lucian and Nami has no meaning so far in this game. If this works, this is perfect, Rusty. You get the kill, you get the summoning of the hero. That's the first turret falling on down. Ultimate to there, Ignite is there too. Winter, he's already brought Tapoon down to 50%. Wave's being held though, so Winter is not going to allow this dive to happen. Yuri's going to ult his own teammate because he can, trying to dissuade what would have been a potential dive. Belkar bottom hook oh, connects. Oh, turns around, bubbles on, Graviton, damage, follow it up with the Calibre, I'm looking for the kill! One more auto would do it, but now here's Balkan. It is still a 2v2. Up goes the summoner hill. Alatoric in trouble. The Skittles, they're connecting. They're finding. They're looking for it. It's a 1v2. And Braidiff gets the double kill. The two kills for the Lucian. Finally gets active on the board. Rogue, you can see he's smiling. He's having a laugh. They go on him. But the reinforcements were just around the corner. They'll get themselves a cheeky turret plate here as well. The raid boss in Arthur <laughs> will show up. Praetor's going to have to use his flash. I don't know if his dash got cancelled by the pillar. If so, that was perfection. I did have a bit of a laugh there. I just see Rogue in the player cam say, ah, oh, yeah, auto plan taps his head. It all starts with the bait, draw in the attention. He falls on down, but the rest of Pensnet, they're here to back him up. It's still basically a one hit, right? If there was no Belkan nearby, that is perfectly viable idea. Belkan was hovering, however. Why would Anami be at the turret by herself unless there was somebody just around the corner? And then Praetor's able to come in, flash, Gale Force, close the distance, get the kills. Now things start to get just a fraction more interesting. You've got a strong Lucian now, finally coming online. First item complete there with the Gale Force, assuming we're going to get a rapid fire cannon for the one shot that we've seen countless times in the last few months. The Herald play that they tried to use topside did not work, so it has to go bot side. True Shot Barrage cuts off that wave, plates primed and ready to go. One will remain after this one. Unless Raze has something to say about it. Raze says the turret is actually winning. Uh, it's going to have to be very much dissuaded from this one. Has no HP, tanks way too many turret shots. Remember that Karthus has ultimate. At all times, remember that Karthus has ultimate. You try and make these plays. You try and make the play top lane on Winter, for example, a couple of minutes ago. Belkan presses R and equalizes it. This is the first strike Karthus, by the way, and hasn't been using the ultimate too much for money either. Just worth pointing out. It's got Leandris now, so it's going to hurt big time. Hard oh. to build yourself in Magic Resist. In we go. Balkan's been caught. He's going to go to the afterlife straight away. Surely out comes the Requiem. The lasers from above. There they go. Red beams of power. It's damaged, but it's not enough to get the kill. It's a burn. But Yuri's it's just tickling him right now. Tally preemptively goes golden to try and dodge out the Acra Prison. Instant flash away out of Winter's Chains. And they will just disengage, but Yuri was keen to snipe one for free. Yuri doesn't want the skirmish to end, but unfortunately for him, the Chiefs, they're able to just walk away. Fantastic little trade from them. It's the flash from Elidoric. It's the confidence play from this Nautilus. Elidoric, by far, one of the best tank support players that we have. Knows when he has his angle, finds the mark. You can buffer the Ezreal E as Yuri. So unfortunately for Belkan, he is the one that tanks that. And then Praetor, like we spoke about from Draft Skimmy, where are you meant to go when you're locked in a cage? And how are you meant to use that mobility that you have to get anywhere? As Tally with a good flash and stopwatch ends the fight. I mean, it's just unavoidable. The Nautilus straight into the Camille. You're just biding your time at that point, hoping you can get as much damage dealt before you do fall on down. Chiefs will respawn, they will redeploy. They're gonna go straight towards this next Drake. We are now gonna be playing for a Hextech Soul. Meanwhile, Balkan continues the major focus for him. Get this farm. I mean, he's really keeping pace here still with his mid and bot. I mean, there is a lot of farming happening on Pentanet's side. Praetith in particular having a pretty sizable advantage overall over his respective opponent, but still they find themselves 3,000 gold down. And Raze, you can see, is still ahead of Praetith as a result of those turret plates and local gold that he was able to secure. Keep in mind for Pentanet and any Pentanet fans out there, their scaling is incredible. They have a Karthus, they have an Ezreal. They will be an issue. But Chiefs have such a strong first punch that you have to weather that if you want to win a fight. You can weather that storm if you can find yourself at a two to three item spike, then potentially the one AP threat this uh, Karthus really presents them with may just be enough to bring them back here in this series to deliver the full best of five. Obviously, we cannot forget about the scaling factor of a Camille too. 
Sapoon now finding himself that Divine Sun direct, coupling in quite nicely with uh, Arthur, the Trundle player. So we've got ourselves a very strong top jungle partnership. The full support, Camille. Basically, so far in this game, 0 0 3, starting to get those damage items. Can be a genuine split push threat. Yuri, this is going to be one of those very awkward game states where an Ezreal doesn't want to be in a side lane, has no teleport. But the Lucian and Nami, if they plant themselves mid, well, you kind of have to hold the L and, and make a decision where you're going to go. Lots of posturing right now. Lots of movement around the middle lane. Wrestling for mid lane control and for good reason too. 15 seconds and the second Herald now will be spawning. First achieved by Chiefs. Enter in the area. Vision deployed and vision denied. Good ward there from Elidoric. A control ward in response. Mid turret versus Rift Herald. Let's see how the Chiefs choose to play this one out. Pentanet, they start. It's already half health. Seemed crazy to me that Chiefs would want to go for this one right now. Tally is freely pushing topside. Tapoon is on his way to a bot tier two. They are achieving map pressure and Pentanet have to answer back and say, well, if we get that Herald, you can't get anything as a trade. And let's see if they go coast to coast here as well, right? The Camille causing an issue while Tally also pushing top lane. Those minions with the cannon there will be able to secure the structure. And once again, you may get the Rift Herald, but the Chiefs will make the play for structures. They will get the turrets for free and the guaranteed gold that comes with them. And I love that heads-up play there from Chiefs, right? You've now achieved two turrets to retaliate back to what they've just done by going as a five-man squad for the Herald. You just open up even more avenues now for a Camille and a Galio to flank to deploy to act as a two-man squad. Absolutely going to be a very big threat with all those extra angles that they have. Next big point in this game, not just going to be the Drake that's up in a minute 45, but those big item spikes and purchases right now, looking at the Surrealder's Grudge second, perhaps, for Praetith. That is a major point for Lucian Nami's strength when usually they post in mid lane, get level 11, get those two items, and someone just dies off cooldown, let alone a Karthus ultimate that comes with that. I do think the PG are going to be looking for a lot of that heavy damage pick. No real committal crowd control to speak of, though, so always keep that in mind. Where Chiefs, I would say, a much more standard composition. Lots of front-to-back team fighting ability. Certainly is the case. And once that Sorota's Grudge is online, Predator will just be able to one-shot people, especially with the coming, especially with the Tide Caller's Blessing there to buff it up. But this one seems a lot, lot slower this time around, right? 25 minutes and we were done. We were trading Dragons left, right, and center. We were taking Barons on spawn. And despite the Chiefs still having a 3k gold lead, a lot of that can just be looked at for Arthur. Yeah, still playing relatively passively, looking for those opportunistic moments, not trying to force anything crazy. You still have to respect the strength of your opponents. It is just going to be the Drake that they're playing for. You can see the vision control. Very nicely established by the Chiefs already. DGG have to face check if they want to walk in. Elidoric, no reinforcements though. Once again, everybody comes together in the mid lane. And you know why? Another Drake is about to spawn. So that means Pentanet say we need this mid tier one to fall on down. Wasting no time with the summoning of the Herald. Question then becomes, can the Chiefs deny it from getting the headbutt off? They need a fair bit of damage. And 10k is just a little bit too much to get through. The hook turret connects. survives. The hook goes out. Falcon instantly becomes the statue. There is the culling to put in the back line. Out comes the hero challenge. Yuri, he's flashing, he's dashing. He's out of range of the Everfrost, so he's living for the meantime. But it's just a sea of red. The Requiem is it enough? It is not. It's not going to find Topoon. Unfortunately for Pentanet, the team fight is a wash. Now 3 to 12 is the scoreline of kills. Drake confirmed for free as well. The idea was sound, you summon the Herald, you pressure mid lane, but if every single time a skirmish starts, you have a Camille on a flank and a Nautilus that can hit a hook, you're going to have a very hard time winning that skirmish in the first place. We'll see this one more time. Quite simply, Belkan does use the stopwatch, does survive as intended, but then Topoon finds Yuri, and Tally just by using the ultimate means that the rest of PGD are forced to scatter, to disengage, and run to the top side of the river, and then they never had a shot. 
so, so hard for Predator to try and play this game out, despite how strong that 2v2 is. The team fight set up, a target of mine, remove Balkan from the equation, but Alex Zorok, I mean, he's just finding these angles, not wasting any time whatsoever, flashing on cooldown, looking for hooks. I mean, he's done it countless times. I mean, I always remember that game up against Order. It went in the distance, up against the Kale, up against Nazir. At level 16, it's starting to get a hand. That one god hook was enough to try and salvage that perfect split still. Ray's getting close to 2,000 gold ahead here as well of Freitas. So hard to keep this Aphelios down. We're starting to see more and more red side of Philios as well, proving to be a really valuable factor as a potential answer to Illusion Nami as well, for what it's worth. Baron started 8k health. It is going down incredibly quickly. Winter's not here. He's got a teleport, but it's going to come out a little bit too late. They have to face check. They're going into the darkness. Falcon 0-4 oh right now. He's jumping in. He's going to go golden for another time. The Baron, they can rush it because there's no jungle smite. It's not a 50-50. The first kill found by Predator. They answer back by removing Zapoon. Who's going to do a bit of damage? Wraith is finally dead. Yuri's found his number. Baron buffs are being removed. Shutdowns are being found. And multiple casualties on the rift. A four in one Lucian is the true bastion of hope here for Pensanet.gg. The two items done, Tally will just head by the wall for the second time, not that I'm counting. Chiefs will still win the team fight, but that's only because they have the Baron. The overall kill score still quite nice for Pensanet.gg. Arthur so low from hitting this Baron. Raze tragically cycles through his white weapon as the fight starts, ends up with the Inferno. Combo's nice, but Yuri makes sure that Raze dies. And then on the backside here, Praetith able to use that Gale Force to get lethal and execute Topoon to make sure that was a worthwhile fight for them. Still 6k down. It has to feel good though that the, the Lucian did actually survive despite the amount of pressure that has been going towards them all 22 minutes of this one. Tally filling himself. He's got 10 stacks now on the Magias. It's purchased. I feel like this is a done deal. They still have a handful of Baron buffs available. But based off that last fight, Pentanet will not go out quietly. They will not go quietly by any means. They will fight their way through this game, win or loss. I think Chiefs are all too happy to entertain that. Two games in a row, compositions are about that fighting. 0-5 is the scoreline for Belkan, but does have 170 CS and is still getting some items on the board. Not the best Carthus game that we've seen by any means. But at least we'll be dealing damage. Maybe there's a world in which you can delay into a level 16. Prayed up once again with the ultimate. Top in low. Oh, just goes wide. Not going to connect, but that's another turret falling on down. That's the Baron buff still with a minute left. Up and active. Finding its pressure. Now Winter at top side is looking to answer to try and make it a fair trade. They've got objective bounties after all. They are down now, 7k gold. They need to claw that back. A fair trade is a winning trade for the losing side here as well. You can see Chiefs now looking to collapse towards top side, but they don't have any vision or knowledge of where he is, and it will just be a confirmed recall. And so the game is now about a reset. Baron is just going to expire. But Drake is on the cards in a minute. Third Drake of the game for the Chiefs if they're able to lock this one down, threatening a Hextech soul point. That seems to be the Drake of the, the weekend. Why not? Damage and pure pain. Itemization difference is the big thing for me that stands out is that Raze has actually gone for a blood first a second. Forget about Infinity Edge. He just needs to live. There is so much pain, so much poke. If he's gone, these fights are nowhere near as close. Praetith. Oh, oh no, Praetith. He's hit the stopwatch. The tidal wave goes on out. He's just a sitting darkness a little bit too easy. A flash on four. That's a two man depth charge. Sapoon 1v3. Down comes that hero's entrance. Goodbye, sweet Prince and Yuri. Predator thought he had the 1v1 in isolation, and Chief said, Oh, you were sorely Still mistaken. Falcon is dead. Braze has found the triple kill. The laser beams from the sky come down, but they're just tickling. Four minions left standing, more than enough to be able to push down mid lane, inhibitor to drop. The question is, the Chiefs go beyond. Pensanet just go way too far on a really non existent opportunity. And now Chiefs try and end. It's still a die. Rogue flashed away. Rogue That's one. one. He's found another. Can he do any more? They're on towards the next turret. Two have fallen on down. They're on towards the Nexus itself. With that win there, Rusty. That's Chiefs now a match point. And two games in a row. It feels like we have a bit of a game, right? For 12, 15, up to 20 minutes. And then it just ends at 25 minutes. Two times in a row, it just ends.
The Chiefs have proven time and again that if you give them any opportunity, they will take everything from you with no hesitation. And the heroes arrive, the Camille goes in, the Galio lands, and there just is no way out for Pentanet.gg. I think they drafted themselves into a very awkward situation. The Aphilios handles the Lucianami. Yeah. And it does not play out the way that they intended. And they took a risk. They uh, certainly threw a curveball in the draft, right? We're going to go blue, so I'm going to try and throw you off and say, where would that Israel be? Last pick, mm -hmm. surprise factor. I mean, it was strong. They got a double buff nice and early. It put Galio uh, in a bit of a precarious situation, but ultimately that bread and butter combo that during the uh, ability to protect Raze once again, I mean, Arthur is just playing out of his mind. He just brings that early amount of pressure that just fuels the fire for them to go into 20 minute games and say, well, we're under no real pressure. We don't yeah. seem to worry. So, Arthur becoming notorious with those. I don't know what's in the water for him. He certainly knows how to win. He's a bit of an MVP in my eyes, but that's enough from us. Back to the Anna's couch. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, back to back 20 something minute games. Very, very dominant looking Chiefs. This is looking like a pretty quick 3-0, and I don't think any of us predicted that. Did you get the 3-0? You yeah. predicted the 3-0. Uh, we got the 3-1. We thought that there's some life in PGG, but after that game, and specifically after that draft, it's not exactly looking like it. It is exactly not looking like very good news for PGG. You know, we did see the Ezreal and Karthus duo coming out of them for this particular game, which you did get a hint from the players that we this was the, picks. this was a surprise pick, I guess, which was saved for fifth and fourth. But overall team comp, there was no clear disengage and there was no clear engage, in fact. And it was really hard to execute overall. And you know, this combo in the mid jungle where it does impact the rest of the map, the Ezreal Yumi, uh, Ezreal Nami, might I add, never got to flourish in that bot lane. Yeah, and even like the town on the Carthus, right? You know, he's making use of that Carthus passive for even the one minute mark. You know, respect for that. Um, but ultimately, he's <laughs> just getting punished so much by Arthur on Trundle. That guy's just like chomping away. He must be hungry. I felt like this was one of the fights that we got to see uh, the Chiefs get a little bit punished here by Balkan. And again, just like the spark of hope for PGG, for PG. G, uh, to potentially find a place to try to get a lead ahead. And we see Rogue really feeling himself there. We like that spirit. But then we just see more fights like this around the Baron and it just all falls apart. It's such a hard comp to play though. Like Kitty pointed out, there's no real disengage, right? You've drafted the Ezreal, you've drafted the Karthus along the Lucian army to sort of have this poke style composition that really wants to end fights before they start. But you've got stuff like the Camille, like the Galio, and the Nautilus there as well that can just force these fights. And there are no ways for PGG to actually deal with that. Yeah, especially with the Ezreal. Right, because it, it is a unique pick, it's quirky, I like it, it's interesting, but <laughs> what is an Ezreal going to do when the Camille ults him, Galio ults, like, how is he going to get out of it? He just can't. And just being quirky won't win you the grand finals of LCO, no. but looking at the Chiefs comp, they had a lot of go buttons. We have the Camille ult following up with the Galio, which is Tally's like classic champion that brought Legacy back in the day's two worlds. And we have Ray's, I believe in a previous interview, he has stated that every time Aphelios is up and available, he will pick it. And it's done amazing in the series so far. Especially when we saw Freyda also try out that Aphelios in the previous series. So just to see the other champ, this champion swap hands to the opposing side, like you could see the happiness, the size of relief, and then also just kind of like, the faces of worry on the side of PGG after that second match. And take a look at the damage charts right there. We do see the Karthus damage is always uh, there and a happy score to see. But again, just on the side of Raze, like, yeah. this was a struggle for yeah. PGG. I mean, like, I'm going to see that in my nightmares, man. Raze, red, white guns, just like a million chakrams floating around him. That's just scary, man. <laughs> and to... Sorry, and to me this sort of feels like a deja vu from the Order series where the first two games, PGG just don't really have a good read on what they want to pick, right? They're sort of all over the shop. I mean, this is something that, you know, it was a surprise pick. It, there's an idea behind it, but I really want them to go back to some of the stuff that we've seen before where they actually have easy ways to start fights. I mean, look at this. There's actually really no way for them to really get in. There's not much CC coming through, so I want them to go back to the drawing board Go with what worked and pick some aggressive comp. And we did see the Atros coming in blind from PGG. I believe it was picked second after the Lucian, but it did not have a very decent matchup, especially leading towards the later games up against that Camille. They never win against the side lane. However, for that Lucian Nami, it's supposed to be the strong side of PGG, but we never saw that lead given to them because of that Karthus pick. And Karthus losing to 1v1 against Trundle is just never a good thing. So say that Chippies is staring at the screen right now and listening to what all four of us are saying. Kitty, what are you telling him as they're preparing the draft for game three? 
Go back to your roots, play 10 minute comps. You wanna be fighting for that first Rift Herald 5v5, absolute insane stuff up in there. I want Rogue on a roaming support, you know. We did see Nami up against that Nautilus. Did not work out for my boy Rogue. I believe he ended 0-4 on the Nami. So put him on Alistair or something, ban the Silas away, and we're good to go. Yeah, give our confident player Rogue a chunky boy to just make sure that he can defend Freydeth. Uh, but that being said, we are going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we are going to see that third and potentially final game of the LCO Grand Final Series. Don't go anywhere. Oh, oh the Freydeth! He's hit the stop punch, the tidal wave goes on out, he's just a sitting duck, it's a little bit too easy. A flash on four, that's a two-man depth charge. Sapoon, 1v3, down comes that hero's entrance. Goodbye, sweet Prince and Yuri. Predator thought he had the 1v1 in isolation and Chief said, oh, you were sorely Still mistaken. Going. Hey, look, menu bomb. It's like, you gotta value what you believe makes you good. And if the boys believe getting that extra bit of sleep makes them good, and that makes them good. Me, on the other hand, a glass of orange juice. Orange juice one shot, I'm done. I'm ready. It's placebo. Placebo effect. Plus, New Jerseys. New Jerseys, we're looking clean. Tell me I can lose when I look this Very good. Very clean I'm indeed. I'm dapper without a suit. Check in to Melbourne so you can check out all the action after DreamHack ends. There's always something new to discover in Melbourne's hive of creative laneways. From an ever-changing outdoor gallery of street art to hidden boutiques and hole-in-the-wall cafes and bars. Head to visitmelbourne.com to discover more. We all love a dare fix here in the studio, but when it comes to those tough moments in life, a dare won't fix it. But thankfully, a conversation could. Dare Ice Coffee is continuing their partnership with the harm prevention charity Are You OK this year to help us identify the signs that someone in our life may be struggling. Maybe they've had a really good game, but they just aren't celebrating. Maybe their team is up, but they are feeling down. Or perhaps they're just not themselves. If you see these signs, no matter how subtle, stop and ask, are you okay? Your conversation could change a life. For more info on how to identify these signs and start a conversation, visit areyouok.org.au. You know what, I'm gonna spend some time to sit down with a couple of my mates and have a chat. But remember, a dare won't fix it. A conversation could. Ask, are you okay?
Welcome back to the LCO Grand Finals delivered by Menulog. We're here at DreamHack Melbourne about to get into game three of our series of PGG trying to take down the undefeated Chiefs. The first two games, absolute stomps on the side of Chiefs, but there are so many PGG fans in the crowd today who want to see their squad pick up a win and potentially get that reverse sweep. But that being said, that is a monumental task ahead of them. Chiefs might actually go out of split two, having the perfect 27 and zero split for the entire half, second half of the year. And honestly, from what we've been seeing uh, in their previous games, they definitely deserve it. Mm -hmm. You just have to reel this back in if you're PGG. You really can't be thinking, okay, you know, we could get eliminated this game. This could be the game where our finals hopes are done. It's just the best of one. You gotta show up, give it what you've got. Go back to basics and yeah, really start by just thinking, okay, it's only this game. Yeah, like Ezreal, Karthus, mid jungle, it's quirky, but like you said, quirky picks won't win you the game. It does feel like they're a little bit lost in the source right now. Um, especially like making a few too many like sloppy mistakes early about Khan and Rogue getting caught quite a lot. Um, kind of just need to clean it up and find yourselves in the source. Absolutely. Well, we're going to have to find ourselves in this third draft in just a second. So I'd like to take a look at the first two drafts that we've seen so far for the side of PGG and the Chiefs. And I know uh, from what we can see here, really interesting last draft that we got on the side of PGG, finally picking blue side or finally seeing them on blue side rather this weekend. We saw the Karthus pick come out. We saw the Ezreal pick come out. We saw the Nami pick come out. And just unfortunately, not a lot of engage or disengage on that side to deal with the draft of the Chiefs. Fun fact, Oveline, Lucian Nami is currently 0-3 in the playoffs. So it has oh a 0% win rate in split two playoffs. And we probably... Oh. seeing a second time of this duo. However, looking at Chiefs' comp, they have the all in engaged this time around, changing up and switching the identities from game one. They have the Camille and Galio combo where that Trundle was actually able to get a lot of leads in that early game. Yeah, it does feel like the roles are kind of reversed. Chiefs definitely have like the more aggressive team comp, looking to make those picks and make those engages. Um, and PGG, like their draft just like isn't quite there. You know, there's just pieces missing that aren't quite fitting together properly. And I think I want to go back to something, Kitty, you said earlier. It's about the variance that your draft enables you to have in-game, right? I think a lot of PGG drafts have been very linear. They've been very binary in what they want to achieve. And as soon as Chiefs identify that and they put a stop to that, it's really hard for that comp to do anything. So what I want coming into this game is I want, you know, multiple roles being able to engage, multiple champions that have the opportunity to start off fights, just so they're not pigeonholed into having only one way to win fights, only one way to win the game. Absolutely. This Going into this third game, they're down 2-0. PGG need to pull out a win if they want to keep their world's dreams alive. And especially for all of the PGG fans who are in the arena here today. Who wants to see this go to a full five-game series? Who wants to see PGG pick up a win? Not, not just the PGG fans as well, right? I'm sure the Chiefs fans just want, want to see more League of Legends, right? Of we course! P the Chief fans want to see more League of Legends, but also, what Chief fan wouldn't want to see their squad go absolutely undefeated 27-0 into Worlds? Now we do have the side selection ready on the side of PGG, so we could go ahead and take a look. And they picked blue side once again. This is interesting considering that they had so much success on that red side. But like they said, they potentially could still have a tr few tricks up their sleeve on the blue side, Kitty. I feel like if we do have a blue side of PGG, they need to focus on that winning lane. We didn't see much from the jungle of Balkan, which if we bring it back to the order series, Balkan was in bot lane 24-7, putting that Rift Herald down and getting Praetis ahead. However, this game, Balkan's missing in all those lanes. He isn't showing up like his uh, series in Friday. Yeah, like he's played, what, Sejuani and Karthus so far. There aren't really champions that speak Balkan to me. I wanted to see him on something a lot more aggressive and a lot more easier to enable for his laners. What, what, what do you want to see him on for this next game? Scream it out so he can hear you. Ooh, it could be keen for a cheeky Lee Sin. Oh, yeah. cheeky Lee Sin? Could be cool. 
Lee Sin's actually Korean both Lee Sin. out jungler's most played champions in this split, so who knows? All right, well, while we can't exactly do, uh, you know, a prediction or a vote on what Balkan will pick, what we can do is allow everyone who is watching at home to participate in the DARE fan vote to predict who they think is going to win this next game. All you have to do is vote using your channel points. Who do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be PGG? Or will it be the Chiefs closing it out 3-0? That's what our in-house audience seems to think. Let us all know who you think is going to take it at home with your channel points. But that is it for us on the desk. We're going to go ahead and throw it over to our casters, Rusty and Skimmy, for game three. Thank you much there, Ovali, once again. And I mean, I'm just so conflicted right now, Rusty, because a part of me wants that perfect 27 and 0 Cinderella story, but the other part of me is like, this could potentially be the last game of the year. And as much as we all might think it is just a 3-0 at this point, there's going to be so much hope left in the audience. I think everyone knows that Pentanet.gg of all teams have so much gas left in the tank for creativity, for, sure. for strategies, and also just for going back to what works the best for them. Mm -hmm. Where I feel like they went a little bit too hard in game number two with some crazy picks. They didn't go for you know, the bread and butter, Pentanet composition and style, dive bot lane, play Alistar Leona, have a Nidalee Renekton type jungle top lane. Chiefs aren't banning those picks. Yep. And see if you can actually go toe to toe with the best. Because if the Chiefs beat you then, then it's a deserving 3-0. You've thrown things at them, Skimmy, but now you've got to do what works best for you. And the biggest concern for me is the fact that, yes, we've seen some wild and very creative picks come out of Pentanet, but Chiefs are just continuing to play standard. They've never been pressured into a position where they need to reveal something crazy of their own accord. So maybe the most is what we just saw in that game before, right? A return to Galio, but it's a pretty meta champion in that regard. Let's load back into Champ Select for the third time. The potential last game, unless the reverse sweep is on the cards. It's always possible. Never give up hope for Pensinet.gg to get that reverse sweep. The Chiefs have been indomitable so far. They've been unstoppable so far. But if any team can do it, it is the team that you're seeing today. First pick confirmed. It is once again going to be the Lucian, which indicates the Nami Skimmy. But the difference is the Draven and the Aphilios are banned, where last time it was the Zeri. Morgana well, taken away from the uh, table as well. So, not a champion we see too commonly banned. Zeri Yumi, no. But it does just mean that you've got Zeri up Zeri available. Zeri Yumi all day. And would this not be the most poetic ending if it was just to be a Zeri Yumi angle to take you to Worlds? And Chiefs, they, they hit a 3-0 against Order. It was Zeri in every single one of those games, and Raze was an absolute star for them. So no surprises that he'll lock this one down. Not that it is an outright winning lane by yeah. any means. That is the risk that they have to face. But the scaling is unbelievably good. Trundle to follow up as well. You saw how good Arthur was on this Trundle pick. It comes as no surprise. The Vi to go with this Nami Skimmy. That is a lot of single target kill threat right now. And it's very hard for Zeri to survive that one. Certainly is, but you've now got a clear beacon of hope. We are diving on into, no matter what you have, pretty much uh, akin to the Camille action we saw last game, right? The Assault and Battery, that is your kill target. That's what we're going for. We've got the damage for it. But the response from the Chiefs, as you already highlighted, the fact that Arthur gets his hands on that Trundle one more time. He's just so, so good. And Swain comes back into possession here for Tally, who has just been an absolute weapon with it. Certainly a comfort zone for Tally. Does love the Swain pick, has done exceptionally well on it. It's, it's not really worth touting Chief's stats because they're undefeated on everything. Uh, so it's 100% win rate. Still no Yumi though, right? Which means that Lulu Yumi are going to be the presumed bans here. So what does the Zeri go with? And knowing Aladoric, why is it just going to be a Nautilus or a Rakan angle? And he's just going to go for the engage instead. Yeah, we have seen a handful of different options, right? You'd assume that Yumi is going to be the next ban away from Pentanet's side. If it wasn't to be the Rakan, then Renata has been another option that we've seen globally paired with this Zeri to make sure that it can just 1v9. The Chiefs are going to look to try and continue to make Yuri's life a bit of a living hell. Four bands towards him. Confirmed now by the Ari and the Talia. And no, they leave the Yumi up. I guess they want the matchup. I mean, it's the obvious choice here, right? Zeri Yumi is just that good. We spoke about what Aladoric can do and where he may not go for the Yumi. Oh! It's a signature pick instead, it is the Rakan. I'm quietly cheering because there's no Yumi. Actually, I'm doing it loudly. Both of these support players, Rakan has been their most played, but we've seen Aladoric make montages time and time again, really showcasing that supports can carry. 
What do Pentanet go for? It's been such a long time since we've seen Winter on Rumble, but he's locked Ooh. it in. There is a world where this goes mid as well, potentially. We'll see whether Rumble chooses to be put. Winter are very good with the pick. Certainly safe in his hands. Last champion remaining for them. One more flexible champion, potentially. Oh. Somewhat slept on in this draft already is that Azir. They're going to lock that one in. Massive scaling option for them now. Very much needed. High DPS composition. And I'm still no less the wiser as to where these uh, champions may be going for Pentanet. Azir and Rumble still incredibly flexible in their ability to play towards those solar lanes. The Chiefs going to look to try and round out their composition with a Renekton. They've locked it in. They've answered a the gauntlet. If you want to fight fire with fire, then we're certainly game for that. Okay, Renekton, fifth pick here for the Chiefs. They give themselves a bit more frontline, and that really is the entirety of their composition, right? A safer space to be, perhaps. You can get rid of some Scrap Shields, you can get rid of some Azir Shields, Vi as well. Uh, but really, I don't think you're picking this Renekton for his ability to shield cut. I think you are just picking it because it doesn't lose hard. It has sustain, and Rumble wants to do damage over time, and you might be able to persevere through that one. Also very easy to go for some magic resistance in this game, unless Belkan gets ahead. I think Belkan definitely the X factor in this one. All eyes go towards Pentanet.gg's jungler. Because you know Arthur's going to invade. You know he's going to keep him down if he can. He certainly is. And it's obviously worthwhile mentioning the fact that uh, whilst Vi has uh, risen to prominence in recent weeks, uh, we have seen outplays, right, where you flash, you dash, and suddenly the assault on battery is taking you into absolute Narnia. You don't know where you are, surrounded by five members, and you're going into a team fight in a 4v5. What do we reckon here, Rusty, though? Is this the draft from Pentant to bring them back? I don't have 100% confidence in them. However, I do think that their draft has good tools, has good damage. The Lucia Nami, I think they corrected their bans this time around. The Rumble pick for Winter has been successful in the past. And Belkan can be hyper-aggressive with his option Yuri. An expert of defusal is what I would say. As is Tally, I think the Azir and the Swain are both designed to do exactly that. That's where the junglers come into play, mid-jungle duos. And can Lucian Nami get ahead this time around? Because this is not a Zeri Yumi. This is Zeri Rakan. And Yumi was up and available, but he decided against it. He said one last time to showcase what Rakan can do. He's dazzled us with performances at home, but he wants to play it on stage. Let's load back into the Rift one more time. Game number three. And a chance to see where Chiefs now on match point, if they can close it out here. Potentially the last game of this best of five if the Chiefs continue their winning form. Here's Pensanet.gg, backs against the wall, they need to step up to the plate. First and foremost, Winter are always running Ignite on his rumble. Fans getting right up for this one, rightfully so. Got to rally behind the boys if you want to see them success, succeed in this game. Might be a quiet start to this one, but there's certainly an opportunity for explosive plays through both jungle champions. Arthur loves a good invade. Belkan loves a good fight. Let's see if any of those fights do take place. Vision of paramount importance right now. They're going to try and keep an eye as to where anybody may be. If anybody's trying to be a little bit cheeky. Ultimately, not to be the case. A leashless start for both these junglers. Off we go. And what's on your screen is really, I would say, the bigger point of difference. Zeri doesn't have the strongest laning phase. Can be powerful at level one, like you're seeing. Just chips away at your health and is annoying. Alidoric, the real difference maker in this, has started the Q instead. So throwing those feathers out for health. Not interested in using that W. Really, really volatile 2v2 if the Lucian and Nami get a chance to go forwards and aggress upon you. It's so hard to look away from that lane because at a moment's notice, at a drop of a hat, things could change. Both junglers passing opposite sides of the map as well. Here's Skimmy Vi towards bottom, Bundle towards top. Makes sense as well. You want that first gank, that first uh, peek in to really matter, to snowball this lane advantage. We did see how strong the Lucian became in the latter half of that uh, game too. By that point, it was a uphill battle, to say the least. I mean, really, where are we looking to try and find that first advantage? Because I'd imagine this is going to be Bal Khan saying, if you're not going to invade me, I'll invade you. Well, he certainly is looking for a play right now. Depends on timing here. Arthur isn't going to smite the red buff. Bal Khan goes undetected. Topoon is already half HP. This is 100% a gank angle. 
certainly is. Slice and dice. He needs to find a target to go on towards right now. Out comes the charge. He's burnt the flash early. Slice, dice. It doesn't matter. That's first blood for Pentanet. And the boys are on very early here for Pentanet.gg. First blood into the hands of Winterer as well. The perfect start for the team desperate for a comeback. Instant teleport back here from Tapoon. Going to catch entirety of that wave. Arthur wasn't going to get invaded on on his own red buff, but Balkan had other ideas in mind. First gank, level three. It's absolutely huge, as is that trade and bot side. Really good damage on Aladoric. Has still got an extra potion there, so relatively healthy when all is said and done. This mid lane matchup as well, we haven't really had a chance to check in with this. It's mostly about the claw play from Itali. He's able to lock down the Azir, then it's a bit easier to actually trade and bully him out. Otherwise, Yuri will just summon those Sand Soldiers and keep you at bay relentlessly. Would love to see the Leandri's build come out from Tally this game as well, as opposed to the Imperial Mandate. The bulk of your damage from an AP source would be coming from the Swain. Obviously, once the Demonic Ascension is up and active, perhaps if you switch into that Ghost with that Unsealed Spellbook as well, how do they handle you? Trundle top lane right now. Balkan, while he's making moves towards the bot side of the map, Trundle could also consider a gank in top lane. There is a flash on Winstra. Nice bubble. Great bubble. Great trade. Huge winning Balkan's trade there for Pentanet. Here. Balkan, he's on for a dive. They just need to he crash that wave. Flash. He's dashing past. Ooh. Instant flash from Raze. Taking no chances. Yeah, Balkan baits out the flash. Doesn't go for the flash Q himself. Really nice summoner spell usage, and you're seeing the difference that is made when the Aphilios is not picked by the Chiefs. And we're seeing a tangible gold advantage four minutes in. Look at the wave that is being missed here, Skibby. The Chiefs are losing so much. It was already a 10 CS advantage. That's going to balloon even further right now. Taddy's going to try and do whatever he can with that Demon Eye from mid to bot, but it's just not going to be enough. That's so much XP and gold lost. I mean, it's a free reset as well for Praetor, for Rogue, and for Belkan. Arthur didn't get a chance to make any plays on the top side of the map. He has path instead back towards bot. Drake is up and available five minutes in. He's going to have a look mid lane. We're on. Looking for Yuri. He's got his flash. He can just dash away. Nothing really doing for the meantime. Biding their time. The claw simply misses there, unfortunately, for the Chiefs, but that's what it comes down to. Yuri, no cleanse, does make him a very viable target. But not a target that they can find purchase on. There's Winterer. Cooking some croc. Boots of swiftness as well. My guy wants to run fast. Great. Sidestep there from Raze on the Acro Prison. Oh, Yuri. Yuri's in. Empress Divide goes into Arthur. He wants none of it. He's been denied the Blast Cone. He had the flash to run away. I feel like Yuri just went for this crazy play where he was going to go over the wall towards Bot to ult them into the Lucian Nami. Yes. Without knowing, he just dashed into Arthur, who was waiting there. Could not have known that was going to happen, so had to use the ultimate to disengage and ends up using his flash with it. Chiefs are on bottom. We're on point. Instant flash away from Rogue. Anadoric knocks him up with a grand entrance. Great bubble to disengage away. It's a 3v2, but Pentanet are fighting back. Mixed messages here from Chiefs as well with their engaged targets. Not actually going on the same person together. Praetor's able to walk his way out. Both summoners still intact, but the Nami has no flash. That is a solid five minutes of a very killable fish. As we crest over to level six as well, Skimmy. Even more volatility starts to present itself. More stacks there for Tally. More HP, more damage. More sustainability to be an absolute terror once evolved with the ultimate. The, order is given. the game coming to a bit of a stand still at this one. We've only had that first blood, but still hasn't really changed the tune much for Tapoon. He still managed to find himself a of a big CS lead. Tally, however, is farming up a tree and has a huge XP advantage. Yeah, a lot of that being that Yuri tried to make the play bottom. You can see the pressure that an Azir consistently has. It's one of the things that makes Azir such a nasty champion to contend with. You want to hit a minion, he's going to hit you every single time. But my man's has got some fruit. He'll be all right. Got the vitamins. Six. That's the five a day.
level six advantage. A small window in which PGG can look to fight elsewhere. They're roaming up towards mid lane. That falls Yuri up top side to try and protect them as well. No need. Oh, he found Tally. There's the Empress Divide. It is a phenomenal roam, and Rogue picks up an assist. And it is just that simple. The question remains: Will Chiefs do the Drake now that their mid laner is dead with no teleport? Praetith may collapse. You will see Belkan make his way through mid right now. And so they're looking to contest this. Can we go for a fight right now? The coming is out. Up is down. Guardian burnt. Shielding to protect. Tally alive, topping on his way. No teleport from Windsor up. Pentanet, they have to feel like they're on a clock here. They have to be so careful. Tapoon, they're all going to pile drive on top of him. 1v4, Assault and Battery. Tapoon flashing, praying, dreaming. Oh, they're, on the they're on the red carpet. They're burning. He failed flash. Arthur failed to flash across the wall. And when you're burning like that, it's just too easy. The winter just cooks them alive. Perfect rumble ultimate out of the top laner of Pentanet. Exactly the fight that they're after. And they have solidified a 2,000 gold lead nine minutes in. And you're starting to feel the hope that exists. They've gone back to basics. They've fixed their errors. And now they're getting skirmishes where it feels like just true, authentic Pensanet.gg. You see how Tally dies here. Straightforward sweep. The rest of the fight that follows through. Fantastic decision to go all in on Top Oon because he will just be a nuisance on the flank. And the Rumble is closer to the Renekton than the rest of the Chiefs roster. They go hard. They try to get everyone dead immediately. But Ray's stuck on top of the red carpet. And Arthur just can't find that flash. What a perfect roam. A tp rumble that rocked on down bot side and, uh, well, just chucked Chiefs on the barbie. 3-0, big bounty. And it's only going to get worse as this game goes on. That cooldown reduction becomes imperative. Equalizer permanently being utilized, zoning off key quadrants. Break still up. The fight was around the objective. It never actually ended up being taken at all. Both teams forced to disengage. Aladoric. Nice disengage away. And just jump to a defensively positioned Zeri. Here comes off for now, so it will be a 3v3. Winter once again on the great pilgrimage from top lane into mid. Not unleashed teleport for top in. TP is available, but the fact that it is not unleashed means he has to go to mid or bottom if they were to contest this one. And it seems like the Chiefs have resolved to say we are not. It is not worth it. Winter has roamed down here. They've earned the Drake. And not just a 2,000 gold lead anymore, but some objectives to follow. Bit of extra tankiness. Great start. We've seen Penton in a position like this before. Vision only now being denied the play. Will fizzle out. They've got themselves that 2k gold lead. But and can they build upon it? Ooh. They know that Arthur was in the area. I don't think they're afraid of a 3v3. Belkan is very large. If you compare the jungle items right now, a completed item on Belkan compared to just the sheen, Arthur does not want to engage. Certainly a Kempunk Chainsword is going to help out in those 1v1 jewels. Nice cheap item spike despite the buff to make it a little bit uh, harder to achieve. Herald to be summoned immediately for this bottom lane. Aladoric been pushed away. Belkan no Q for one second. It is up now. He turns around. He's on towards Aladoric, but it's a Rakan. He can just disengage away. He's jumped across. Assault and Battery looking to try and knock them up as much as they can. Tidal Wave is there. Lightning Crash comes out. Raidith has removed Aladoric. Now teleports. they've got to run away. But in they go. There's the blast. Oh, no, Yuri. Yuri. He can jump back. It's an Azir. They're gone. Thieves in the night. They get out. Winter will clear mid-wave as well. Turret plates are bound. They get the picks. They get the kills. Everything used by the Chiefs as well. And the stage is well and truly set for the beginning of a potential comeback. 4,000 gold, 12 minutes in is very large. Jelly's got a long walk. Oh, she certainly does. She's got a nightclub. on. Got the boots on. Getting that cardio workout in. She's quick. Keep up. All right, I mean, is it going to get a charge? They're all escorting it, but she's actually too fast for Benson to keep up with. Come on, Shelly. Now I'm on, Shelly. Do what you can. You're down to half. In they go. Creative says, get back. 
That's our Shelly. That's our kill. That's our play. Heal used. Hands off our Heralds. Give me the charge. It could well happen. And the longest journey that a Rift Herald could possibly take will confirm. Unless Arthur gets a smite and a chomp off. Will it be denied? We're all invested. Ultra Shock Laser. They need a little bit more damage. It goes. That's more turret plates. That's more money. Oh, we were all so invested in that journey, weren't we? <laughs> the game just stopped still for a second. I mean, Pentadet also acknowledged that that was their only goal there. So it really did just become about making sure the Herald charges. Yuri might snipe this one away. Oh, and go in. Spoon able to steal that one away. And then return to an incredibly fed rumble in the top lane. I think Winterer wants level 11. He's so large right now with the Night Harvester completed. And this oh. bot lane duo, they might find themselves raised if a bubble connects. Oh, Raze! He's just gone! Don't even need the bubble. The tidal wave will suffice. Another kill goes the way of PGG Chiefs. They're going to rally around the bot lane tower and try and defend it. They will succeed, but still a 2-0-1 Lucian and another Herald to be secured. Might be that we get a second epic adventure. What a game three turnaround. Huge turnaround. This is what you want to see. We really do want a little bit of this and a little bit of that to really spice up the drama of a grand final. Soon, 2K will become 5K in favor of Pentanet. And you've got incredibly strong individuals from top to bottom. That's the thing, right? There's no one that's weak. There is no weak point for the Chiefs to prod at, to poke at. Cheap items from Belkan, straight into tanky build as well. He's just going to be the engage. He's looking for Zeri. He's hunting to keep Rays down. Winterer, it's that level 11 mark. If Topun used an E on the wave to one hit it, he might have gone. Poon just farming up a treat so close to that blade of the Rune King. Nice item spike for the Renekton to continue to be aggressive in these early stages. Herald not needed here. They're actually trying to stay out of vision to secure this one. My question is, do they commit to the bot lane? Because you could summon Herald to look for a second turret. Swain going to use the W, not going to find anybody. But a ward will spot them as they walk in the river. That is only well, but that's the first turret. Couples quite nicely with them having already achieved that first dragon. Second now spawning. Winter are here, top boon, no teleport. There's no way the Chiefs want to contest this one. From the looks of it, second Drake completely free into the hands of PGG. Exactly the start that they need. They have the threat of a win condition. They have the Drake soul to play for. And they've got an infernal soul at that. Even the RNG gods are on their side in game three. They really are. A bigger map to play around. A bigger template for Yuri to try and have those moves like Jagger to dash on through and find those angles. They've hit those item spikes just a fraction quicker. They've got the map control, they've claimed the turrets, they'll summon more. This time, Shelly, a little bit closer. That's a guarantee. Recalling on Vision here, they're not going to commit themselves to the charge. They're not going to look for the full turret. Arthur is going to stop Praetith and just annoy him a little bit. The recall is inevitable either way. What do we play for from here? Because this is a big point of downtime. Between objectives, multiple minutes. It becomes a game of picks. And in that environment, the composition of Pensinet prospers. But Chiefs want that time. They want the Zeri to scale. They want Rays to have the 1v9 angle. But he's been kept down. Tell me yes for the meantime. The sight to see. Top Those harpoons are starting to hurt as well. Blade of the Ruin King also being purchased by this Renekton. So not the Black Cleaver tech is going much more for the sustain, a bit more lane strength. Yeah. Has got the capacity to 1v1 this rumble if he gets the jump and has the rage ready. Easier said than done though. Second turret though for Pentanet. Roaming as a pack. Laying waste to anything in their sights. And it may just be systematic League of Legends from top, or rather from bot to mid, all the way to top side. 
to they reunite with their very fed rumble. You're 3-0 now, but let's make that three turrets instead. They'll be seeing the entire way that they walk up there. The Lucian is instead going to go back mid. Prater. Going to be a vacuum for some minions real quick. No need to force the play. You're 6,000, 5,000 now. Gold up. You're in the driver's seat. The composition is devastating when it finds the opportunity. Praetith is a sad bee for no apparent reason. It happens. Might need a coffee. I think Actually, maybe that is. Maybe that's the issue. We started an hour early. He didn't get his three coffees. We, we did get a chance, right? He had to have a very fixed schedule as to when those coffees came out. No doubt had the Fruit Loops, though. <laughs> that's always the most important part. Fruit Loops on stage in a sippy cup or something? Sure. Chopsticks, maybe? League gamers do unironically need sippy cups. <laughs> what a perfect start here for Pentanet. If this is to be the game that ends that perfect 24 0 streak, well, I'm all for it, quite honestly, Rusty. 6k gold, map pressure from everywhere you look. Yuri just wants to complete the final piece of that puzzle and remove every single outer. Yeah, really nicely timed as well here by Penson. If they're able to get some vision around Baron, reset towards the Drake, play towards the Infernal Soul, that's what they'll have their sights set on. Khan just being a threat, never really looking, because we know that his team isn't nearby. The Chiefs do not know that. Probably entire it seems to stay alive here, however, as Tally comes back to defend it. Keep in mind that they don't both have teleports at the present moment. Tally has the Ghost. I don't know if he's able to cycle through that one for the teleport to be back. Yeah, Yuri does have that TP, which is why he's sitting in a side lane. Would love to see that ghost be utilized for this next Drake fight. Give you the most potential uptime on that ultimate to really wreak havoc and try and turn this game around. It's slowly getting out of control. But the first time we see it's Predator at the top of the table. Really is in a league of his own right now. A healthy 1k margin over... Oh, his own teammates, really. And I don't want to overstep Skibby, but Praetith is always one of those ADCs that has the potential for pentakills, has the potential to team fight like an absolute monster. There's a lot of people in the Chiefs that are a threat. Rogue in big trouble. He certainly is. Great pillar. Instant flash. There's the claw. Track them back. Take some damage and flash away in response. Aladoric. The cutting is there. Aladoric assault and battery. There's the kill. Lightning crash. Bring it down. Telly goes gold and flaps his wings and burns Look from at Yuri. afar. Yuri! He's knocked them all back. He's in his stop the There's the equalizer. And Penton are wiping the floor with them. They've lost Balkan, but it's now just Ray's. Ray. It's Ray's. He's flashing. He's breaking. Just out of range. Ray's just out of range. Auto. Oh my God. Can he do it? No. He cannot do it. Ray's tries his absolute heart out, but cannot stop Pentanet from winning this fight, getting the Drake as well. Infernal Soul Point, there's the threaten for the next four Drakes if Chiefs even get a chance at it. Watch this one more time. Absolutely insane that Rogue somehow accidentally cancels the Rakan engage that enables him to stay alive. And then Vi comes through, just wallops him. Winsera doesn't have the equalizer at the start of this fight, so they choose to play slow. Tally zones them really nicely, but then Yuri goes in, he finds his moment. And this whole team fight can be summed up in one word, and that is stopwatch. The difference between stopwatch usages is really clutch. And poor Ray's, he really does give it his all. Good little flash there to get out of vision. But Yuri has the shield from his sand soldiers and can quite simply... <laughs> let's pretend the flash never happened. It was clean otherwise. He, so clean, he auto-attacked. <laughs> and he got the kill. I had to hold my breath though for a second. Ever so close was Raze to salvaging that team fight just at a range, even with the lethal tempo active. Raze has done it before. He, oh, he certainly Zeri. has. We've even seen it from Hooper when he played Zeri in a situation where he was up against the wall. It's a champion equipped to do special things. And I like what we're seeing, Skimmy. This game's starting to come down to ADC's Prater. Prater jumped in. That's crazy. What are you doing? Mark in mid lane. Name a better duo. Chiefs will answer back, you look so good, but what was that? I have no idea what he was looking for. Perhaps just tries to assassinate Raze, but the Chiefs are there, the reinforcements are around, and now it is all about Yuri and Winsor, no equalizer. 
The Azir has ult, but no flash. Can they do anything to stop this Baron? Alodoric, no ultimate charge. They're trying Popoon. to zap them down. Tapoon is low. Has the ult, has the Dominus charge away. In we go. The oh, zero. Big damage. Yuri. Yuri. What am I seeing? Yuri really wants it. Yuri goes absolutely crazy, says, don't worry about it, Praetith, I've got you covered. Baron, not going to be confirmed. The Azir more. is hunting. The outer turret will be happening. And for the first time in this game, you saw Chiefs potentially with a winning moment. And for the first time ever, it's immediately dissuaded by their opponents. Yuri and Winter have never won a title in their career, but they are playing out of their mind to bring back the dream, the reverse sweep into an undefeated Chiefs. A moment of magic brings them back into this one. It's such a tough skirmish to take. Top in has to ult and dash away, and this is where it gets dicey. Tally, honestly, with a fantastic quarter lockdown, both of them. But the reality is, Yuri presses his ult, locks them all into a small corridor, and just hits them with his sand soldiers relentlessly. Another stage game and another helping hand from the Baron itself. Spinning damage, acting on this occasion as a Pentanet player. And I'm sure Praetor, more so than anyone, breathes a big sigh of relief. Tried to be the hero, tried to make a play in the mid lane. Does have the Infinity Edge now, though. Hero or not, this Lucian now has the three items required to carry a team fight. The double tap with Anami E on top. Tie Caller bonus damage with Imperial and Electrocute is incredibly high. There's always going to be the Zeri effect. There is always going to be Rays on Zeri as well. Team fight legend. But look at this Azir. Terrifying. Three items really starting to come on through for the majority of these individuals. You mentioned it before, the better stopwatch usage may just win. Well, Zonius is up and available for both these mid laners. Stopwatch is still there to be utilized by Balkan as well. Perhaps if the ultimate's a little bit too deep, he can buy some crucial seconds. But with this Baron buff, they are laying siege. 1,000 gold can become 2,000 gold. They start to really shrink the map for the Chiefs. Turrets start to drop, the map starts to open, the gold lead stretches to 11, 10,000. It requires something special from the Chiefs to stay in this game. This is the first time Chiefs have ever, this entire split, been behind. They've never been down this much. Never been behind this gold level. I mean, 10k. If you're not winning as Pentanet now, I don't think you win ever. The perfect split, the perfect season being threatened here by PGG. Drake to spawn in 20 seconds. It's an infernal soul. Balkan. We're on. One minute. Oh, for dead! Equalizer goes out, tied away to follow, Aladog just dashes away, Ultra Shock Laser tries to keep tabs as to where Pentanet are, but Arthur just got stuck. And they're going to choose to clip Midwave as well, they want to really keep the Chiefs at bay, keep them busy, utilize what's left of that Baron buff. Top in on a wide flank has been seen, he's now the target. Raiden! Rakan goes out, Tally shield there from the Rakan. Yuri and Winter is zoning oh. as much as they can, Tally's just gone! He's going to come out of that statue and just calm down! Here we go for more. Anatoric running for the hills. Rays his bot lane duo. Says we can't do much to salvage this one. And Tapoon is trying to proxy a bot wave. Tapoon's joining PGG in this game at the moment. He's going to see if he can race to the enemy Nexus before they get him. He wants to deny, but he's going to get tagged. He's too tanky. He's got a chem tank build. And the soul is secured. The infernal soul, not just Tapoon's life. Goes the way of PGG. What a performance, what a turnaround. Giving hope to all Oceanic fans that they can take it to the Chiefs. Well, if you've only just tuned in now, if you've only just joined us here at Margaret Court Arena, you've tuned in for a phenomenal time. A potential breaking of the script of what has been a phenomenal split two here in the LCO. Pentanet in a game three, down 0-2. Are up by 11,000 gold. They have a Baron buff, but well, they had it just before. They've got four back-to-back -back Drakes, and it is an infernal soul at that. And I think for me, the big thing that they want to wait upon now is they have advantage. They can body Chiefs out. And if Chiefs play super passively, you've got the top lane in a turret, and then you've got the Baron in three minutes. And Baron is your tool 
to try and end this game. Other than the Azir, fairly low range composition and the Chiefs do have decent wave clear. You want to see a perfect closeout from a fantastic start to this game. You want to see this lead turn into something special here from Pensanet.gg. All eyes towards the top side. There is not a mid lane wave to play around. Bop, forget about it. We're all in on this push. Baron ages away, but another turret falls on Dan. That's six to one now. Winter are level 16 as well. Equalizer with the Infernal Soul is unbelievably powerful. The initial damage that it deals up front now, not just the damage over time. Winter can solo win a team fight, let alone the strength of the rest of this squad. Four items starting to come across for everybody. Ray's farming the best that he possibly can. Topin honestly farming well also. But is it enough? It's going to be a race to see in that post-game graphic just who did the most damage between this Rumble and this Azir. Okay. Dark Seal becomes a Magia's 10 stacks there already. He's already hitting like a truck. Okay. Looking at Topu, not finding him. Aladoric, the rest of the Chiefs waiting in the wings. Nothing to happen just yet. We've got plenty of time. Baron up soon. Disregard the timer, it is under a minute. The Chiefs in an unfamiliar territory. They have to show respect. Catching these waves. They have to face check. The Zeri W, fantastic. The laser finds them, but they still have to face check if they want to stop this Baron from going down. And this Baron could well help end the game for Pensanet. Well, here we go. It's not going to be a 50-50 flip just yet. Pensanet are firmly in the driving seat. They've got themselves a 12k gold lead. Chiefs, they've done special things before, but can they pull a rabbit out of the hat this time? The Baron is going to reset. Pensanet are on the hunt. Oh, Tally. my God! He's found the flash! Can he still get the ultimate? He's got a target of mine. Oh, the, the race is dead! He's burning so much! But he's surviving for the meantime, and Tally's keeping all five members occupied! But that was a phenomenal bubble by Rogue. Someone has to die. Rogue finds the bubble. They get what they're after. Baron buff still back on the cards. No tally. Topoon does have teleport, but he's staying in the area. Oh! It's a flash quickness charm. In we go again. Balkan tries to answer back. And well, I mean, they've tried. They're going to get Baron here at this point, surely. It'd require a miracle. Arthur does have flash and smite if what? anyone's going to save the day. Has what, to be this trundle now. Would he dare do it? Would he dare flash on in? He's getting zoned away by the sand soldiers. It's gone. Pins and they get the second oh, Baron Yuri. of this game. Yuri, what are you doing? Yuri, a bit more. you are godlike. Get some spare change on the side. Recall going to be stopped from Yuri, but it makes absolutely no difference. 14,000 gold in the lead. 18 to 4 is the kill score. There is no way Pins and lose this game at this point. They just need to cross their T's, dot their I's and get us to a game four. This is the final we want. This is the flashback. That an insane five game banger. But look at the start. It's a messy little skirmish, but ultimately you see how much damage the equalizer does from Winter up from such a long range. Infernal Soul, it lands. Tally just gets hit by the bubble. Because we're back to life. Playing one lane primarily here, it seems like. They should be able to use the Equalizer basically off cooldown at this point if they're looking to Siege. The threat that it has is so large. The damage that it does, insurmountable, and there's no sustain from the Chiefs to survive through it. Any bit of CC, and the Chiefs member will not survive. We heard from interviews early on in the split that Rogue have been putting in a lot of time to get himself up to speed with these Enchanters. This Nami has been the difference in this game for E. Sieging bottom as well at the same time as mid. Threatening two places at once, drawing the Chiefs back and forth. Arthur threatening, but he needs Aladoric. If anyone's going to engage, it has to be this Rakan. And Azir has a turret. Yumi was left up and available for the perfect partnership. Opted for the Rakan, his most popular, his most famous champion. Hasn't found the same heights today. Well, the ghosts, that'd be really... Oh, they're going. We're on. We're fighting underneath a sun disc. We're looking for it. 
Everybody becomes a statue. Oh my god! The equalizer is just too much, Rusty. Prater, he doesn't care. The flash Winter is over. says hello. Winter's trying to burn him with the flamethrower raise. He's going to turn into a statue for a second with a stoppage. Balcon comes in, gives him the left, right, good night. And Pentanet.gg will not go silently into the night. It will not be a 3 0 series. They've got a point to make. The perfect split, well, not anymore. That's an ace. And as PGG saying, we are going to a game four. The perfect split in shambles. I would say the unexpected result as well, given that we started 2-0. But the mental, the resolve, PGG, they refuse to lose. They refuse to go out without a win. Phenomenal stuff. Simply phenomenal stuff. It's all I wanted. A 3-0, the highlight of that would have been phenomenal. It would have been fantastic to hear that one to bring us overseas, but this is what you want. The crowd are excited. The players back to the backstage they go, get themselves prepped and ready. Another 10, 15 minutes, a chance to reflect on what worked so well, what hasn't so far in this series, and what is that next way to try and bring this to a tight 2-2 affair? And the crazy thing is, even if you're a Chiefs fan, you're probably also an Australian that's a fan of underdogs. And what a conflicting <laughs> game that must be for you. Chiefs still at match point, but that game from Pensanet.gg shows what they're capable of, shows the potential that is there, and sets the stage for a fantastic next two games. And it certainly does, and I can't wait to see how this series continues to play out. But for the meantime, it's back to Ovali and the gang. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, the Chiefs getting an undefeated run. PGG says, hell no, and picks up their first win of the series. We're going to game four. No way for a 3-0 now. PGG is not losing with a 3-0 going out without a fight, and that game definitely proved it. Yuri refuses to lose, and Wintora with his quirky picks, might I add, will bring them to a game four. Quirky picks, but they really worked out for him. That rumble was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing, and might I add, it was a blind rumble where it was countered by the Renekton. I would say countered, but it didn't actually have that effect. I want to go to Max right now because what? there were some rumblings backstage yeah. about that Renekton counter. It's, it's the second Renekton R5 pick we've seen. And I mean, taking a look at his build, you could sort of gauge just how well it's gone. He ended up going with Fork into Chemtank into Force of Nature, just trying to run in fast to get the game done with and move on to the next one. <laughs> um, but really, this PGG is just night and day from the first two games. I mean, Yuri absolutely switched it on. Winter as well. Look at this Rumble Ultimate, just absolutely tearing up this team fight. And we said it, get Belkan on something he can fight with, get Belkan on something he can make plays with early, and PGG look really good. Yeah, they're just like, definitely, they found their page, and they're all on the same page. They're just team fighting so well. Like, they're like hanging in and out, like in sync. It's just so awesome to watch. They're treating Chiefs like a jungle camp. It's like juggling aggro. In and might I add, this is Yuri's playground. Hello, his Azir coming in with that 1v9 playstyle where he was able to turn those Baron fights around and he was the engage for some of these fights. We need a round of applause for Yuri. Hello, guys. <laughs> Yuri using the soldiers on the rift like the PGG fans in the arena. Just so much support and damage coming off for them and the team. And look at the pop off there. This is exactly what PGG needed in order to raise that morale, especially going into this third game. Yeah, Yuri's so good on the Azir. Honestly, he even turned Telly into a Sand Soldier like halfway through the game because he was just getting caught left <laughs> and right. Like, honestly, that guy is unreal. Oh, <laughs> and here we could see that Baron fight. We saw so many fights around the objectives that just did not go the way of the Chiefs just because look how much Yuri. damage Yuri is popping off with. It's not just that Yuri was playing exceptionally well on this Azir. It is also a really good champion into the Chiefs comp. We have the Renekton that wants to go forward. We have the Trundle that wants to be on your face. And we have Alidoric on his signature Rakan where it wasn't able to find those angles that he would have wanted in those regular splits. And can I just say, opting for blue side and not first picking Zeri is a very, very bold strategy. Lucian Nami, we were talking about it before, hasn't been doing too well in the playoffs, right? So to come out, first pick Lucian, say, you know what, we're confident, let's do it. And look at that damage, it speaks for itself. Oh my gosh, Yuri with the 30k, with the 30k going into game three, PGG knew that they needed to show up for this game to keep themselves in this. Look yeah, at the Renekton damage. <laughs> he, did, he did 100 <laughs> more damage than Rakan. 
You really don't like this Renekton pick. I do. What <laughs> happens? What happens if Chiefs pick Renekton in the next game? And it works? No, I just mean what oh, if they if pick they it? Pick How are you going to feel about it? Then we're going to game five. We we're going to game five, five for, sure. for sure. I love the confidence behind that. Yeah, maybe they just need to figure out what it is that it's going to work. Something really interesting in the ban phase is actually we see the Morgana coming out of PGG. They've learned their mistakes up against Order from their previous series where we actually saw PGG blind the Vi. However, Order actually countered it with a Morgana jungle. So that was a really interesting ban coming out of that team. Yeah, and overall, PGG just doing a really good job of building up those early leads and just holding that for so long, you know, not giving Chiefs any way back into the game, ramping up the pressure, and ultimately Chiefs just unable to find any way back into the game. Absolutely. I did kind of want to jump back a little bit to your point of first picking, I think it was Lucian rather than that Zeri, giving Ray's a champion that he is yeah. oh so familiar with and has had incredibly uh, phenomenal performances with. Uh, and I think even backstage, we were all thinking, what are you doing? But it seemed to have worked out for them. And it wasn't even just a Zeri, right? Yumi was open too. We saw Rakan opt, we saw Aladoric rather, opt for the Rakan. But getting Zeri, Trundle, and Yumi on blue side, we thought that was a big red flag. But I guess it's just PGG having confidence and having prepped for this, right? They know what Chiefs are going to pick and they're happy playing it. Yeah, the key was definitely Balkan on the Vi because you just have that one button easy engage that they do so well on, you know? Just pop that Vi onto Raze. What's he going to do? He's got an equalizer on him, he's getting burnt alive just has no chance to actually put out any DPS. And what I'm wondering is that they actually did save that top lane matchup for the counter pick with that red side buff. However, we saw the Renekton into the blind rumble and it didn't actually do so well. So I'm wondering, can is Chiefs gonna struggle with this rumble pick where it's to the point that they need, need to ban it for the next game? Yeah, we're gonna have to find out if that rumble pick warrants getting banned out in the next draft. But before we do that, we have to take a quick break to make sure that our players get to take that deep breath in and out to prepare for game number four. Don't go anywhere because we've got that coming up next. Oh, well, the ghosts. That'd be really... Oh, they're going. We're on. We're fighting underneath the sun this. We're looking for it. Everybody becomes a statue. Oh, my God. Hey, look. Menu bomb. I'm Tibbers, and I'm having a good time. Ha, ha, ha. Fooled you all. It's me. It's actually Mac. But look, here's a Tibbers for you guys to just relax with. Head to visitmelbourne.com to discover more.
Welcome back to the LCO Grand Finals delivered by Menulog here at DreamHack Melbourne where we just saw Pentanet GG break the undefeated Chiefs and take us into game four in this best of five series. Now everyone on the couch, the question on top of everyone's mind is, now that the Chiefs have finally taken their first L, is this going to haunt them and affect future performance? Now here's the thing, it can either go two ways. Either they drop the first game and they no longer have to meet they don't they no longer have to meet those the expectations. Stress the stress is gone. Or they start going downhill and this mental boom might snowball into something else. It potentially could, and I know from a player's perspective, what would be weighing on you? Well, I've been reverse search before, um, <sighs> and it always is that fear that grows, I guess grows as the series goes on, and it sort of starts to be like, okay, well, one small thing goes bad in a game, how does that actually blow out of proportion? And you start to think, okay, well, what does this have consequences in terms of the series as a whole, right? So I think it's gonna be really important that they all pull together and realize it's just a game. You know, um, we've still got two more chances to take this series. And we looked really damn good in the first two games. I yeah. just want to jump in for a second. It's not just a game, okay? It's League <laughs> it's, of Legends, yeah, and it's, it's the LCO life. Grand Finals. That's Correct true. yourself, sir. Sorry. Just joking, but about <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel like with the Chiefs, right, obviously they've had the unbeaten split, but now that they've lost the game, it's like, what now? Because as soon as something, yeah, like you said, if something goes wrong in the game, it's like, oh shit, we've already lost one game. What if we lose another one? And then it's just like, it's like a snowball effect, right? Snowball effect of the mental. And one thing that I do want to take a look at again are the drafts from the first three games that we got to see because we've been seeing a lot of variance uh, between the three. Seeing us, you know, jump all over from blue to red side again and wondering what that future pick is going to be as well. But one of the most interesting picks that we got from the last game was that rumble. And so the question again that we're thinking about is, is that rumble going to warrant a rumble ban on the side of Chiefs? The thing is about PGG Winter is that he has so many secret picks up his sleeve. It's quite impossible to ban out his champion pool. He has the zillion top. I'm not trying to like tell Chiefs what they they <laughs> might potentially pick. Hey Chiefs! <laughs> they have the zillion top, they have the Azir top, which can be flexed within Yuri and Winter, and they have, of course, the Rumble top. So if you, uh, so if the viewers don't know, Winter used to be a mid lane player where he's extremely efficient on those mage champions. So I think if we're gonna reevaluate this game, that top lane counter matchup for Chiefs has to change. Yeah, and it does feel like that Zillion top that they brought out against their first series against Order, where it's just like that thing that sort of defines the rest of the series, right? Because this is gonna be the main problem that Chiefs are dealing with this draft. Like, how do we how do we get around this rumble? Do we actually just use a ban on it? And like, what is opened up from that ban? Exactly, because does that mean that, you know, the Zeri slips through yeah. again to the Chiefs? Or do they, you know, prioritize that Lucian again? There's just so many different factors that both of the coaches as well as the players have to keep up with as we get into this fourth game. But just as we speculate, as we like to do here on the analyst desk, what do you think that we could potentially see being changed on the side of the Chiefs? If we don't see a Zeri ban, we've seen PGG actually pick the Vi into it, which worked extremely well because you just have a one button go button that goes onto the Zeri and then you just dunk the um, Rumble ult onto the Zeri. So I wouldn't be too worried about this champion in particular. Of course, it's still very, very good, especially when Yumi is up. But I think PGG, they're just gonna still focus on maybe Winter, and I think Yuri and Winter both have been playing extremely well. Now, I do want to take a look because I believe we have the side selection ready for the side of Chiefs. And of course, it's going to be a blue side pick. No surprise there. But again, just do want to uh, reiterate that PGG has a lot of experience on that red side with that 3-0 against order. So it, probably a good thing for them. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a little bit scared for PGG because obviously they were on red side that first game. And mm -hmm. as we all know, that didn't go too well for them. Um, I hope they can bring some of that blue side juju over to the other side. Yeah, and I actually think, I was saying this backstage, but I, with the way these teams are drafting, I actually don't think side selection matters that much in terms of drafts, right? Like we literally saw a complete inverse from how the draft normally plays out on red and blue side. And I think these teams just have their identities sorted 
um, so solidly that they don't really care what side they're on. They're still going to pick relatively similar comps. And they've definitely broken the curse of Lucianami having a 0% win rate in playoffs, where I do know that Lucianami is extremely popular in LPL and LCK. So it's not weird for PGG to give over the Zeri mm -hmm. over the Lucianami. So Max, we've seen the Lucianami go up in terms of win rate. Yep. Do we think that we're gonna see the Renekton go up in terms of win rate? No. 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 <laughs> I, I really hope both teams have learned their lesson and they're gonna stay well away from that pick. I just think there's so many better options. Both top laners are great at NAR, great at Aatrox. We've seen Rumble as well. Just pick something else that scales a bit better. Absolutely. Well, for everyone watching at home, it is time for the Dare fan vote. I know that some of you probably lost quite a heap of channel points on your predictions for that last game, and here's your shot to win it all back. So go ahead, jump into Twitch chat, use those channel points, and vote for who you think is going to take game four. Will it be PGG continuing the reverse sweep? Or will it be the Chiefs closing it out 3-1? I start Ooh. to hear the PGG chants going. Yeah. I have faith. Now, before we throw it over to the casters, I think that Kitty is going to do some throwing herself. What are you holding? We have an exclusively signed Poro from the LCO talent. We have everyone's signature right here. We have Ovali, Amel, Xenox, Kitty, Max, Rusty and Skimmy right here. So who wants this one? All right, I'm a really good thrower, trust me. Source, trust me, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. Oh, oh dear, <laughs> Kitty. Can we, can we get a second try? Skimmy, Skimmy, can you grab <laughs> that? Where did it grab that? Ready. It's under the stage. Oh, someone grab that. Okay, it's Rusty. Rusty is gonna throw it. You Rusty, yeah, Rusty yeah, throws yeah. it. Hey. Oh, all the way into the back of the stadium. Kitty, um, trust me. I would say that yeah. no one saw that, but everyone here as well as everyone watching at home definitely did. And they're going to clip it right now and send it into the LCL, LCO uh, social media Please team. Do. Go ahead they and do that. that one. But listen, that was Kitty's toss. We're going to toss it over to the casters with an actual throwing arm, Rusty and Skimmy. Guys, take it away. My headset's in shambles. Oh, I threw it off to go grab the borrow. Thank borrow. you so much for that, guys. Uh, whatever, yeah, I guess Kitty mentioned sources. I'm definitely not trusting them anymore. <laughs> no. That was uh, in shambles. But regardless, game four, we're here, finally. I mean, as exciting as it would have been for that perfect 3-0, this is what we're after, mate. What yeah. a performance. I mean, it wasn't anything that you can really pick apart and say that, you know, Pentanet fooled it or, you know, they fluked mm -hmm. it or they... Uh, scraped across the line and got it. It Not was at all. comprehensive from start to finish. Exactly, they won. They were the better team in that game, and that is the most promising thing of all, right, yeah. coming into game number four, is we just saw what they're capable of, and we know that that can beat the Chiefs. It wasn't a fluke with, from what we saw, so this next draft is going to be crucial. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of learnings that we had from that last game as well, I think. Not a counterpoint to what Max said, but I think the blue side is crucial for the purpose of Lucian Nami. And I think that that is a factor that will be changing for a red side draft here for Pentanet.gg, as when they are red, they are banning ADC. So I'm curious though, the fact that they left up that Zeri and they didn't decide to go for a risk that has paid off handsomely. Let's load into Champ Slick one more time. It's game four. Let's see if anything decides to change. Chiefs this time will elect for blue side. And now, much like Pentanet banned away everything from Ray's, it's Chiefs banning everything from Yuri. Yeah, how's that a Zeer ban as well? Lots of respect given by the Chiefs, deservingly so as well. Yuri had a fantastic performance. His Akali is top tier and his Silas commands respect. Swain's still on the cards, but we're very early gonna lock in the Jinx. The Vi's made a return, and the Zeri has been left open. What does Ray's pick? It's a million dollar question. Ooh. He's decided to go with an old faithful. Ooh, if we want no. Necrocon, let's make it that lover's duo. And that is powerful into the Vi as well. Zaya excels at kiting backwards, at pulling the feathers back and rending their health away. Vi has to go forward. She's all in as a champion. Lots of pressure now for PG to round their composition out, to be able to deal with the Zaya in a meaningful way. Perhaps something that can force those ultimates that are non-committal. I think that Ari can kind of tick that box. But remember that Aladoric is absolutely one of the best Rakans. He is so clean. And now he has a Zaya to jump extra distance. So it is his time to shine. And we certainly are going back into some of those comfort champs, some of those uh, talisman champs, right? The 
The ones that make these individuals so good. Yes, we got the Rakan. The Lissandra has to be banned away from Tally, who's had some stellar performances on it. But it really feels like the knee-jerk reaction from Chiefs is they were too good last game. Remove his ear, remove Rumble, and Chase, you can't have poke. Yeah, Galio also being removed with that Lissandra. Mumu is something that we have seen from Rogue many times. It is a staple support pick for Pensanet. Comes as no surprise that you'll be able to lock that one in. Very good at locking down the Rakan if he's looking for that engage angle. Seraphine could I run, unironically be looked at here. I think that provides a lot for the Chiefs squad, to be perfectly honest with you. Extra sustain, the ability to work with the Zaya, and in these front-to-back line-based team fights, they're already excelling. Malzahar was a consideration. They did use it in their last grand final, this time at last split. Opting for the utility of the Seraphine. Couple that now with the Aatrox. Let's veer away from that Renekton. Okay. Let's lock in the Orn. Shout out to not the fifth pick Renekton real quick. It's going to be the Orn instead. I like this. I like the Orn for the purpose of buffing up the Jinx. However, you have to keep in mind for Pensanet, this is not a Jinx Lulu composition. This is not a protect the Praetor by any means. This is good luck. We're going to give you a reset but you have to do all the work yourself. We're not going to be supporting you through this one. Yeah. It is a very individually important composition here from Pensanet, and Winsera is the thing that holds it all together. He is the glue of this comp to get them successful team fights with Rogue. We saw just how good he was on Lanamumu earlier on in this series. It's made a resurgence once again. They've got engaged. They have a lot of it, Rusty. Yes, there's no in China, but Predator will find himself a window in which he can look to capitalize on all that CC. As for the Chiefs, they've banned away what was an issue in game three. They're hoping that this time, this is how to close it out on another match point. Remember, at every moment from here on out, it is do or die. If Chiefs win one, they're through. They go to Worlds. If Pentanet.gg win, the reverse sweep is on. And we go all the way to five games. The whole nine yards. Really crucial moment. It was Belkan to me that was the biggest difference in that last game. His ganks were fantastic. It was where he played around the map and he kept Arthur down. Different matchup this time around. Let's see if it's possible. And Arthur looks shaky for the first time in what feels like a millennium. Not often we see that. And not often we see the Chiefs losing, but here we are. Game number four. We're loading in for the unthinkable. Forget the win streak, that's off the cards. The Analyst Couch raised a phenomenal point though. How do the Chiefs bounce back from this one? They've got so much experience. Look at Alidoric here as well. When he plays Rakan, he has fantastic level one strats. Yuri might find himself face checking a knock up. Or having to flash. Oh! oh! He tried to predict it, I respect it. And I mean, he was very close. Alidoric doesn't need to use the flash himself. Whenever you see the Chiefs play this Rakan, expect to see him jump over walls with W at level one. Always hunting. This time finding. Minions have spawned. Is there any more left in the tank for another level one affair? Raising Alidoric. Just gonna lay vision down in that bot side pixel bush. Make sure that Pentanet don't decide to go for a second hurrah. Vision does get spotted, however. This ward at the Raptors, I believe, does not. You can see their pings go down straight onto the ward. They're very aware of where it is. They're going to be starting red side, pathing towards bot lane. Balkan is notorious for just going odd path routes to go towards dives or ganks faster than the generic clear would be. Arthur, I think, is going to be much more of a staple stock standard player. Very good at finding those ganks and setting up with his team, but does enjoy the full camp clear. Oh, early indications. Flash burnt in the mid lane there for Yuri. Whether or not Tally gets a chance to then try and be a little bit more aggressive. Perhaps land the encore, set things up quite nicely for Arthur to pop his head in, perhaps level three, level four. Big talking point for us has to be the Zaya. It's felt like an age old eternity since we've seen this. Nice little attempt there from Rogue, but it seems like they might want to go into him. He has bandage toss up now again. Number two charges on that ability is the sole reason why Amumu suddenly became a support champion. Instead of just missing it and being irrelevant, we managed to keep that threat. Top lane also sizable CS advantage presently, but you'd expect it's a wave crashing under the turret. 
Just a little bit of an equalizer there, but Aatrox gets to bully just a little bit more early with that in mind. And no unsealed spellbooks to be seen. Very limited kill threat in top lane. Here comes off it. Gonna be spotted if he walks out. Just decides to drop a bush, uh, or rather a ward in that tri bush. Death Envo though, slowly starting to go back in favor here for PGG. The odds were very much heavily stacked for the Chiefs. Maybe after that game three, just a little bit of belief. I oh, can't get a dash away here. Rogue nearby, so they had the capacity to threaten, but I think Chiefs just too strong with too many members. They'll net themselves the Scuttle Crab for free, and it looks like it could just be coast to coast here from Arthur. Both Scuttle Crabs to secure. If he heads top side, however, he does neglect his bottom lane, but they don't actually want to stay bottom, Skimmy. They want to look mid. Flashless. Oh, flash charm. We're on this. The knock up, the stun, the follow up damage, the CC. Is it enough? Just out of range. It needed one more auto, one more cycling of cooldowns. But Yuri's absorbed it all and survived. And he survives. That was the most insane thing from Yuri. His presence of mind to charm the Wukong before anyone else. The Rakan jumping at him, it doesn't matter. He picks the damage dealer. He finds purchase with that ability and he's able to survive as not enough damage goes down onto him. Really nicely played from the flashless Ari, of course. He's forced to teleport at a really awkward time still. Nice little roam by the Chiefs. That's what you'd expect from Dog. Every single time he gets a chance to try and leave this lane, he's going to put down the pressure. He's going to try and outdo what Rogue can achieve. First 10 minutes, always exciting to see where these supports go. How they can look to try and influence the rest of this map. How they can link up with their junglers if they've done so many countless times and really fueled the fire. Much more passive affair this time around. No invades. It's a lot of farming, a lot of pressure being placed, a lot of wards being cemented. It's an information war right now. one of the few Seraphine players that we have in our league. Very successfully, I might add. He's so good at playing utility and being able to play not to lose until he gets the team fights. He does that with every champion, but Seraphine excels there. That's what he does. Has played the game for such a long time at the highest level. And has been to multiple world championships. Been to every single world since 2020. Can you believe it? Balkan having to hover bot side because their wave is pushing. Accidentally finds Rays. Doesn't even know he's there and just blindly cues him in the face. Knows that a ward got placed in the Drake, so can sweep it. And Arthur down here. They're going to commit to the Drake. Seems to be the case. Yuri just hovering. Waiting to see what Chiefs decide to do. I think it's a dead giveaway with Tally still locked in the mid lane. Three member contingency is going to make light work of this very first strike. And Chiefs just going to be biding their time. Six minutes in the first of many positive steps that are required for Penzanet to win. Bandage toss just wide. Arthur hovering out of fog. Belkan not close enough, wants to get level six ideally. And he has his red buff spawning soon. I think it would be Wise for Rogue to not be throwing those bandages. Here we go, Grand Entrance once again, knocking up Rogue, looking to try and keep him topped up and healthy as much as he can. The Chiefs walk away pretty much unscathed, but Rogue's down to 50, chugging those potions. Arthur just can't find an avenue to attack. Yeah, it's so hard to find a way in unless the Amumu goes forwards, he even keeps the flash. Jinx also, of course, having that flash ghost as well, so hard to lock down. And that's the thing, when you come back to draft, the Chiefs are so good if Pensanet are running towards them. What, what if the Jinx gets fed? You know, what if the Jinx is able to play from range? How do you win them? That's the question. Oh. Does it get stolen? Arthur comes in, Balkan concedes. He did see Tapoon potentially walk on down. At the inline track, I think Winter is saying it's not worth it. Back to laning phase we go. By this time, we've had multiple kills. Game four has been the most passive affair. And I wonder if 
it is playing on the mental of the teams, right? You know if you make a mistake now, if you're Pentanet, your career for this year is ended. But the identity of this squad is aggression, right? That is the bread and butter of this team. So if they veer away from that, what's left for Pentanet? You expect blood. The only team not to make a change to the roster from split one to two. They had full belief in their ability and that has paid off handsomely, right? We're here in a grand final at DreamHack Melbourne. They've taken a game off the Chiefs. The unbeaten record defeated now. Level six there for a lot of champions with Herald up. Supports level five. Really big team fight presence can be seen from the Wukong, from the Seraphine. Ricard need only hit a W. Pensanet are going to not defend bottom. They bring their Jinx over. The Herald is the play. The Chiefs don't want to borrow. We've seen Rays do this before, though. They do concede this Herald, and he'll look to achieve as much freely uncontested gold, CS, and turret plates. Freshen then becomes to the rest of Chiefs. Where do they lay the trap to make sure that when Pentanet have to respond to him in bot lane, it's not as easy as said. Now, the Chiefs swept two people there. They didn't clear the one ward that sees them. So they have full information on who is hovering Rays right now, and that it is only Alidoric. He will reveal himself, so it doesn't matter too much in the end. Their goal is to clear the wave and reset. You can see Rogue can have a crack with this Q2, potentially. Did lose his bone plating. Yeah, it's just going to shy away in the end. Would have been a fair distance away from Predator. for already burnt that zap. Would have been uh, fairly hard to try and gather that distance. Cold no start, drink. obviously, for Predator, right? So he just wants to farm yeah. up the treat. And he is farming, he's not losing his lane. What we want to see from Praetor, there's no more Gale forces down mid lane. <laughs> and then I think he'll have an absolutely fantastic game. He has one weakness right now. One of these days, that mid lane meme will die. But for the meantime, he continues. And until then, it will be Praetor that dies. And that's why it doesn't. <laughs> I will admit he's improved a lot at it. He doesn't die in mid as much anymore. In fact, his team uses him as a bait with that in mind. Sure. Probably going to cycle his unsealed spellbook. This is why the cleanse has been used there. It means that he doesn't have it, however, for an Ari charm. He's opting for the teleport instead, though. So, first mythic item starting to come on through. Cheap item spike here for Yuri, who's the first one at the 10 minute mark to go back to base to pick up the Everfrost now. So a couple of important points here, right? Level 6 is big for both teams. You want to have those ultimates up when you're looking to fight. Yuri has the resets, Praetith has the resets. Getting excited with that Jinx. It means that they really want to get that first pick and that is where the job of Belkan and Yuri comes into play. Tally is so good at keeping his team alive. Zay and Rakan are very slippery. They're almost impossible to lock down. And so that's where the push and pull of this game will commence. And while you're not really seeing much action just yet, as Pentanet, if they pick their fight, they have to do so perfectly. They've baited it. We're in. Bandage Dolls, Curse the Sad Mummy, lock and place two people. There is the ultimate. And that's the first blood. That's Jinx excited. That's them getting excited as well. They're flashing on forward. Roy Yuri flashes away, but he's dead. Yuri comes in. There's the charm. Arthur trying to flirt with danger. It's just not enough to Poon. He's not here on the TP. He's actually walked all the way from bot side base to try and make a play, and Yuri burns another flash. It's a calamity. Has to flash there, otherwise the Aatrox could have locked him down. Top in being there, obviously going to be a significant factor. But when all said and done, Pentanet, they'll win the play. They'll stay well and truly in the driver's seat in this game. They are the team that needs to go forwards. And they bait and draw Chiefs in. And that is why this play is exceptional. Because once again, Alidoric on this Rakan has been kept down, kept at bay. Doesn't get to do anything. Arthur tries his best, but it's just missing his other engage half. And Ray's, you can't ask for much more damage out of the ADC in this fight. But it's just not going to get a kill. And you're thinking perhaps there's a world in which the fact that Tapoon gets to that fight just a fraction quicker than Winter, who was, I mean, stuck in base. For all that it was worth, it was a 4v4. It just did not matter, and whilst Chiefs will go for the second spawning of the Drake, Pentanet will waste no time summoning, oh, cheeky rocket to try and steal. But Raze acts as the meat shield. It's a good attempt. Jinx, of course, is very capable of doing that. 
been nerfed. That's how good she was at stealing objectives. Constantly baiting. I feel like Praetith and Rogue are discussing how Rogue wants to be in Fog of War at all times. Sitting there with three stacks on his Relic Shield, barely using them. But he sits in Fog, and if Alodoric goes, he counters. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. That's the play. Mythic's already done as well, Hiskimi. Topoon has not considered boots a reality. Straight up Eclipse. Max damage and did start grouping up for fights at that timing, so it makes a lot of sense. But Winsor, just a happy chap. Has a Vi in the pocket. And he is. The Eclipse value is going to find a little bit of that. Sound the own horn. Oh, that's so much CC. He got knocked up like a bouncy castle. He's not having fun, and neither is his top lane tower. Those plates, they're gone. The combo is perfect. Oh, Bottom. Bot lane. Rogue. Statue for the meantime. They're not going to juggle aggro. Rogue's going to walk away. He just has the stopwatch. He's able to survive. Turret is in shambles, however. It is going to fall down, Raze. Chooses not to take it just yet. Maybe an extra minion drops. Now he'll be content to take that one. First turret of the game. Chiefs still get something back, but... Hensenet's not GG. What an exceptional play in top lane, using all of the damage that they can combo together with the crowd control. And it was the early flash from Tapoon that really sealed the fate, right? The fact that he was not going to be able to evade the assault and battery, a click and stun into a premeditated call of the Forge God. I think Rogue, for me, he's expended one of his nine lives. The fact he walks away from that. Yeah, the fact that he uses stopwatch as well, Zonius is not a cheap thing to get for a support if you want to have a mythic. We'll see where he chooses to itemize, because right now it seems like he is trying to complete that locket, or the Evan Frost, as I believe is his first item of choice. So he gets stuck in very awkward item limbo with a stopwatch that's broken, but he really wants his owners. Keep your eyes to see where Rogue's direction goes in terms of making sure that he is a menace like we saw just before. Pentinet now grouping up, going for that next spawning of the Herald. Chief's in the area. They flip their bot lane to the top half of the map. Tapoon does have an unleashed teleport. They've got wards to try and flank upon. Nice little scry is bloom from Yuri. We'll see them all. Teleport's going to come through. Tally throwing abilities has an insane potential flank angle, but they could collapse on him if he's not careful. Remember, has no cleanse. And Yuri could lock him down with the ultimate being available. Mumu also now has the flash and ult. Their team fight combo is online. And Chiefs want to contest this. They're going. We are certainly going in. Cyclones will knock up one. That's the remove Vulcan. There is no smite. A fight on two separate occasions. That's a one-man clone that locks in place to Poon. Praetif is running like the wind, hitting him with the rocket launcher from a million miles away. But that's enough to stop either side now going for this Herald. Yuri still has his ultimate. While Balkan is dead, he has his and wasn't able to use it at all. Flash still available for the Vi. Just gets ruined. But Yuri's still a threat. Chiefs, I think they acknowledge that. They're going to teleport towards the inner turret in mid to stay on the map as much as they possibly can. But the gold starts to extend to 2,000 in favor of Pentanet. Ray's going to take a chance whilst everybody's respawning and resetting to now push in another wave. Looking to get a little bit more achieved on the map. But it all starts, as you say, just a lot of CC. And that really has been, for me, the name of the game. Just CC layering. And just a monster ultimate out of tally on this Seraphine. Locks them down, denies the full crowd control combo. Prey to starts to get excited, right? They still do well to work around a bad start to the fight. But it was a bad start. They can't afford to do that again. Well, the Herald was the objective. But the aftermath was uh, really just a disengage away. We saw Tally rush back to base, pick up the Leandries, TP back in, considering would PGG try and sneak that one in. And this game really has now been served up as a battle between two star AD carries, both opting for the Kraken Slayer. They just want to shred. As much damage as they can possibly deal. It really is coming down to how these ADCs perform, but that's where the X Factor comes in in mid lane, right? Yuri. On this Ari, if you saw him play on Friday, was just shy of being called a psychopath with how he played. Does the unexpected at every single turn. I believe it was referred to as Scrim Ari by Tally in an interview. But the objective is theirs, and that's what matters. Drake, however, five seconds. So it is from one side of the map to the other. 
What is the game plan here? Pentanet have just picked up the Herald. They're looking to take a turret in the top side as well to make that two to pull ahead in that regard. They've got more kills. They've got more map pressure. Herald summoned as well. It's looking for a second they turret potentially. Chiefs have been fooled. You can have your Drake, but we'll just claim this top half of the Rift. Turret one hit. Trade is holding that one so they can get excited and chase them down if they stay too close. Drake will eventually drop here for Arthur. The Chiefs will get themselves an objective back. That is two out of four confirmed on a soul. Another infernal soul here as well. You fancy that. What an explosive way this series could come to an end. Just offers you so much damage. That's exactly what you want to see. As these team fights have been messy, they have been chaotic. There is a lot of skill shots flying left, right, and center. The Medjai is from Yuri as well. Absolute Giga Chad. He's confident. Three stacks and no cares. That's not wasted money for him. He knows those are going to be a few more pages later on in this game. I do think it has to happen mid-game though, Skimmy, if you want to get more pages on that book for oh, Ari. Sure. I think the Jinx is a very good insurance policy right now. 201, two items done. But Raze is matching that. The difference is how they operate in team fights. Do you trust in Mark? Do you trust in Praetith? The crowd certainly does. We've done it before. And let's see if he can do it again. Thank you very much. Unrelenting pressure. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Three turrets to one. Winch was knocking on the door for another turret. The Chiefs will not answer back towards. They are zoned in. Pulse Blink is on. Mid lane is the focus. Teleport's coming through. They've got a really wide flank here onto the Chiefs. They're routed. They want to stand and deliver. A blue trinket does reveal where Yuri is, but look at Pentanet. They're oh, going. Oh, no, it's a poo. That's not where you want to be. He's going to try and buy as much time as he can, but he's just dead. There's the Psycho, knock them up and crash them down. Can we fight another? Can we get a double? Yes, we can, says Rays. He's burned the Featherstorm. He's doing damage, but they're just out of range to drag them back with the Blade Caller. And once again, PGG try and kick it off, but Chiefs, their team fight combo is just too powerful and so easy to execute. Tally goes clutch, and Rays has free time to hit everyone in front of him. No risks in the world. Baron, 20 minutes in, is on the agenda. That it certainly is. Both supports taunting one another, doing minimal damage, but certainly scouting out vital information. The presence alone was enough to say, we've got to disengage. We cannot sneak in that 20 minute Baron. And that's the big thing, right? Rogue has Flash and ulti. We'll see this one more time. They see the teleport. That's their target, and that's fantastic. But look at the choke point that they funnel themselves into. Yuri, ult into the charm. And then it's so easy for Arthur to follow that one through, and Raze has the time of his life. Still so much damage from Praetor, so much threat that he has, but he wasn't there to freely hit at the start. Identical builds as it stands between the two most fed individuals on the map right now. It's worth noting also that Yui did lose all those stacks on that very early Magia's purchase. This has shades of the 2021 LCO, where it's an ADC thing. That was Violet and Alidoric playing the Zyra Khan against Praetor. It was, yeah. Different year, but will it still be the same outcome? Once again, Pentanet returning to that scene of the crime. Looking to try and wrestle for everything they can find. Balkan's got the red buff. He's staunched them out of that one. One minute till Drake. A lot of the game rests upon the Drake now that it is an infernal soul. Much more pressure for PGG to get there. Chiefs, they get to just be a death ball. Their composition excels grouped up. Just a giant cluster of damage. Survivability and sustain. And one misstep from any of these members. A beat drop into an encore, an isolated member. Seraphine will have light work tearing apart that champion. Yuri says, thanks for the leash. That's my blue buff. Yuri winning the 1v4. 
but if Pentanet face check, remember they find a Seraphine ultimate and things go bad quick. They don't want to. They're going to run straight to the Baron. They're going to draw them into you. What are you going to do, Chiefs? It's a battle of the face checkers. Who goes for it? In we go. Looking for the kill. Looking for the knockout. Out of Doric. Dead. He can't play the game. The rocket goes wide, but that doesn't matter. After disengaging away, Yuri jumps in with a Spirit Rush. Hits the Everfrost. And that's about it. Just out of range. Too mobile. Too quick. Still cutting away, Yuri. One more stack on that Ari Ultimate Ooh. Charm. Just going wide. The players now move towards the Drake. They have the numbers, they have the inside line. And Yuri trying to keep them at bay. Charm again, just barely missing, but the Drake is theirs. Would have been huge for the Chiefs. Would have put them on a soul point, but that's to be denied. We are all squared up at two Dragons apiece. Another five valuable minutes bought by Pentanet. Crucial moments for them as well. Love the decision making where Chiefs stand in a bush and say, if they face check us, we go. Pensanet say, well, we'll pick the other bush on the other side of mid lane and we'll have a game of chicken. This game really does have it all. The slowest by a fair degree. 10 kills in 24 minutes. A gold lead that is still very fragile, but is still in mm. Pentanet's favor. Very different directions here as well for both ADCs. The need for LDR, for Rays, need that armor penetration. Praetor's going for an Infinity Edge, wants to maximize his damage output, doesn't feel pressured to verse armor building champions. Cops the ornament as well from Winterer. And so the snowball begins, an even game. Instead, two, 3,000 gold ahead, plus the extra 1,000 gold value that each Orn upgrade provides. And suddenly you sneak a little bit too far up. Certainly is those unseen values. May just be the difference maker, that extra 1% they need to eke out an advantage in these huge team fights. Poon right now has been completely targeted 0-3, uncharacteristic by his standards. From what we know of him in the regular season, a solo kill machine. Baron, the sole objective on the map right now. Crucial objective for both teams. Again, team fight centric, team fight focused. It's not just the Baron you would get, it is the contest and the kills that come before it. Telly being a massive nuisance. Yeah, cop at a turret shot, but can uh, heal that up in just a moment. And to commit to that sideway for the meantime, would really like to find that second turret. And I know that ward got missed by Windsor, but the fact that the mid lane outer turret stands makes this just a little bit easier for Pentanet to hold that one. Tower's gonna drop. Yuri, I think, happy to deny any kind of local gold that would exist. It was inevitable. And this game really does slow down. It teeters on a knife's edge. 3,000 is not enough of a lead to win a game. But the big beats that matter is the Infinity Edge is done. The Kraken Slayer has been upgraded. Praetith is an absolute weapon right now. But so is Ray's. Certainly is all about who gets the better start. Baron hit. Chiefs slow to react. They know it's being done, but they don't want to face check. They're working piece by piece. Rogue, look at the Amumu. They're on vision. Rogue could clump them all together. In they jump. Can they steal this one? They cannot. In for the fight. Pentanet with the Baron. They found one. Can they find another? They found oh. two. Ray's answering back. He's burnt double summoners. He's still living. Brain is dead. That's the shutdown. Nice Baron. Thanks for that one. It does not matter. Arthur with a double kill. There's the ace. Ray's is the perfect player, the perfect ADC. What a team fight from the Chiefs. Exactly when they needed it to happen. And precisely when they need to find that win. They deny the Baron in its entirety. And now they get to break structures. That gold lead was fake. The ornaments were nothing. Look you say Ray's. he's the perfect player. Look at that damage. It's the Zarya show. And they have flipped this game back to an even state. This is a player who is sick of second place. Comes into a clutch moment and actually clutches this out. Eyes on the Zaya, pull back of the feathers now. Hits them all. Wukong follows through. 
so easy to follow the rest of that team fight out when the damage was done. And the fact that it was on to Praetith as well makes it all that much easier. And you see it's a late dive there by Balkan. It's a Hail Mary, but by that point, they've lost their damage sources. He's utility-based. Crossfire Gauntlet, he's just not going to land that killer punch to take him out. Six, zero in two now. And from Baron, completely denied to another chance to achieve that soul point. Look at that gold lead. The tune has stayed the same all game long. Battle of the Marksman, Battle of the ADCs to say the least. Drake up in eight seconds. It is not going to be a soul for anybody. It is just the soul point, the third Drake to be threatened. But Chiefs, feels like back to back to back team fight successes. Pensanet still finding those picks, finding those angles, but never being able to capitalize on more than one kill. Drake started. No summoners for Zaya, but Kratif does have his flash up and available. They're going to look to try and make this one a bit of a 50-50 flip out. Goes to Quickness, there's the charm. Off the secure, so that's free. Drake's the name of Chief. Everybody hitting the stasis effect. Assault and Battery goes on out. After still spinning. He's finally gone on down. Raze is alive. He's now godlike. I feel like this ends up as just a one-for-one one disengage. The Drake goes the way of the Chief, so all things considered, a surprisingly even trade. But a fight that it felt like the Chiefs comprehensively won. Straight towards mid lane, threatening the inhibitor, and Pentanet so slow on the recalls. Perhaps this was unexpected, but this push is fast. It's fast push, even without the Baron buff to assist her. There is a cannon there to give Fully them the engaged. juice. Mid inhib is now destroyed. Zaps on, damage to follow, a cheeky turnaround there from Aladoric. We got the teleport from Yuri as well, they're coming into the area. It's a pinch. He's by himself. What he can, can they find? It's one man charm. It's a banish loss that misses. A rocket that goes out. There's no execution. In they jump. Back they go. Yuri's still hunting for more. But they just can't find the target they're after. And Arthur back on the map as well. A delicate dance of very back and forth. Minute and a half of trades. See this fight one more time. Aladoric able to charm literally everybody. The Amumu can't get the ultimate off. Orn cannot get the R2 off, and then Praetith, he gets excited, he's able to dodge out on some of those feathers, but again, these engages are just being handled. They're just being bodied out by the Chiefs. And if Pendant want to win this game, they need those engages to stick. A lot of shutdown gold available on the map right now. If Pentanet can just find it, and that has to be the key word right now. They cannot remove the sustain that Tally's providing. 0010, the perfect support player, the perfect utility found in the mid lane, conducting the show. Ray still once again, 702, the window in which double summoners were down. They couldn't find a moment to strike upon it. He's now got Guardian Angel, and that becomes exponentially harder. Certainly does. You can't just kill him once now. You have to kill him twice. With a full squad standing in front of him and a Seraphine in tow. Tally and Raze, two veterans of the oceanic scene, step up in game four. They're engaging. We're on. They found Prater. If he's flashed away, he's got a QSS. There's the Ornog. There's the turnaround. There's the Arthur. Rogue jumps in. One Prater's alive. Old. Doesn't matter. Prater's still living. Oh, tries to snipe out Arthur. Look at the sustain. Seraphine is doing so much in these fights. Yeah, this healing is absolutely absurd. Keeps the Chiefs topped up and happy. But Praetis does survive, so it doesn't mean we're just going to spontaneously end this game yet. Pentanet still have some legs in them. They still have some fight left. And it is not over. The gold is dead even. 31 minutes in. Identical. They just keep working their way towards that magic moment of hoisting that trophy. Six turrets now achieved. Gold is dead even. Ornaments will help out in that regard. Level 15 now for Winter. Let's watch this one more time. The catch with the is brilliant. Yeah, he immediately goes and flashes. And the Seraphine ultimates have been picture perfect from Tally. You cannot really fault what he has done so far. Ultimate just goes wide on Arthur. Maybe this is a different story. Maybe Yuri finds some angles. But they just can't find purchase. And so the game continues. And we teeter on a knife's edge. Baron up in five seconds now. And a 
a soul point to play for if you're the Chiefs. In 60 seconds as well. Chiefs in the area, playing with vision towards this Baron right now. Drake seemingly a distant afterthought. Starting to feel like it may just come down to one moment. Starting to feel like it may just come down to one fight. But keep in mind, there is an Infernal Soul to play for. So it is Pensnet that have to find that fight. It is Chiefs that just want to threaten. And you can see they were hoping that somebody would step up just a little bit too much on that mid wave to try and be picked up. up. Chiefs weren't going to grant them that opportunity. Furiously, pings go out from the Pensnet side as to, well, are they doing Baron? We know the answer is no, but they're going to push out this mid wave. They're going to face check a little bit here as well. Belkan and Rogue will move in tandem. Control gets cleared. Baron gets started. The question is what's going to happen with this Drake? They're going to give the Baron it's for so the Drake. Quick. They're just going to go for Belkan's steal attempt. That's the play. Instant disengage away. Now the Infernal Drake has spawned. Predator's 5k there. health. He's going to chuck out a rocket. They're jumping across the wall. The rocket does nothing. balkan has gone. The Drake is being picked up. Now they can run up. Can they buy more time? Chief stuck. In we oh, go. In, he oh gets it. my god! He steals the Baron! How does he do it? They get the Drake, they get the Baron what at the earth? exact same <laughs> time. <laughs> Pentadent.gg will not go quietly <laughs> in this series. They're making the Chiefs work overtime. Oh my god, Balkan. You beautiful human. What a moment! If that doesn't hype you up, I, I don't know what doesn't! And you know, they really wanted Chiefs to stop this at about 3k HP. They wanted to stop Vi from getting and maybe waste the Q, but nobody has vision. The second that Chiefs decide to burn the Baron and take the, the gamble is the second that Belkan blind just goes in and sees what's there and finds himself a Baron to smite. He took a risk, and I tell you what, this is why I love this individual. 50-50 flips, he's the devil you do the dance with, and it worked out phenomenally on that occasion. Couple of gourmet burger flips. Far out. This time, everybody on the side of Pentanet will have the Baron buff active. Last time, it was a wipe to achieve it. Let's see what kind of damage they can do this time around. It's give me a couple of turrets maybe to be taken, but it is three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock until somebody gets an Infernal Soul with three Infernal Drakes to back that up. Damage through the roof, it doesn't matter what champion you are. Instantly targeting those side lanes, mid and bot are the priority, escorting in a cannon wave is prayed of right now. Chiefs were set up in the mid lane expecting a face check. It wasn't to be the case. The macro is phenomenal right now from PGG. And Praetith almost full build. It's going to be an absolute powerhouse to contend with. And he stands so far away from the fights. The Seraphine has been super clutch so far. Tally hasn't even died. Raze hasn't died. Yet they find themselves with shutdowns and 3,000 gold behind. You most certainly still are hunting for those shutdowns. This might be that game that goes to full distance, full items, full levels. A 40, 50 minute affair. Flashbacks that are huge, huge split one final. And they don't get punished for this Baron buff. They actually get the opportunity to be greedy, to push out some extra waves bottom. Chiefs don't get there in time. That means a Mercurial Scimitar is available for Praetor. He is officially at full build, barring Elixirs. But at the same time, Raze has done the exact same, has the GA, has the Infinity Edge, is full build. There are two major engage sources on Pentanet. There is an Orn ultimate and there is an Amumu ultimate. But Aladoric puts in so much work solo on this Rakan that it almost equalizes them in those 5v5s. Aaron Buff expired. 90 seconds now, do or die, one of these teams will be claiming that huge injection of power. Three Infernal Drakes in a name, a soul to give them that killer edge. 
and the soul may not be the nexus itself, but you know that both teams are going to be contesting this Drake with everything that they have. And so perhaps it is one team fight left in this game. But Pentanet, they see the Seraphine top. They don't know that Arthur's in the jungle, but he's over there as well. He's not here. Opportunity presents itself. They don't overreach. Certainly a crucial few moments coming up in this one. You've got to attend to as many of those wave states as possible. Push them out, not allow a dance to take place that certainly isn't desirable for you. You really want to give yourself the best chance possible to go towards that Drake. I mean, at this Look stage at of the game, Drakes are just done. Really nice little flank opportunity there. Forces a ward out of Aladoric. He has to be super respectful. Chiefs, they're going to go straight down mid lane instead. That is an open inhibitor. They draw Pensanet to them. PGG going to deny the wave. So they're oh going to sacrifice the inhibitor for pressure at the Infernal Drake. So Rays will go solo instead. It's not where you want to be, Tally. They do garner vision. And they do have Ray successfully reclaim that mid inhib. How slow do they push this one? Look at PGG with the vision toggling right now. Winter untouched, unnoticed. Sopun joins the squad. Nice little angle here for an Orn ultimate to come through. They rally themselves inside the river. Yuri constantly hunting for these charms, but no vision inside the pit means that he wasn't able to find that one. And so the Drake gets reset, gets started again. Praetor shows in mid. Chiefs, they do this so quickly. Yuri and Aladoric flanking. In they go. Infernal Soul picked up by the Chiefs right now. Off it goes Golden. In goes Aladoric. Charmed Aladoric. Them all. They're all charmed at his command. Oh, Tapu! Absolutely, there we go. That's the wipe. It's only Yuri and a dream and five healthy Chief members. Yuri and nothing short of a miracle required to stay in this game and stay in this series. Chiefs are knocking on death's door, but they bounce back immediately. They're so class. Is this it? It has to be, Rusty. The curse is broken for Rays. He's been trying since 2016. The Chiefs now are the most successful org in oceanic history. They've won five titles. Chiefs are going to Worlds. Well-deserved celebrations here from the Chiefs. They proved that the Titans will not be toppled today. They'll drop games, but not more than one. These players, synonymous with success, Worlds is their second home. For Aladoric, back-to-back world performances. For Tally, as we said before, he's been to Worlds since 2020. For Babbitt, their coach, He's been going to Worlds since 2019. For Chiefs as an organization, always the bridesmaids. Always second place in the league. And since 2016, they haven't found a league victory. But today they do. And for Arthur, his second stint in Oceania. He played in the OPL. He went to LCK. He's won his first championship title. What a day for them. Everybody put your hands together for your split to LCO 2022 champions, the Chiefs!
Well, what a way to do it. Tally, uh, you've been here before. You've climbed, uh, climbed the top of the mountain, not with the Chiefs, though, and maybe not even in this fashion. What a way to get it done. You obviously did lose the undefeated streak, but still, maybe it's even better that you did get pushed all the way. I mean, like, I, I really got to give it to PG. I, I really wanted the first one finals. I thought that, like, they were, they, I mean, they really tried. I, I feel like when I play versus them, like, I feel so passionate about the game. It feels really good playing, especially in that game four. It was so close. I don't know. It just feels fucking fantastic. It, it was amazing. It was amazing. As much as it probably wasn't ideal for you guys, game three, they just had everything on their terms. And for the first time, this entire split, everything was going wrong for you. How did you regroup? How did you fight? find the way in game four to bounce back? We thought we had like a read on uh, PG from scrims, from practice, but they really did a 180 on us and played a completely different play style than what we were ready for. So we had to regroup, like reassess like what was good and like change our priorities on champs. And like that's something we're really good at because we're such a veteran team. An incredible team performance in the end, of course. And now you get to represent this region going to Worlds. What does that mean? Uh, like, honestly, if we can't do it, I don't think Oz will do it. I think this is the best roster we're ever sending. I think the crowd agrees as well. A tremendous split uh, and a tremendous grand final and redemption as well for split one. I mean, like, yeah, uh, it just feels so nice to be up here. Like, thanks everyone so much for coming. Like, I love this sport. I love this game, love this sport. Thank you so much. The Chiefs logo is going on that trophy. Thank you so much, Tally. What a performance from the Chiefs, the best in the region going to Worlds as we go back to the couch. Thank you so much. And again, a huge congratulations to the Chiefs. What a performance from them. And yes, we figured out that the Chiefs do bleed, but even when they do, they can bounce back mentally and secure that win. And that's exactly the type of attitude that they are gonna need when they head into Worlds. They really show their expertise. Even when losing the Baron of get up against Balkan, they still had their calm in their emotions because when we had that Dragon Soul fight, Alador was fighting those engages and Balkan was just Honestly, that Baron Steel was probably the highlight of my day because it made it a nearing game five series. But that final fight at Dragon just showed how much Chiefs deserves it to go to Worlds once again. Absolutely. And what a game to go out on. I mean, out of every single game that we could have had be the last game for this series, I mean, either way that went, whether it be to a game five or the Chiefs victory here, I think both teams could say that that was an absolute show. I mean, we were sitting here in the audience just watching, I could feel my heart in my throat and I wasn't even playing. So yeah, an absolute stellar performance from the Chiefs and no better team to send than them. Yeah, honestly, my heart is still pumping from that. That was crazy. I don't even mind that I got my prediction wrong. There were just so many crazy <laughs> fights this game. Um, honestly, everyone on Chiefs just playing to their max potential. Yeah, as we take a look at some of the uh, highlights from this past game and rather from the entire series, I mean, just look at how it started. Look at Rogue on the screen there. What a loving personality, but the focus coming out. The focus is coming out and we do have the late game going to a 40 minute series where, oh my God, you know, going both teams are being on sole point. We saw the expertise coming out of both the teams where I believe it was Jinx going for the third dragon while Balkan was stealing that Baron and Raze on this Zai. I believe he was 7-0 at one point being extremely patient with these team fights and it was just an AD diff. And when we talk about Raze, we have to talk about Aladoric as well because I think all the way through the rest of that game, basically 100% kill participation. Yeah, he's just so good at finding those angles that other people can't see, and especially on Vakan, it's such a comfortable pick for him. He knows what he's doing, and he's got Arthur ready on the Wukong to follow up on anything that he, that he finds. Yeah, there's really no one else you want starting those fights at those 40 minute marks. And we talked about it before, Chiefs are a stable team, they are made up of veterans and they just showed that composure today. They resisted PGG, I mean there were some big moments there, like you talked about, like that Baron steal, but they didn't let it get to them. Raze in particular, just making these fights so hard for anyone to play, remaining alive and always dishing out this damage. Uh, just a solid performance all around. I do also want to highlight Tally Seraphine being 100% KP up until that last Dragon and he had zero deaths throughout the entire game. So that's how stable of a player he is. And I believe the entire Chiefs team is doing a group huddle. And we have PGG descending the stage behind us as well as the Chiefs.
hugs throughout the entire squad. You can tell how hard they worked for this, especially after that split one result. This is what they needed. This is what they wanted. And now they are the OSH representatives going to world to talk about carrying your team. <laughs> what a group here. And as, he, as Tally said, he thinks that this is the best roster that the OSH has ever sent out. And I feel like the fans would have to agree. This is their third time for a lot of those players on the Chiefs roster going to Worlds once again for 2022. And look, with this performance, I think we can take on a major region, guys. You think that this is the year? This is the year for the LCO? Nah, we're winning Worlds. We're winning Worlds. Winning Worlds? Okay, now careful. You're sounding like an <laughs> NA fan there for a second. And I know what that's like from time to time. And there we go. Another hoist of the trophy on the stage as we see the rest of the Chiefs start to descend. But what a series, what a day. And let's take a look at the end score graphic that we have up here. 28.8K on the, the side of Raisin. The wow, the gold difference wasn't actually that much. That was pretty dang close. Yeah. The it's entire like game was so close in general. You know, we have back and forth, especially from Baron Graf to Dragon, and it's just insane. And Ray is staying as calm as ever because he is just that veteran in this game and he is able to perform when he needs to. Yeah, and really just showing how close this game was. As you said, it could have gone either way. We were this close, just maybe one good team fight away for PGG for this to be taken to a game five. I've just been told by prediction, production, sorry, that my prediction and Rusty is actually first at the end of regular split and playoffs. So, Congratulations. Congratulations. You're going to world me. As well. I'm first now. You're first in the prediction game? Yeah. But this is the last game of the second split. So does that mean that you just win the predictions overall? What do I get? A dare? You get the trophy. Uh, what do we get? What do we you, you, yeah, you get the trophy. Run up on stage. The Chiefs are still backstage right now. So you can just run up, grab it, and put really? it in your carry-on. I promise. You're totally fine. You're totally fine. But speaking of, uh, you know, you get to be the trophy MVP. Let's talk about and find out who is going to be our DARE MVP because we have quite a few candidates. <laughs> She's running She's for it. it. She wants to go steal it. I'm going to let Kitty go steal it. Wait, we're going to watch her run up right behind us. Yeah, look, complete oh, silence, please. Oh, look at it. Go, Kitty, go! Go, go Kitty, kitty go. Go, go! Go, Kitty, go! Go, go Kitty! Woo <laughs> She's running. Can we make Kitty the Dare MVP? Why like, not? I know that the players actually played their heart out and have been training for, you know, years for this moment, but I oh. feel like that was pretty cool from yeah, Kitty. Kitty deserves it. Pretty much. But, Amelga, I'm going to start with you. Who do you think should be the Dare MVP? It's got to be Raze, honestly. He was just playing that last game to perfection, right? Like, as soon as he got that GA on, on Zaya, he's got the old as well. He can just play his heart out. He can do whatever he wants, and he did do whatever he wanted. Absolutely. Yeah, I think everyone in Chiefs had their standout moments. I think Eladoric, in particular, in that last fight, had a really great engage, but I would have to agree with Ray's. I mean, Prady talked about it in the interview before. He's meant to choke at finals, <laughs> and I guess this game today really proved that that's not him. He's not defined by that, and he is a champion through and through. Kitty, before I ask you who you think should take the DARE MVP, there is something that I wanted to point out. Uh, I believe when we were backstage watching some of the games, as we're talking about Rays, saying something along the lines of, as you're taking a look at, you know, the series and the player cams, you view, what was it, Praydeath and Rays as Naruto and Sasuke? Look, if we take a look at the ADC cameras, we have Praydeath as the main protagonist being Naruto. Okay. And Rays with his dark chroma, dyeing his hair jet black as Sasuke. Okay, well, Naruto just got absolutely bodied by Sasuke, which is the ending that I subscribe to. So who do you think should be the Dare MVP? Sasuke forever, because I've always <laughs> been a Sasuke fan. Come on, guys. Like, He's our little edgy uh, ninja boy, but let's go ahead and take a look and find out who our Dare MVP is. Wouldn't you know it? It's Rays. And look at that KDA and the kill participation off the charts, 81%. And Ward's placed, of course. He's placing Ward's because he's a good teammate. He is a very good teammate that carried them all the way to Worlds. And Rays, once again, being able to show up on that international stage is honestly OCE's last hope. And look, damage share being at 34K yeah. just shows how much of a carry he is of the team where Tally is putting all that utility and backup for him just so he can shine into the light.
Absolutely. What do you think about Ray's bringing his talents to the world stage? Oh, well, he's played internationally before, you know, in America, and he's represented O's on the stage before. With Legacy in 2020, I believe they were very, very close to getting out of groups, and I think that, you know, this year could definitely be the year with a roster that was built to win from the get-go, right? Bringing in all this talent from overseas, all this international experience roster. Um, I definitely think we have a good chance at Worlds this year. Yeah, look, I mean, Ray's the perfect player, right? But now he's got the perfect team around him as well. And honestly, I just can't wait to see them at Worlds. Absolutely, and this is a team that is excited, hungry, and ready to perform internationally as you see them all up on the stage here. Smiles and that, uh, what do you call it? The eSports seriousness when you're <laughs> linking shoulders or crossing arms in those uh, you know, iconic eSports photo poses. But guys, that was our Dare MVP. We do need to talk about our play of the day. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask, see if we could throw it up on the screen as soon as we're done seeing our happy faces surrounding that trophy. And I just do wanna say, that's a pretty cool trophy design. That is it's a really nice. cool trophy design. I believe it's our first one as well. This is the Baron fight with between, I believe it was the second, was it, a, it was the third, it was the fourth game, oh my <laughs> god. Where Ray's actually picked up a triple kill when PGG picked up their Baron. Yeah, he, it's just crazy, right? You can see PGG just like funneling all into Ray's feathers and he does, he does 6k Ooh. damage in this fight. Absolutely bodying PGG, pretty much solo and of course, there's so many awesome engages from Eldora, from Arthur, finding those angles and just deleting PGG off the map completely. Yeah, definitely the play of the day there and one of the game-winning plays for the Chiefs. And you can see the sad horn, <laughs> and there's the pop-off right there. He knows what happened. You can see the faces of PGG. Just a little, uh, didn't really work out for them at the end of the day. But again, good news for Chiefs as they are going to be the LCO representatives going over to North America to participate in Worlds. Now, I think they sounded very confident. It sounds like the desk is pretty confident. Do we want to make a prediction right now? Prediction Queen, how far are they going? How far are they going? Well, I already said that they're going to make it into play-ins. So hopefully we get to verse one of the major regions and prove that OC will not be silenced. OC will, will not, not be silenced. silenced. I, like, I like the confidence in that. But Kitty, Max, Amel, with that, I do believe that we have reached the end of our show and the end of the LCO broadcast for Split 2. And deep breath in, deep breath out, because it's come to a close, and with what a banger of a series that yeah. being. So Kitty, I want to come to you. Final thoughts as we close out the tournament, and not just that, but the entire Split. You know, being able to be in person again and meeting all these beautiful faces and streaming the entire thing at the ESL studio was just such an experience for me and obviously having you all the way from NA to be our host today. So can we please get a round of applause for Ovli for being the best host that we've had in LCO. Thank you so much Ovli. She's gonna make me cry. She is the sweetest thing. I met Kitty and uh, at first, the first thing that came to mind was I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman is not only like the fashionista, rocking every single K-pop idol look, uh, but in addition to that, this girl's got a brain in her, all right? The analysis that's come out of you, I'm ignoring these two right now. Right now, it's just you and me. It's just you and me, we're completely ignoring them, but girl, you're gonna go places. But Max, where are you going now? <laughs> Where am I going? Where are you going? What wherever are you the, up to? Wherever the Chiefs players are going, because I'm sure they're going to be celebrating tonight. Um, but yeah, an absolutely fantastic split. And I think it's great that we had, again, the three teams that we had at DreamHack here, the best teams and the best players we have in our region. And I'm really confident that we are sending the best team that we have and the best team we've had in a long time uh, to represent our region. Yeah, honestly, I'm just, I've never been to an event like this, like on the scale. And I honestly feel blessed to have all these amazing players playing and the amazing crowd as well. You guys really made the event. like. Such an unforgettable experience. You guys are the best. And I share very similar sentiments. Uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time here at the LCO, especially at DreamHack Melbourne, and my time in Melbourne just in general. I got to see the zoo as we all saw caster pictures lining up with some of the animal photos that we had seen. Uh, and just, you know, I'm just blown away by the warmth from the OSH community uh, coming in here. So thank you all so much for allowing me to join you during your LCO Grand Finals. I had such a blast and I'm you know, super excited to see the Chiefs come over to my region being NA and see how they perform against the rest of the international competition. But that's gonna be it for us. So Kitty, Maximize, Amelg, and from me, Ovli, as well as 
uh, you know, everyone behind the scenes with ESL, Menulog, uh, DreamHack Melbourne, uh, Dare, who else am I forgetting to shout out? Five. Five everyone, thank you all so, so much for watching. And one more time, congratulations to the Chiefs as we will be seeing them at the League of Legends World Championship. Good night, everyone. We're going to beat your region. What? We're going to beat your region. You're not, no. See who the all pro team is. Put your hands together for Tapoon after Tally <laughs> Rays. The, the all pro team is the Chiefs. <laughs> oh no. Check in to Melbourne so you can check out all the action after DreamHack ends. Play on and explore Melbourne's vibrant art, theatre, sport and culinary experiences throughout the city and beyond. Head to visitmelbourne.com to discover more.